Sleeky spirit isn't born. It's nurtured by those who came before. It must be shown, a flag waved proudly by those who know. Our future rests with our students and support from their biggest fans. On the SIU Day of Giving, we let our imagination run wild, always moving forward together as past, present, and future collide. Join us. We are live in the WSI studio here on the campus of SIU, Saluki Nation. This is our seventh annual day of giving. What an incredible day we've got for you today. We're coming live on live stream. You're going to talk to me, deans, the chancellor, tons of students. You're going to hear the great things going on at the university. And today we ask all in the Saluki Nation to rise up, make a gift of any size to support your university. And it's uh, truly, we think it's going to be a day that will set and break records. Uh, we went live at 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, siuday.siu.edu, and we are off to a great, great start. So Salukis, join us for a great, great day today. Uh, we've got in the studio with us right now the leader of the SIU Foundation, Matt Soverson. Matt, thanks for joining us, and tell us your thoughts about the Day of Giving. Well, it's an exciting day, obviously. Um, our seventh, uh, seventh try at this. Uh, started back in 2017. Just a great day for our alums and our uh, friends of the university to come together uh, to share uh, some pride in our in our great institution. And uh, I want to stress that you know one of the themes that this year is that that every gift matters, and every gift does matter. It doesn't matter the, the size of it. Uh, it. It all it all uh, it all comes together. And I also serve on the uh, College of, let me get this right, Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Math, uh, the, the Dean's Advisory Board uh, for that college. And we met last Friday. And Jason Fairfield, who's a development officer doing a great job for the college there, uh, talked about uh, that every gift matters and how we want to uh, increase participation. And it's, it, it always makes me smile uh, when I see students willing to give back to be part of this and everyone can participate. And I think that uh, with everyone coming together and participating, the dollars will, will take care of themselves after that. So I would encourage everyone out there to uh, encourage your, your friends, your coworkers, challenge them to be a part of this because it's a, it's a great day to be a Saluki. You know, Matt, thing, and it's, it is a reminder, a gift can be made to anywhere, any of your interest. Right. Uh, you go to siuday.siu.edu. Uh, it's so simple. I made my gift this morning, not at 6 o'clock, Matt, at 7 o'clock. And it's a very easy process. Uh, kudos to our staff here to set it up to make a gift so easily. Uh, I instantly got a, a recognition, a thank you email. So uh, today's the day we can join together and Lily lift this institution. You know, reminded of an African proverb, man, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, we must go together. And that's what today is Absolutely. about. Absolutely. It is siuday.siu.edu. Have you made your gift yet, man? Not yet. I uh, was in my office this morning. I spent my uh, time before I came to the studio here. I spent my time uh, sending out some emails to uh, friends, yeah. uh, co-workers, uh, just to be part of this day today. Hey, Matt, we've got challenges. We give awards for the most the gifts from a group, the most dollars raised. We've got the beer group yeah. that is the reigning, I think, three-time champion. They are. They but are. the Dog Pound has issued a challenge to the, uh, yeah. to the uh, uh, beer group, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, again, you're going to meet the host of our academic leaders throughout the day today. Uh, during the seventh annual day of giving, uh, we're going to lead off our first. Uh, our first uh, segment is going to be with the library. 
under the great leadership of Dean John Pollitz. Uh, we often refer to the library as the heart and soul of the university, but I think he has updated that phrase. So uh, we're going to bring Dean Pollitz on. And uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, big day, Salukis. Think, 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 uh, siuday.edu, make a gift, and uh, let's go to Dean Pollitz. Hi, I am Kim Babington from SIU Credit Union, and we are here today to donate a $45,000 check to launch the seventh annual Day of Giving. We understand that SIU is the, the economic engine in Southern Illinois, and we feel that this is a win-win-win for everybody involved here. We are here today because of the generosity of SIU Credit Union. And all of the funds that we receive go back to the students to really enrich their experience while they're here on campus. You know, our students uh, need assistance. Uh, our students need to be able to close the financial gaps. And this is one way for them to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm a, a 91 accounting graduate, College of Business. Uh, so I've been here my whole life. Uh, so being able to give back to the university that helped me get to where I am is uh, a great feeling. The money that SIU Credit Union today is giving us is really going to go to helping us grow, expand, and really just help us program for our Dog Days orientation program. So Dog Days is, in essence, kind of like a four-day, three-night summer camp for incoming freshmen. We're going to be using this donation from the SIU Credit Union to establish a digital scholars commons on the first floor of the library. We want this partnership with SIU. Um, it helps not only the credit union grow, but it helps SIU grow, and that helps us here in our economy in Carbondale. And so I encourage all friends, family, Saluki alumni, anybody that's part of Saluki Nation to take a moment and just, whether it's $5, $10, or more like give back to this incredible place because we really are doing some awesome things. Alumni and friends, join Lauren and me as we ignite the Saluki spirit for a new tradition. You're invited to the inaugural Saluki Ball on Saturday, April 22nd at the Marriott Marquis Chicago. Through this event, we will bridge the gap, enhancing scholarship opportunities for our students as they imagine a bright future. Get ready for an evening of elegance and celebration as we showcase Saluki pride like never before. Your night will include world-class entertainment and dining, the opportunity to network with university leaders, as well as some of our most influential alumni and friends. Experience the beginning of an exciting new era for SIU Carbondale as we commemorate our accomplishments and look forward to the future. Tickets are on sale now. You can select individual tickets, purchase a table for you and your guests, or become a sponsor with opportunities to send your message to Saluki Nation. Together, we will bring success to generations of students. We hope you are as excited as we are to launch the Saluki Ball. Learn more and secure your tickets at salukiball.siu.edu. Thank you for your continued support of SIU and its students. Go, Go dogs. dogs. At Morris Library, our mission is to provide resources and services that support research, foster innovation, facilitate curiosity and exploration, and advance new forms of knowledge. Day of giving donations in any amount have a real impact here at Morris Library. Walk with me as we visit a few examples of what day of giving donations have done for Morris Library. Your past generosity provided the funds to create this professional grade podcasting room. We hope to expand on our resources that go beyond the text on the page. And your support can play a meaningful role in those efforts. Students can easily scan portions of materials from our vast print collection that can then be saved to a device or email to their SIU account. Another important way that we're using Day of Giving funds is to create free online digital textbooks for SIU courses that save students money. I'm Professor Brent Pease in the forestry program at SIU, and I teach a course here called Wildlife Monitoring. I searched around online and came across the open textbook program and found a textbook that was perfect for this class that's freely available on the internet. Join us on March 28th. Make your gift in any amount and know that as stewards of your investment, in Morris Library, we 
are investing in Saluki student success on your behalf. Good morning. I'm so glad that we're here. Uh, my name is John Pollitz. I'm Dean of Library Affairs here at SIU, and I'm so happy to be here. It's all starting out, um, and we're real excited to be here. We want to talk about library affairs. And today, I'm here with Amy Etchison, the new director of the SIU Press, and Sherry Watson, the outreach librarian for library affairs. And we are, uh, the, Matt said we're the, the library is the heart and soul, but I think that the library is the heart, the press is the mind, and the university museum is the soul of the library. So, Sherry. Good morning, John. Let's talk about all the things that we're do we're uh, trying to to raise money for today on the day of giving, and let's start out with uh, library uh, and uh, the library uh, excellence excellence fund. fund. That's it. Thank the you. library excellence fund. That's one of my favorite things that we do with library affairs funds um, that come from the day of giving. Um, what we have been able to do with those funds is provide incentives for faculty to adopt or create open textbooks. And that means that students can have free textbooks in their classrooms. We know that 28% of the cost of an education is through course materials. And so if we can help students afford uh, course materials with free textbooks, then we know that we can help them succeed at SIU. And we know that when you make a donation to Library Affairs, you are making a direct um, impact on student success at SIU. That, thank you, that's wonderful. And also today we're trying to raise money for a, um, a digital scholars commons in the library. We just got $10,000 from SIU Credit Union to help make that move forward. It's gonna move our library into a new era of non-textual, uh, scholarship and students will be able to come in the library and, and work with all sorts of new kinds of technology to create and investigate new forms of knowledge. So, Amy, you know, you are the mind of SIU. Well, so, SIU Press. Is SI, <laughs> well, okay. I've given you a little too much credit there. But tell us, how did Day of Giving funds help the press? Sure. Do the great work that they do and publish such wonderful books. Sure. Well, we're asking for a day of giving donations for our general fund this year, which directly supports our book publishing program. And that allows SIU Press to continue to do the amazing work that we've done for the past 70 years. Um, it allows us to publish the books that are known for their truthfulness and accuracy and that are committed to rigorous scholarship and known for their beautiful designs. So books like the regional favorite, Snake Road, A Field Guide to the Snakes of LaRue Pine Hills, or one of my favorite books, Edith, The Rogue Rockefeller McCormick. Um, like I said, we've been doing this for nearly 70 years and we want to keep doing it. And your generous support of SIU Press can help us keep doing that for years to come. Now, Amy, where can we find, uh, where, where can people donate to the SIU Press? Is it at siuday.siu.edu? <laughs> yes. And you can explore more of our books at www.siupress.com. We publish in numerous subject areas, and I'm sure that everyone will find something that they will love. Now, Library Affairs also represents the three parts of Library Affairs are the Morris Library, which has our special collections, um, the SIU Press, and the University Museum. And the museum is, of course, the soul of the SIU, uh, of the triumvirate that we are, the heart, the mind, and the soul of SIU. We have some big plans for the University Museum, uh, and, and the way it, it is so successful is that I want to give a shout out to uh, Susanna Munson, who's our curator of 
Anthropology, and Wes Stoger, who's our, our curator of exhibits. And, and they're putting together some exhibits that are gonna be up during homecoming next, next fall. And it's gonna be a wonderful and exciting time. And we got big news coming up then too, so stay with us. Um, and don't forget to come by on Saturday morning to uh, mimosas in the library, Saturday morning during homecoming. And it's a new tradition we have, and we'll have some fun. And also, I got to remind you, today, come by Morris Library's front lawn at 10 o'clock to 2. We're making a splash at Morris Library. We've got Dunk the Dean. And I'm telling you, it's pretty cold out here, but we want to bring all the ability to contribute during the day of giving to everyone. You know, John, I just realized last night that all three of us are SIU graduates. So for us, this is um, a personal request too, not just a professional. We are we all care very much about SIU and its success. So um, we are asking you as fellow Salukis to contribute on this SIU Day of Giving. And remember. And remember, any donation is a direct donation to any donation to the Library Affairs Group is a direct donation to Saluki Student Success. Thank you so much. Thank you. SIU architecture students created the designs for the new Digital Scholars Commons located in Morris Library. It will be on the first floor right as you come in the library, but after you've rubbed Blinken's nose for good luck. There are plenty of glass walls creating inviting space for exploration and creation. This is a very popular place in the library because it is where students come together to meet their friends and start their explorations and to follow their curiosity. The information desk where librarians are available for consultation and instruction is right next to the space. But let's walk right in and take a look around. As you can see, the space is very versatile. Students can meet and discuss their projects. New technologies are at the ready and movable walls create spaces to do virtual reality homework. This year's Day of Giving funds will be dedicated to building out the space, but behind the scenes, we are raising money to create endowments to ensure that the latest technologies will always be available for our students here. The next step in the process is to create production space in this classroom just next door. There will be podcast booths, video production, and streaming stations, as well as space to have a classroom. This space moves the library to a new era where students are using non-textual information along with the vast collections of print and digital text. The SIU School of Medicine has been a tremendous impact in my own life and as my training as a physician here. We've seen students come through here and have had life-changing experiences of their own. Uh, the legacy in which they are coming into is one that has made a tremendous impact in the community already. And those that continue to contribute to the next generation of physicians will have to see their growth in years and years to come. It will be something well worthwhile and something that I hope to see and be a part of myself one day.
We are live back in the studio. What a great segment from the library. Of course, the, the video you just saw, Matt Salverson and I are, are just itching to get out and dunk John Pollitz. Matt, we've been loosening up the arm. We've got, we're ready to go. Pollitz right. is going in the water, but the library truly is just a, a key part of what we do here. You know, Matt, just a reminder, thinking about just from your experience, as we, we ask alums to give back today, join our faculty, staff, students are participating. What, what, what makes you get involved and participate? You know, in, in my case, uh, I, I, I grew up here. I, uh, it, it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, be on the foundation board and uh, to serve as president uh, these past two years. I've got a few months left in my, my presidency. But, um, you know, I, I, I did grow up here in Carbondale. Uh, my dad was a professor in agribusiness economics. And uh, my, my mother uh, obtained her master's degree in education here. Um, and I met my wife here. Uh, met my wife on, on campus our last year of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of, of school. And um, I can't imagine my life any, any different without her. And uh, she actually was in these studios uh, in radio and television here at SIU and then went on to obtain a law degree as well. And we both believe that um, you should give back to your, your, your school, give back to your, uh, your college. And um, I've had a great career. I obtained my degree in, in engineering um, back in 1986. I'm dating myself here. But um, had a job right out of school and I've been gainfully employed, had a great career and I owe, uh, a ton back to SIU for the education I received here. And I just feel it's the right thing to do is to give back. And, um, my wife and I both believe that and, um, think it's very important. Yeah, and Matt does and, and Christy do an incredible job. Uh, representing our university, leading our university. Uh, as Matt is the president of the foundation, spectacular things are happening. Uh, we got a few seconds here. You want to want to touch on a couple or two of those? Sure. So uh, obviously, day of giving is very ex exciting day today. Uh, but uh, should talk a little bit about our campaign. We started a, com a comprehensive campaign back in 2017. We had a, a goal of $75 million and uh, we blew through that. We've increased the goal a couple of times now. Most recently, uh, a year ago, we increased that goal to $500 million. So half a billion dollars uh, through June of 2028, I believe is the, the, the date there. And uh, so doing great things there and uh, really excited about the future. Thank you, Matt. And uh, again, half a billion dollar campaign. All gifts here counting that. Again, a reminder, uh, we've passed $117,000 so far, Matt, raised from 449 gifts, uh, siuday.siu.edu. Uh, Matt, thank you for being here. Sure. Thanks for all you do for our university. Uh, we're going to turn now and go to our College of Health and Human Sciences. Good morning, and welcome to Southern Illinois University Carbondale Day of Giving. I'm Bob Morgan, Dean of the College of Health and Human Sciences. We are excited about the opportunities that today brings, opportunities for student and faculty support. We in the College of Health and Human Sciences are about changing lives. That's what we do. And we are grateful for your generosity in helping us accomplish that mission. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it down inside your teeth. I'm going to dig around a little bit and see if I can find any cavities or anything that is, uh, you know, is kind of like out of the ordinary and then we'll fix it up for you. Ah, are you supposed to be in here? Oh, hey, Shelby, how's it going? Um, yeah, um, I'm filling in for Dr. Auberton today. I was going to do a procedure on Rob here. You know, being in this room and being around all this equipment 
I mean, this is really cool stuff. Where does the funding for this type of thing come from? So we get a lot of donations from our corporate donors, our alumni donors, and they give very generously to allow us to have everything that we need. Well, that's awesome. I bet that that makes it a lot better for you guys as students to train on this top flight equipment. It makes you a lot more competitive in the workplace when you graduate, right? Absolutely, yes. Wow, awesome. Well, if I can have that back, I'm going to finish up this. No, uh, I think I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Sir, do you have any idea how fast here we're going? License and registration, please. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hey, Kendall, Bailey, uh, how's it going? Um, Dr. Giblin said it would be cool if I came over and messed around with this stuff a little bit because we might use it over in exercise science. This is really awesome, awesome equipment. But I also heard too that you guys won a couple of scholarships. Yeah, I won the uh, Sweet and Patrol scholarship. Excellent. And I won the Bayer scholarship. Oh, that is awesome. I gotta think that that makes it a heck of a lot easier for you guys to be students here at SIU because a lot of the financial pressure is taken off, right? Yeah, I mean, especially with like, you can buy books, uh, the tuition, uh, there's tons of uh, financial things that go into uh, being a student. So that scholarship should be good out there. Beyond that, the fact that you guys get to work with this really cool VR equipment is just tremendous. I mean, how does that, where does that come from? Like the scholarships, the virtual reality equipment, everything that you guys get to work with as students, where does that come from? A lot of that comes from our donors. So people who like criminology and criminal justice and want to see what we can do with it, or alumni, they also help fund our travel to conferences. Gosh, here. All right, I've got to finish with this traffic stop, so just give me a minute. I got no confidence in this gasket. Man, I tell you what, I'm pretty sure this puppy needs a new uh, new Johnson rod. Yep, definitely, definitely a Johnson rod. And I tell you what, you know, I think I might uh, I might just do a complete and total overhaul on this bad boy. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's start by taking this thing. What are you doing? Wait, what's in here? Oh, hey, Grant, Rod, how's it going, man? Um, no, I, they let me in here all the time. I'm an old hand when it comes to uh, working on motor vehicles. And, uh, you know, this is actually going to be my next car purchase. So they thought, man, maybe he wants to get in here and work on this uh, this engine. And I'll tell you what, just being in this garage and looking around at all the great, uh, great machines that are in here, it must be awesome for you guys as students to be able to work on all this stuff. How does that, how does that happen? Yeah, here at the SAU Automotive Program, we have a long history of uh, alumni who go off in the industry but come back to support us with donations from where they went off to work um, and really supporting the program with modern vehicles, modern technology, and even industry insights to help us succeed when we go off into the industry. And then with donations from foundations from the College of Health and Human Sciences and other ones located on campus, we're able to build up our personal skills by getting certifications, buying tools, and buying textbooks to prepare us for, to work on vehicles like this. I'll bet that uh, this makes you guys super competitive when you go into the workplace, huh? Oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right, well, I tell you what, you know, since I am gonna buy the car, uh, I think I'm gonna take this bad boy for a test drive. I hope there's no keys in there. I uh, don't think the keys are you have them. I got no keys, okay. This is Captain Clarence over to ground control. We are loaded up and we're ready to taxi. Who is this? What's your operating number? We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? 
What are you doing in here? Oh, hey, uh, Valerie, Mercy, how's it going? Um, you know what? I was just thinking about you guys because I saw that you guys won a couple of scholarships. Is that correct? Absolutely. We won the Kevin Duffy Memorial Scholarship. Where do the, the funds for those scholarships come from? They come from alumni donations. Um, they're so grateful for our alumni for pouring into the university. That's great. Well, I tell you what, I would imagine that those scholarships make it a lot less stressful to be an SIU student, right? Absolutely. It's gotten from so much of the financial burden, and I didn't even think I'd be able to complete my training. But thanks to the scholarships from the excellent donors, I've been able to continue my training. Do the donations go towards anything else other than the scholarships? Absolutely. They go towards celebrating our equipments, giving them other equipments for students to be able to have access to them. Well, I would imagine that that uh, goes a long way to making your student training so much better so that you can be a much better professional and be competitive in the workplace, right? Absolutely. Wow, that's great. You know, I wonder, I wonder if some of the donation money, you know, might be able to go towards, you know, hiring some security, you know, because you don't want just anybody coming in here and playing around on this equipment, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kathy, you fired up to do some uh, shoulder presses today? I am, but uh, wow, that um, that that looks a little heavy. Well, Josie said we were supposed to kick the intensity up. Oh, 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 oh. Not today, not today. Well, I mean, Kathy's pretty strong, so I thought, you know, maybe we could do the 25s. Well, you know, I, I've been looking around the room and, you know, there's some really awesome equipment in here. And we're, we're pretty lucky to be able to have all this in here to be able to use with anybody of any fitness level, right? Yeah, no, for sure. It's so great. We can personalize any training program for cancer survivors or caregivers. So it's a great workout for them. Yeah, the, 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 the staff private facility has changed countless lives. Yeah, no, and even for us as staff members, it's so rewarding to be able to work with such a great population. Hey, Ken. Hey, uh, I just had a moment. I can help over here. Isn't this whole facility funded by donation? Yeah, sure, sure was. All the yeah. supplies and equipment, too? Yeah, everything in here, everything you can see is mostly funded by private donations. Even these super keen polos and T-shirts we have, all funded by private donations. Strong survivors would not survive without our donors. That's really incredible that this whole facility comes from the generosity of others. Absolutely, and Day of Giving is coming up on March 28th, and I bet that if we think really hard, we could probably get some people to chip in what they can. Are you guys with me? Yeah. 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 All right, let's do it. Ready? Donate, 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 donate. heard from our students, I want to say one final thank you. Hey, Today, G. Morgan, I'm glad I caught you. Phil, I got Phil, a couple of questions. Taking. We're videotaping, man. Oh, hey, is this that SIU day video? Today's the day, the day of giving. Day of giving, right, right, right. Well, what were you about to say? I was about to say thank you and wrap it up. Really? Well, you want to say it together? Let's do it together. All right, awesome. All right, one, two. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did we forget something? We're forgetting someone. Oh, someone, Steph. Steph Taylor. All right, Steph Taylor, mover and shaker of all things SIU Day of Giving. Get yourself in here. I'm we'll here. do a little rose between the thorns thing, right? All right, you guys ready? Ready. All right, one, two, three. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your, your support. support. And make a gift at siuday.siu.edu. <laughs> Welcome, welcome back to welcome back to our studios here. What a great segment by the College of Health and Human Sciences. Just incredible to see what's going on, and just uh, watching uh, Dean Morgan and Professor Antone. It's just a reminder: your gifts really make a difference. That is truly the faculty we have are out of off the charts, extraordinary. And joining us now 
uh, in the studio live is one of our outstanding students. You know, this is Day of Giving is really all about supporting our students and faculty. Again, it's wsiuday.siu.edu. Uh, but joining us is one of our rock star students, Leah Kahn. And uh, interesting, Leah, you are a student in Dr. Anton's class. But Leah, if you would just, uh, just tell, tell us about you and your incredible experience here at SIU. Oh, absolutely. Um, my name is Leah Khan, and I am a junior here at SIU, and I'm actually majoring in exercise science. So I do have Dr. Anton as a professor. His class is always a blast. He's just as funny on camera as he is off. Um, I'm a junior. My minor is in coaching, and in my free time, I actually am a dance coach in Southern Illinois locally, and I absolutely love it here. Absolutely. And tell us, tell us, uh, just kind of, you're very involved on campus. You do, you do tell us all your activities. Oh, man, oh, where to start? The list goes yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Um, so actually starting my freshman year, so before I was actually officially a student here at SIU, I tried out for the dance team. Um, so I'm a Saluki shaker. Um, and I tried out, I was like, well, if I make the team, that means I'm going to SIU. <laughs> and then I ended up making the team, auditioned in my living room during the whole COVID um, era and then I walked in and I was like we're doing this <laughs> and so actually becoming a shaker kind of opened up the door for me to really just get involved because it was I mean it was kind of COVID and there were a lot of students weren't on campus but I was like if I'm going to be on campus I want the full experience I want the whole nine I'm a Saluki and I'm going to bleed maroon and so I did that and then I um, became a Saluki ambassador in admissions and I started giving campus tours and then from there it kind of took off truly. Um, that also opened up another door. I started working then in admissions. I was working at the front desk while still giving tours at the same time. And then what else have I done? And then next thing you know, I'm getting calls from the marketing team and they're kind of like, well, we want you to um, make a video for us. And I'm like, okay, I love being in front of the camera. I mean, and uh, I'm trying to think what else have I done? Like there's a, the list goes on, but um, wow. On my resume, I mean, there's many videos, including the SIU Day of Giving video yes. that I had an absolute blast creating. Um, and even working with little um, Maddie, who was also in the video, I actually babysit her <laughs> from time to time. So really um, a full cycle of things. Just just incredible, an example of our students here. And, and, and Leah, just uh, you know, to our alums out there, this is Day of Giving. You know, We want to encourage them to make a gift and support students like you Absolutely. and so many of your college. Is anything you'd want to say to our alumni? Um, honestly, I can't wait to join the Alumni Association and also give back. I have two semesters left, so I'm well, about to be welcomed into it, I know, with open arms. But your gift and your donation absolutely means the world to us students because also another determining factor for me to come to SIU was the amount of scholarships that I received. I applied to 35 schools and I got into 34. I got one rejection and one rejection only. And SIU had a beautiful, they gave me a beautiful number. Wow. And so when I looked at all the scholarships and who was behind them, I was like, wow, like these people are actually beautiful. And um, after my freshman year, I ended up receiving another scholarship from the School of Education at which I was also invited to go meet the donors at a dinner, which was also so beautiful too, because there are real people behind, you know, yeah. these, these come from real people. They aren't just, you know, random money lying around and it's beautiful. It's beautiful because it has definitely impacted me. Wow. Wow. What a story. Yes. Another example of, you know, why uh, your gifts really make a difference. You are supporting students like Leah. Just what a rock star. I mean, I, I wish we had about an hour to keep talking here. <laughs> right? I could talk all day. Uh, I'm telling you what, you look out for Leah. She is going to be, she might become president of the United States someday, <laughs> at least U.S. Senator, but she has got a great career. And your gifts help. We heard Leah's story. Your helps get Leah here. 34 schools accepted you and you selected to come to school here in Carbondale. So how about that Saluki Nation? Again, this is our seventh annual day of giving. Please, whatever gift you can make, we ask that you make it. It's siuday.siu.edu. We are now at $132,000 raised from 535 gifts. Uh, Leah, thank you for joining us. Spectacular. Wow. Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> go dogs, right? Go dogs. All right. Thank you, Leah. We're going to go now to the uh, College of Agriculture, Life and Physical Sciences. Welcome to the SIU Day of Giving. Although I am a longtime Saluki, 
This is my first day of giving as Dean of the College of Business and Analytics, and I am excited to be here. We have a lot to talk about, but don't worry, I won't do all of the talking. We are going to hear from some of our current students about some of the experiences they are having to a large extent made possible by donations from generous alums and friends of the college like you. But first, I do wanna take a moment and introduce myself and talk about my vision and goals for the college. First, a little bit about myself. I am one of five children and I grew up in Carbondale, Illinois and graduated from Carbondale High School. And when I was graduating from high school, I was sitting down with my father talking about possible universities to go to. And after some discussion, he said, you can go anywhere you want, but you need to find out how to pay for it. So needless to say, that limited my options and I chose to go to SIU. And I tease him that that was one of the best decisions that he ever made for me. And from there, I was able to earn three degrees from SIU and had the honor of being named the 2022 Distinguished Alum. And so truly, there's maroon running deep within these veins and I couldn't be more proud to be a Saluki. Now, let me move on and talk about some of my vision. One of the things that we wanna do in the College of Business is program development, developing programs to meet the needs of today's marketplace. And so some of these programs that we're looking at is expounding on what our offerings are with respect to analytics. We should be the business analytics hub for Southern Illinois and beyond. Another is looking at possibly a supply chain logistics center and developing a program with respect to that. Not only adding those new type of programs, but also leveraging our existing programs that we have with respect to accounting, finance, marketing, hospitality, tourism and entertainment, and economics as well. From a research perspective, one of the things that we wanna do is be innovative in our research. We have a world-class faculty here at the College of Business and Analytics. And what they do is they bring some of that research to the classroom as they teach the students the latest and greatest innovations that are occurring in the field. What helps too is when we combine that research with the real world experience that many of the faculty have, but also our board of advisors brings to us with respect to enhancing our curriculum, it is a powerful force in preparing our students for today's business world. Another thing we wanna do is work on growing enrollment. Yes, I know enrollment has been shrinking here for a while, but the last couple of years, our university campus has started to rebound. Now it's time for the College of Business to rebound as well. So what we are doing is we're developing new partnerships with many of the community colleges, not only within the state, but also in places like Florida, Texas, um, Missouri, and Nashville, Tennessee as well. So we're gonna go and go to those places, meet the students where they're at, expound on what we offer to them and can bring to the table for them and bring Saluki way to them. Another thing that we wanna do is increase our student engagement and the opportunities for our students. We've all gone through rough times with COVID. And so now our students are back and getting them engaged and re-engaged and used to the traditions and, and legacy that we have here at SIU. It's very important for us to do. And so we've been working hard to get the students more involved in things and providing more opportunities, whether that's internship opportunities, externship opportunities, you, volunteer opportunities, you name it. We want to provide that for them because we know that that makes them not only better business professionals down the road, but it also makes them better citizens of the world. So you are about to get a glimpse of how outstanding our students really are. They inspire our faculty and staff every day to push ourselves on how we can continue to develop our courses and curriculum, how we can add additional professional development to their learning experience, how we can help them find internships and identify career paths that highlight their strengths and gifts because we see it. We get to see it on a daily basis, how these students devour every opportunity we give them with the true grit and perseverance that we expect from Salukis.
And then they ask for more. And together we can give them more, more opportunity, more resources, more connections, more experiences that will translate into a brighter future for all of us. I personally promise that if you entrust us with your resources, whether that is your time, funding, or with a connection with your company or employer, your investment will be used to make a difference. Now, let's see how your gifts are making a difference and impacting the college experience of some students today as they remind you of what a day in the life of Koba Saluki looks like. Are you ready? Let's have some fun. My name is Hunter Hatfield. Uh, I'm majoring in business management and I'm specializing in entrepreneurship. My name is Caitlin Schultz. I'm a hospitality, tourism, and event management major. I am a junior and I'm a transfer student. My name is Drake Roach and I'm a junior here at SIU studying as a marketing major. My name is Aubrey Tochi and I am a business management major here at SIU. I'm concentrating in entrepreneurship and minoring in public administration. My name is Logan Patalis and my major is analytics. My experience at the College of Business and Analytics has really driven me to be a more outgoing person. I've met a lot of new people and made a lot of good connections and I just feel a lot more confident going into the future. Being able to get the resources from the College of Business has helped me because of the career closet, for one. Uh, along with that, I would be getting professional help and techniques from professors. They are very willing to talk to you and very able at different times of the day just to go over homework or talk to you about your interview. The resources here at SIU have helped me pursue job opportunities that I don't believe I would have gotten anywhere else um, and they've helped me uh, become more social um, and expand my network uh, and they al also have helped me uh, become more well-rounded as a person. Financial aid has helped me be stress-free, focus on my grades and school. It has also helped me make more friends and just not worry about money as well. Southern just really supports me in being myself and focusing on my future career. Because of the scholarships I have received, I have a ton of time to do other things like RSOs and athletics. I'm a part of the SPEAR team. I'm on the cheerleading side. Um, along with that, I am on American Marketing Association and their case competition. I'm also the fundraising chair of the equestrian team. So being able to do all that stuff has allowed me a great amount because of scholarships. My freshman year of college, I entered a living learning community where I lived in a dorm with other business students. And we had a lot of events uh, like a etiquette dinner where we just learned proper dinner etiquette for any potential business meetings we may have. We had weekly lunches together and we made really strong connections. And I think that just gave me a really good start to college and put me on the right path. The RSOs I've been a part of is AMA. And I've also been a part of Entrepreneurship Corps. Some of the activities that I've been a part of is the Saluki Sprint for incoming transfer students and freshman year um, students. I've also been a part of the COBA um, Business Career Fair and the Etiquette Dinner. The RSOs I've been a part of are currently AMA. I'm trying to stay very active in AMA. And currently we're working with Pause for Pause, trying to get that started up. And I am very active in the Small Business Placement Center on a program called launch that business where you start a small business and you launch it and you make it a legitimate business in the eyes of the state these rso's and activities have affected my life in a positive way it made me feel like i was in a family i made more friends and i can be more outgoing because of coba and siu in general because we're a big family here these rso's and activities have really helped me feel a whole lot more comfortable in my career by making friends throughout the college that I have never met before. Um, as a transfer student, I got to meet so many cool people that have really helped me in this walk of knowing, knowing what I want to do in life. And it's really been a great place for me to be. Having scholarships is really amazing for a lot of students. If you are working that job or you are struggling to get ends meet, going into classes, everything, um, you don't get to experience campus life at all. My scholarships have allowed me to pursue uh, everything that I've wanted to in my education and more. The scholarships that I've received have really given me a lot of free time to do different things here at the college. Like I've really gotten to be very involved in all the SIU home games, whether that be football or basketball in this coming spring for baseball and softball. 
I've also been very blessed with having a small business to where I can grow that with all this free time and really make connections and grow that into something that hopefully one day could be something worth bragging about. Thank you for getting us ready for business. Alumni and friends, join Lauren and me as we ignite the Saluki spirit for a new tradition. You're invited to the inaugural Saluki Ball on Saturday, April 22nd at the Marriott Marquis Chicago. Through this event, we will bridge the gap, enhancing scholarship opportunities for our students as they imagine a bright future. Get ready for an evening of elegance and celebration as we showcase Saluki pride like never before. Your night will include world-class entertainment and dining, the opportunity to network with university leaders, as well as some of our most influential alumni and friends. Experience the beginning of an exciting new era for SIU Carbondale as we commemorate our accomplishments and look forward to the future. Tickets are on sale now. You can select individual tickets, purchase a table for you and your guests, or become a sponsor with opportunities to send your message to Saluki Nation. Together, we will bring success to generations of students. We hope you are as excited as we are to launch the Saluki Ball. Learn more and secure your tickets at salukiball.siu.edu. Thank you for your continued support of SIU and its students. Go, Go dogs. dogs. Thanks so much for another great day of giving. We can't do it without you, our champions. You're our champions because we partner together for all that we do to improve the health of our communities and the people who live there. Every gift matters. So we will continue to educate, innovate, and collaborate for better health for all. Forward with you. Thanks so much.
still reference the Suzuki Golf for that still look right. I'm going to say what I just said. We are back in the studio here on the seventh annual day of giving in our WSIU broadcast studio, the largest broadcast studio south of Chicago. What a great facility. What a great asset for this university. Uh, my name is Matt Kupek. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Development University Relations and CEO of the Foundation, and joined by Jeff Gleam, who just promoted to the Associate Vice Chancellor for Development and Alumni Relations and CEO of the Foundations. Jeff, congratulations and welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate being here. And uh, I just got to say, Matt, if our giving totals match your enthusiasm, we're going to blow this thing out of the water. Oh, yeah, uh, you do a great job with this. And I, I do want to just a, a personal thank you to everybody that's that's listening, watching, giving, and doing all those things. Everything, everything that you're doing means a lot. So thank you. Jeff, we're up to $156,000 uh, from 611 gifts. Incredible start. Uh, we saw the video with the Chancellor and Lauren Lane about the Saluki Ball. So give us a little more on that. So the Saluki Ball is going to be held uh, in, in April, April 22nd in Chicago at the Marriott Marquis. This is the first event of this type for mm -hmm. us maybe ever, but at least for, for a long time. But we're really focusing on fundraising and, and, and the dollars that are coming in for this are going to, is, is filling a gap for some of these students. We're really trying to get them past uh, over the finish line uh, with assistance that they may need uh, to, to graduate. So uh, that's the gist of the Saluki Ball. Uh, we're expecting a wonderful turnout and uh, Kind of got a few surprises along few the way, surprises. too. Chicago, of course, it's in Chicago this year. We'll rotate St. Louis and Southern Illinois. Uh, you've arranged for those down here to take the Saluki train up. Saluki train, we got two cars going up, it's leaving on Friday, coming back on Sunday. Uh, you know, and, and Matt, it's been great because uh, we, we've been talking about this, but it's kind of generating some memories from, from people back in the day. Uh, when they used to take the train up and up, up to Chicago and back and just having a great time. So we'd like to resurrect that a little bit, but uh, it, it allows us to get folks from Carbondale up to Chicago for the ball. And entertainment wise, we are going to have one of the world's greatest, aren't we? Uh, Brian McKnight, 16 time Grammy nominee, wow. uh, big time, big time. I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to seeing you cut a rug out I'll there. Tell too. you what, back to one is one of his great songs. Uh, <laughs> But Brian was contract said I cannot sing with him. So oh, okay. All right. I'll be lip syncing that <laughs> version, but it's going to be spectacular. Uh, you know, Jeff does such a great job uh, in his role. He was the direct executive director alumni. Uh, you just really, it's just fun to see our engagements and our communications improve. And, and it has. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the relationship between the yeah. association, the university and, and the foundation has never been better. And we're, you know, we're strategic in our, our thought process and, and doing things together. And, uh, you know, with the ultimate goal of obviously helping our alumni and our students. And I think we're doing a, a, a much better job at that. Just really exciting. Uh, uh, Saluki Nation is engaged and involved. Uh, this is our seventh day of giving. It's siuday.siu.edu. Again, 648 gifts in, $160,000 raised. What does day of giving mean to you, Jeff? So, Matt, it's thanks for asking that question. Uh, I've been involved in higher education. This is my 33rd year. And I'm, I'm looking over your shoulder at a sign. It says forward together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just really think about paying it forward. And I think that's what Day of Giving is about, is making it better for someone else coming behind you. And that's what Day of Giving means to me, is making it better for somebody else, especially our students. And you had a student on here earlier, Leah. Just She's just one of the many examples of the fine students that SIU is producing. Awesome. Very Jeff, proud of them. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for what you do. We're going to turn now to our, our Department of Athletics. Uh, which is a really important area of our university and the leadership of our athletic director, Tim Leonard, doing a great job. So let's go talk, let's go take a look at athletics. I know enrollment has been short.
Hello, I'm Molly Hudgens, Deputy Athletic Director and Saluki alum, um, and I am here with uh, Tim Leonard, our Athletic Director. Um, I've, I've been really fortunate to be a part of Saluki Nation my entire life, being born and raised in Carbondale, but I'm here with Tim, who's been on the, on the job seven months. Um, Tim, tell us a little bit about your experience in Saluki Athletics as, as you first arrived. Yeah, it's, first off, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, but most importantly, the, the, the thing that I've enjoyed and what I was really looking forward to is just the, the passion uh, that Saluki alums and, and fans have for this university and for their athletic teams. I, I, I've said before, I've been on the other side of the fence and have seen it and always admired it from afar. Um, and so now it's fun and exciting to be on this side of the fence where now I'm a part of that. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun because everywhere you go, you see Saluki pride, people wearing maroon. And, you know, when we have games, uh, if you go on the road or at home or people come out and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Well, we're here on Day of Giving, uh, siuday.siu.edu, and it's fun. I, I think one of the things that we'd like to talk about most is our student athletes. Uh, I'm a former student athlete, a uh, SIU golfer, and I think one of the biggest things that, that I remember from my career is how we had such a great support from our, from our community, such a great support from our alumni base. Um, and, and it's really fun to be, be part of asking others to give back to our student athletes now. Uh, our student athletes are, are great. They're great in the classroom. We obviously uh, have been fortunate to, to have some, some, some championship teams um, and we're winning on the field, we're winning on the court, but more importantly, we're really helping our student athletes win in life and succeed in the classroom. Talk a little bit about how Day of Giving can help with, with that. Sure. It, you know, it, it takes a lot of resources to to fund a team and a program and, and get them to the point where they can be extremely competitive, because obviously what we're trying to do is be the best that we can be in the Missouri Valley Conference. But we don't want to just stop there. Right. We want to be able to compete nationally. And so that means you're competing against uh, uh, athletic programs that have substantially more resources than we have um, for a whole multitude of reasons. So we really count on private giving um, to help fund our, our athletics programs and, and give our, our student athletes the, the resources they need to be successful. One of the ways that, that you're giving helps today, and, and the more donations we can have, whether it's small donations, whether it's big donations, but where it really goes to help is our Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund. Our Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund is, is not just what supports winning teams, it's what really supports our student athletes in the classroom. I've, I've been very fortunate to, to help oversee our, our academic department, and we give amazing support for those student athletes, but we have some amazing students, some amazing citizens. We have a softball team that's ranked uh, top in the nation or one of the top 25 teams in the nation in GPA. We have so many student athletes who are 4.0. They're going on to be CEOs of companies and doctors and lawyers and engineers. Um, and, and again, I think that Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund supports their academic endeavors as much as it does them in the as much as it does on their field, which is also which is what we're really striving for here. Um, talk a little bit about the success that our students have had in the in the classroom. Yeah, I mean, it, it, a big part of what we do in intercollegiate athletics is trying to teach young people how to compete uh, so that they when they're done here, they're going to be able to compete in life. And so we try to get them to understand, hey, we got to compete in everything we do. So, yes, we're going to compete on the field, on the court, on the track, in the pool, whatever it is. But we got to get you to learn how to compete in the classroom. We got to get you to learn how to compete in community service, because when you graduate and when you're done from here, you're going to have goals, you're going to have objectives, right? But you're going to have to compete because guess what? So does everybody else who's entering that job market. They want to get those same jobs that you want. They ultimately want to become a CEO or the head of a company or head of a division or whatever it is. So you got to learn how to compete. And do you know work hard and and show people that you're willing to do the extra thing, go the extra mile, put in the work. And so that's what I like most about intercollegiate athletics. That's what I like about this place is we've got great students who are competing in their field of competition, but we also have a overall team GPA of all of our student athletes that's uh, over three point one GPA. I mean that's that's pretty amazing. We've got what all of our teams but two, I believe, right now are over a, 
uh, a 3.0. And it's just, boy, we got a lot of kids that are out there competing beyond just uh, what they're doing in, on the court, on the field, in the pool, whatever it is. The great thing I think about Day of Giving is that you have the opportunity to support a, an individual team. We have the opportunity, and I think what some of the things that go overseen in athletics is all the things that go behind the scenes in strength and conditioning, um, in our athletic training, and, and donations come in to help and support all of those areas. Uh, it takes a toll on our student athlete's body uh, to be able to, to compete at this high of a level every day, and, and to be able to give back to them in those areas is also really important. Yeah, being a student athlete today, I mean, it's it's not for the faint of heart, right? I mean, there is a lot of work that goes into it um, beyond just what we've talked about, right? Going to class and putting in your, your work in the study hall and so forth, but going into the weight room and are you going to be committed? Can you be dedicated enough to, to you know, fuel your body the right way with the proper nutrition? And are we providing our student athletes with proper nutrition? Do we have the resources to provide them with uh, the proper training and, and in the equipment in the weight room? And or when we travel, do we have enough resources so that we're not just putting, you know, what's what's cheap, what's easy to, to acquire? But are we really getting the healthiest of, of foods uh, to really fuel their body? Because at the end of the day, we're, we're here because we want to win ball games, right? We want to win championships. And um, I think people have heard me say this before, right? How do we spell fun? It's W-I-N. So we want to win, and we want to win at everything we do. Um, and that also means we want to win in the day of giving, right? We want to raise more money today than any other unit on campus. And I've also challenged our coaches to say, well, I want to know who's going to win the day of giving uh, among their sports programs and who's raising the most money. And, and so I think it's important that people also understand where their money goes. I'm less concerned about which particular sport or which area it goes to. I'm most concerned about are, are people committed, are people wanting to give to athletics? Where they give it is important to them. We'll figure out on the back end how we'll do that. We just need to grow our budget. So whether it's we're given to softball or baseball, or we're given to the uh, uh, Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund, they're all important. They're all going to help us compete. And, and that's what we need the, your help with, right? We need help with being able to provide more resources, resources for our student athletes because we want to have some fun. And that means we got a WIN, baby. I hope everybody out there knows how important Saluki Nation is to our student athletes and to our athletic department at whole. Um, we, and a big part of Saluki Nation, if, if those of you watching on TV see it uh, for, for basketball games, some, it's our dog pound. But our dog pound is not just about basketball. Um, our dog pound help us, helps us win in all of our sports. There are our baseball games, there are our softball games, uh, they're at a track meet, you'll see them at the swimming and diving championships. Uh, the dog pound is a big part of Saluki Nation. Uh, and as much as we're here, we're here to support our student athletes through academic giving to the Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund. Um, we'd be remiss not to say, hey, let's support our dog pound as well. Yeah, the dog pound brings the energy. Right. And uh, it's a long season for uh, some of these student athletes. Right. And so sometimes they need that extra help to find that adrenaline, to find that energy to, to get them through and, and, and help us win. And that's what the dog pound does. Right. They bring the energy. They bring the excitement. They bring the fun. And I also think it helps uh, just with the crowds in general, because that gets the, our, the rest of the folks energized and, and enthused and excited and um, and so we want those those kids, uh, our student body, to come to our games, but not just at home, on the road, to the to Arch Madness, to wherever it is that we're playing. And when we have big games, uh, the more students we can get there, uh, the better it is. And besides, how much fun is that if you're a student? And to think that somebody was willing to, to give some money, a donation in support of their activities. And, and uh, I think that would just that'd be a lot of fun for a student. Well, it's been great to be here on Day of Giving. Again, it's siuday.siu.edu. Um, we're, we're really excited. Please feel free, Saluki Nation. We'd love to have you back on campus. Come to the games. Come support the dogs. Uh, but most of all, thanks for all you do, and, and go dogs.
What a great segment from our Department of Athletics with Tim Leonard and Molly Hudgens, but great leaders. Our student athletes do an incredible job uh, representing our university. Uh, truly, we are Southern Illinois University of Champions. And that's exemplified by what we do you know, over in intercollegiate athletics. So this is the seventh day of giving here at SIU. We are at 708 gifts, $170,000 raised. Uh, we're joined in the studio right now with another one of our leader rock star students. Uh, his name is Dylan Chambers. He is president of the Dog Pound. And Dylan is the youngest alderman in the country. Uh, elected down in the city of Metropolis, but right here on our campus, we have the youngest elected alderman on campus. So, Dylan, thanks for joining us, and uh, your thoughts here on Dave Given? It's going great. I think we're, you know, we're kind of on those goals that the that the administration has set, and then you know, kind of the ones the dog pound has set. So we're we're kind of in that in that realm right now. So I'm really proud of what the community is doing right now with the with the day of giving and kind of where we're headed. So talk, tell us about the dog pound and what you do with that. Okay. Well, the dog pound is an RSO um, that is like a, a registered student organization here on campus. Um, it is one of the largest RSOs that, that SIU has to offer. Over over 300 of RSOs are running on campus right now. So um, we're very proud of it. It's our student section at Saluki Athletics. So it is something that, you know, is kind of going on um, all the time. And we're supporting all um, – all 15, 16 sports. So um, we're very proud to be who we are and um, kind of where we're headed. And that's the beauty of it. It's just not men's basketball and football, but you support all student athletes, soccer, women's soccer. You're, you'll be at the softball games. Yep. You have barbecues. You go to baseball. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's some cool stuff. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of uh, kind of where it's, where it's come from. Um, whenever I started last year, it was, you know, kind of just myself and now we've kind of established a board and, um, doing applications again this year to make sure that we're, um, create, creating a stable foundation for the years to come. And for all the Saluki fans out there, you know, when you watch a stream live on ESPN plus basketball game away, you'll hear at Indiana state, Illinois state, you'll often hear the chants of SIU a lot louder than the home chants of this school. <laughs> and that's Dylan yeah. and the dog pound. That's pretty cool stuff though. It is. Yeah. That is something that has been really uh, fun to watch this past year. And I mean, since now we've been traveling a little bit, this was, we traveled back to back years now to Illinois state and we've been louder than their section and their entire uh, fan base that they have in there. It's, you know, it feels like a home game whenever you go and, and you've got those Salukis out there chanting. It's so cool to be have those chants at an opposing uh, team's gym. But uh, you know, Dog Pound really makes a big difference for our student athletes. They really appreciate what you do, Dylan. Tell us about you know other things you're doing as a student here at SIU. Well, I, I take about 15 credit hours, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, of course, I'm I really care about my academics. Um, you know, I had a little dip in my sophomore year, but I you know I feel confident that we're uh, you know, or I feel confident that I'm continuing to go on the right path. Great, so. great stuff. Dylan does an incredible job representing our university. Uh, he is already an elected official. We talked about Leah running for Senate and President. You tell you, okay. you two might run off someday. Maybe. About, we'll you know, 2040 or something like that, whatever election year might be. But, uh, <laughs> Bill, thanks for joining us Thank on you. this day of gaming. Now, the Dog Pound did issue a challenge. To the we beer did. group. We did. So you got anything sure to did. say in your final comments to them? Uh, go Dog Pound and give to the Dog Pound, but not the beer group. Oh, boy, you heard <laughs> it there. A live challenge from Dylan Chambers here in the studio. Uh, beer group, I hope you're listening. Beer group is off to a great start, Dylan. But it's, they really are. They got up early. You know, they're they a little older. They made, you know, their guests. The students are going to come in later, right? Yeah, they'll be asleep. They're asleep right. You know, they're up right now, but they'll be asleep later on whenever whenever the young dogs kind of get out. So. A, a reminder, this year, students can give through Venmo. We've already had 10 gifts through Venmo. Go to siuday.siuw.edu, siuday.siu.edu to make your gift. Dylan, thanks for being here. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Representing our university, you are a rock star. Thank you. Incredible stuff. We're going to turn now to uh, the great WSIU under the leadership of Fred Martino. Medical school is difficult and students face many challenges. One of these can be financial. 
Keith and I are giving back by supporting the students with a scholarship fund. SIU gave me a wonderful education, I had a rewarding career, and I challenge you to give back on Giving Day. Training young physicians strengthens our community, and it's good for all of us. So as you're able, we'd ask you to be a champion on SIU's Day of Giving. Thank you for joining us for the WSIU segment on this exciting day of giving. I'm Larry Hunter, the Director of Development for WSIU. With me today is our Executive Director, Fred Martino. Fred, we're doing some amazing things at WSIU. We sure are, Larry. It is great to be with you today. You and I travel all over the region, and over the last year, we've had a chance to meet a lot of people in person at Friends Connection events throughout the area. We also have expanded programming at WSIU. It's been exciting to add a lot of shows on the air, uh, everything from Top Teens, uh, where we interview students from all over the region, nominated by their high schools, to uh, the addition of a weekly uh, version of the In Focus news program, and a new half-hour weekly show called Eye on Education. We are going to see a clip from that program coming up. Thank you for making this positive difference in the university and the support of WSIU. To give to these programs today and more, click over to www.siuday.siu.edu and select WSIU. There's so many things to talk about when we talk about WSIU. Could be our educational outreach, but also a very important factor is the student involvement that we have each and every day at WSIU. The students help maintain the station and help us provide the top programming we do from the local region. And very few places in the country you'll find that the students have such a hand-on experience as they do with WSIU. That's right. And we have someone to reflect on that now, a graduate of the program, Danny Valle, who is an anchor and a reporter at WSIL, which is the ABC station, uh, very close to SIU Carbondale. And we're going to see this segment where Danny Valle talks about just how much it meant to him to work for WSIU while he was a student at SIU Carbondale. It made an enormous difference in helping him launch his career. I want to start with this, this uh, issue of you know, the importance of experience in this career. Mm. It is so important. And I want to understand and learn about what WSIU meant to you as you were earning your degree at SIU Carbondale. I mean, it was the backbone of my education here. I mean, WSIU was everything. Um, freshman year, you know, I took a year to kind of explore the campus, kind of explore everything else out there. And then sophomore year is when I kind of got the gun jumping on doing sports with WSIU radio. That's where I started doing sunrise sports downstairs in the basement at WSIU FM, spending long Friday nights putting together that show. It was so worth it. It was so fun. There were a lot of hours down there with so many great people. It, it, it helped me form friendships and relationships that I still have. And, um, you know, I, the thing I love about WSIU is that, you know, you weren't just sitting on the sidelines. I mean, they, you know, they asked, you know, they trained you and then they, you know, whenever you read you were ready, they let you go and do your reporting. Um, you know, of course, uh, some of the bigger subjects, maybe the uh, the veterans would handle, but if you're a student, maybe some of the smaller stuff, you could tackle that and they'll let you and they'll guide you. They're patient with you. That's what I loved about WSIU. Uh, Jen Fuller, Brad Palmer, Jeff Williams. I mean, those three were the most amazing people there at, the, at FM and they're still there today. Uh, just speaks to the dedication to the aircraft and the dedication to the students that come here and to the listeners too that listen to WSIU radio. Yep, and of course all three of them you, you see uh, on WSIU uh, TV as well, yeah. Jen Fuller uh, regularly and uh, uh, from time to time also Jeff Williams and, yes. and Brad as well. So. Uh, that hands-on learning, a lot of people watching uh, right now and, and 
folks who watch you when you're reporting on WSIL may not uh, realize it's not only important from an editorial sense, but a technical sense as, as well, that uh, when you're working in, in news, commercial news in particular, having those hands-on technical skills is also really important, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, today, I mean, there's a lot of emphasis with phones and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, anyone can pick up a phone and go shoot. Um, you know, if you get to a news station, you know, they're not all of them are going to use their phones. They have those big cameras. And mm -hmm. when I was at uh, WSIU uh, TV, right after I did radio, I moved on to TV. Uh, I got to learn some of the, uh, like the JVC cameras we use. There were small cameras. There were big cameras. Uh, there were just uh, cameras that you could learn off of and cameras that you could use and take out in the field. Uh, you know, that's something that, you know, as a sophomore, as a junior, like, you know, you, you kind of wait until you're a senior to do that. But they're letting you take this early on especially if you're confident and especially if you're a go-getter. You know, they love go-getters here at SIU. <laughs> and, you know, but the more you can learn about a camera or any little piece of equipment that you're going to use, uh, the more uh, the more open your creative mindset is going to be because that's what's ultimately important in TV, in TV reporting, um, is to find a creative way to tell a story or know how to craft a story. Yeah. And of course, uh, so many folks who work in commercial uh, television as reporters are often the camera person as well. They're shooting their own video. Mm -hmm. One man band. Or yeah. One person band. I one should say. person band. Yeah. I mean, and and also very often editing uh, video. I know when I worked uh, many, many years ago in commercial television, I would often edit my own reports. Um, but now that um, doing that camera work is also very, very common, especially in small and medium-sized markets. But even in some large markets, there are multimedia reporters. Yeah, MMJs, multimedia journalists, and they do it all. They cut, they shoot, they write, they, 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 they basically do everything. I mean, that's what I was doing yesterday, um, doing the story about uh, this uh, former pastor who, who passed away in a tragic accident uh, at the Heron House of Hope. Uh, I think we heard that this morning on WSA Radio. And, uh, you know, I was I'm by myself. I'm usually by myself, but, you know, I, I hear about how these people talk about Jeffrey G. And so I try to convey the emotion with my shots, like tight and like when I'm intimate, when I'm talking about an intimate moment, maybe tight shots, you know, kind of gener general, you make wide shots. You know, as you as you kind of grow as a storyteller and as you grow with how you uh, with your skill set on the camera, the stories are going to come. Uh, it's just all about the reps. It's all yeah. about going at it and you know because you're not going to get it right the first time you're not going to get it right maybe the second time if you do you're awesome superstar mm -hmm. but for most people it takes a little bit of time and you know sometimes uh myself you know i get kind of frustrated uh with some of my work because i feel i could have done better here could have done better here sometimes things don't work out that way and you got to go with what you have yeah. and to adapt is uh, the most important thing in media overall it was great to meet Danny Valle talking about his experience working for WSIU while he was a student. Larry, I know you have this in common with Danny. You were a student and got a chance to work at WSIU, work here, and learn so much in this program before launching your broadcast career. Absolutely, Fred. You know, WSIU is one of those few places where you can get hands-on experience as a student. You can put what you learn in the academic world right to use in the studio. And that's one of the biggest factors that helped me decide to come to WSIU, work at the university, and be a part of all this with this, as a student. You know, those things are integral to what you learn uh, when you're in school and you come out and you can go right into the workforce, which is a wonderful thing because there's very little training that needs to be done because you come out with the tools you need to succeed in whatever you do in broadcasting. Yeah, and experience, as you heard in that conversation with Danny Valle, is so important in this career. When you give to WSIU, and we hope that you'll do that today, even if you're already a member, we hope you'll make an additional contribution, you support that kind of incredible experience that students get with our organization. We have student employees, 
as well as interns at the station. And you know, Larry, just recently, uh, I was talking with uh, another uh, person who works here and was a student here. Uh, and, and she was saying, and this is absolutely true, that there are so many schools around the country where students only have a chance to be on like a closed circuit television program or cable television, not broadcast TV, like the experience that you get here with WSIU. To have that true broadcast experience, uh, while you're still in school, while you're still learning as a student is, is irreplaceable. Yep. When, you leave, when you leave here, you come out with those skills and those tools that you just wouldn't find it any place else. And it's more par with what you're gonna run into in the commercial world when you leave the university. Absolutely, so you'll wanna go to the website on your screen, siuday.siu.edu. This is the day, now is the time to give students the opportunity of a lifetime as they learn at WSIU. We are live back in the WSI studio. What a great segment. Boy, Larry and Fred were animated there. I tell you what, incredible the reach of WSIU. Five million people, five states. Uh, but again, today is about supporting the WSIU and everything across campus. You can give where it matters to you, siuday.siu.edu. Uh, we've got another uh, uh, opportunity here to speak with one of our great students, a junior. Madison Giltner, uh, a transfer for started at Mississippi State, came to SIU. And Madison, great to have you here. And Thank tell us about your me. journey. Yeah, so I started my freshman year at Mississippi State, and then I transferred here to SIU because I wanted more of like a smaller college campus, but not too small. And here at SIU, I definitely feel like I'm not just a number. Um, so like you said, I'm a junior now, um, studying sports administration involved with the dog pound. Uh, that was like my big part of getting involved here at SIU. And really that's taken me so many places. I now take photos for athletics, doing men's basketball and football. And it's just a great experience being here at SIU. Jess, you know, we had Dylan. We interviewed Dylan a few seconds ago and you'll see Madison. I guess you've taken up photography. You've been, I've seen you at a bunch of ball games taking yes. pictures this year. Yes, I do that. Uh, mainly for men's basketball. That's kind of something I started this summer with athletics. We started with football and then moved into basketball. And that's, I love doing it. It helps me. It goes along with my major with sports admin. My teachers have been so helpful with me trying to find an internship. I found one for the summer Great. and yeah, just sports administration. I can't brag on like the faculty there enough. They're amazing. Just cool. In mentor, the internships are really an important part of the education. You know, many of you Saluki um, alums had, had opportunities for internships. So Madison's experience career wise, what, what, uh, what's in your future? Um, I'm thinking something along the lines of doing photography, hopefully for a professional team or somehow doing communications for an athletic team of some sort, whether that be collegiate or professional. Okay. Now, Dylan and you threw out the gauntlet to the beer group. <laughs> The dog pound, you're going after them. Now, these are the champions three bit. times over. What do you think? You got a chance? I mean, it's time for the young ones to step <laughs> up, you know? <laughs> it's our time. And again, we can make gifts. Students can make a gift through Venmo this that's year. That's right. So that's going to make a difference. I know they all have Venmo. Yeah, yeah they, <laughs> they do. I know they, they do. do. What does day of giving mean to you? Day of giving to me is giving opportunities to students everywhere, you know, whether you're a traditional come here as a freshman or whether you're a transfer looking to find your home. I mean, day of giving gives opportunities for scholarships to so many students. Maddie, thanks. Madison, thank you for being here. We really appreciate all you're doing. It's great to see it, all the activities. Just another example of our great, the great work our students are doing. Your gifts support our students. Uh, this is the seventh day of giving, uh, siuday.siu.edu. Uh, we are at 800 gifts, Madison. We went over the number. We're closing it to $200,000. We think it will be a record-breaking day. So give. All gifts matter. We move forward. And uh, this is truly one of the great days for our university each and every year. So let's make it even more special this year. Thank you again, Madison, for joining us. We're going to turn now to the Office of uh, Anti-Racism, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion under the leadership of Dr. Paul Frazier. Hello, I'm Paul Frazier, Vice Chancellor of 
anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And hello, happy day of giving. I am Sherika Hunt, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer for the SIU Foundation. And today we have joining with us Graduate Assistant Quentin. So Quentin, can you introduce yourself yes. and share with us your background and as well as the support that you feel um, that is needed for a student like yourself here at SIU? Yes, so my name is Quentin Lee and uh, I am from Kansas City, Missouri. I've been a Saluki for about eight months. Um, I previously just played football here this past season in 2022. And, um, you know, I felt like it was important for me to um, to get involved with diversity, equity and inclusion, especially with Dr. Frazier, because um, first off, just speaking about Dr. Frazier, we had a short conversation just in a parking lot of the football complex. And um, it just made me realize that I want to work for a guy like that. And uh, there's definitely a lot of more information out there that people do not know about, specifically students. And um, I would just like to um, just be that extra person that helps spread the information so students can get the best opportunities possible. Thank you. As part of the university's strategic plan, the goal of DE&I will achieve the following key objectives. Be intentional in our recruitment and support and advancement of our diverse student body and faculty and staff Create a safe space for all students, staff, and faculty. Increase cross-cultural engagement between students, faculty, and staff. Cultivate and nurture a campus community that values, respects, and supports diversity, equity, and inclusion. We hope to increase retention and graduation rates with racial and ethnic parity. Okay, so Dr. Frazier, um, the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion terminology is a very hot topic right now. So can you explain to individuals when we use a term, a terminology underserved students, right? What does that mean for our students here at SIU? And what does it mean to support those underserved students? So I think as a matter to uh, what it means for students is access to resources, uh, access to, to achieving their dreams. And so as we think about uh, underserved, it, it may be better, uh, a better term may be that they're underrepresented uh, in a lot of aspects and in a lot of colleges and a lot of programs. So we wanna afford them the opportunity to have access to everything available at SIUC. Okay, I love that, you know, um, underrepresented, right? It's the terminology that we are using. So as we are intentionally going out and recruiting um, a diverse student population or underrepresented student population, the Office of Anti-Racism, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion is dedicated to being a model of inclusive excellence by welcoming and engaging all of our stakeholders, right? So from our internal stakeholders to our alumni, corporate representatives, and as well as our community partners. So in my role here um, at the SIU Foundation, my role was designated um, to provide a division and an outreach to focus on those philanthropic efforts um, in diversity, equity, and inclusion across the university initiatives. So that we are aware that charitable contributions can assist our students um, and the university in advancing and broadening the missions and strategic objectives, right? So in our opinion, why should there be a focus on philanthropic support for our underrepresented student population? So our efforts are concentrated on removing obstacles. And, and I think it's important not only for that giving aspect, but also for alums to come back and visit. Uh, their, their contribution uh, may touch that individual that was like them. Uh, for our students that are underrepresented on this campus, who represent 36% of our 11,000 students, over 11,000 students who are enrolled, in, enrolled for the fall, or that 60% of our students who are first gen. And if you're a first gen from East St. Louis, South Side Chicago, or Chicago proper, or even the rural areas of Southern Illinois, you'll have the same uh, obstacles on paying for your education. Yes, um, I totally agree with that. So that's why uh, we are here now asking for support because we are devoted to identifying supporters for our efforts um, and selecting um, and encouraging philanthropists of color and other populations um, who are marginalized um, to 
it to have interest who have interest in funding uh, for student success. So we realized that involving our diverse alumni could help raise more awareness and more funds for our underrepresented student population. And we also want to leverage our alums with their talents and their resources for additional support. And I know um, you talk a lot about um, our alums and our partners not only giving back monetarily to our program, but also being um, a presence on campus. Can, can you talk a little bit more about what does representation mean um, to SIU? Absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned before, um, your money and your talents, but the most tre the treasured thing that you have the most is your time. And, and that time is invaluable. We can't put a price on the time that you may have. And for our students to have that experience, to share your experience, uh, to share with them what it means to be a Saluki. I think one of the things that we could talk about the DE&I efforts, but one of the things that, that brings us together more than anything is all being Salukis. Yes, right. Um, you have a great concept um, called Saluki Helping Salukis, where we encourage all students on campus to be servant leaders. Um, and as you say, you know, we all are Salukis, so we all have to help each other. And so our day of giving goal is to support the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Development Fund to support gap funding, emergency funding, um, support wraparound services for our students to assist with retention and recruitment. We also want to increase our faculty diversity so that our students can see themselves within their instructors and as well as to highlight um, the contributions to our alums who have just, you know, made a significant um, contributions to not only their communities, but as well as to their professions and as well as to our students here at SIU. This fund will provide res resources and support. Uh, there are emergency situations and food deserts that uh, unfortunately are part of our campus day to day activities. Uh, that fund will help support that. It will help support, um, as you stated, recruiting uh, high level uh, professors, faculty and staff, uh, which uh, in, in turn gives us access to new beginnings for our students. OK. And so, um, Quentin, would you care to share um, anything interesting that you've heard today about the support that this center provides? Like how important is that to you and your journey here at SIU? Um, I would say it's very important because just shortly working with Dr. Frazier in this office, I see so many students come in needing assistance and um, I'm just happy to help them. Um, I think it's very important that, you know, these students have an outlet to go to when it's time for help and needs of those those matters. And um, I just um, I, I just think it's very, very important. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so there is a, a quote that I, that I like, you know, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, right? So um, individuals can help with one drop, right? But when we all come together with one drop, we can create an ocean. So we can create the change that we want to see for all students here at SIU. Um, diversity um, and equity and inclusion is not just something for our underserved student population. It is for all students. It is for, you know, um, even staff and faculty as well. So it helps, it helps to create this culture of collaboration and innovation as we continue to thrive and advance here at SIU. So I, I think those resources, um, We'll, we'll also support the notion that there's a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. um, and for our alums, they felt like they belonged here and enjoyed being a Saluki. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to provide our students with an opportunity uh, to find that same love for being a Saluki and also reaching our dreams of accomplishing a degree from this institution. Great. So we are asking um, everyone that is out there um, to support the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion and the Development Fund um, is supporting all underrepresented students here at SIU. We understand that your gifts can support, um, can support scholarships and resources for historically underrepresented students and as well as first gen students, right? Um, and undocumented students as well. So your support to improve academic and career support for students 
and will help to boost retention and completion rates. And so the great thing about this giving day is that your donations can start helping students now. So the more students that we can assist, the more students that we um, can turn over and create Salukis and to make an impact not only on our community, but just to the um, entire country as well. We also have opportunities if individuals would want to create a legacy um, by endowing a scholarship or a naming opportunity. So if you're interested um, in those legacy giving opportunities, you can contact my office at 618-453-4925. Thank you again for all that you've done and all that you will do for our institution. Go dogs. Welcome back to the studio. What a great, great presentation session from Dr. Frazier and Sharika Hunt and, and all those in the Office of Anti-Racism, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. You know, this is our seventh annual day of giving. We ask you to make a gift and the beauty of it, you can restrict your gift to any area on campus. In my case, this morning at seven o'clock, I went on to the website at siuday.siu.edu and made a gift to support Dr. Frazier's efforts. You know, DEI is part of the strategic plan that Chancellor Lane will be on later to talk about, one of our main pillars. But that's the beauty of it to you alumni, whether it's the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Science, whether it's the library, the library, the College of Liberal Arts, you can give to whatever you want to give. It's that simple. You can find the funds when you go on the, that you want to give and designate it to, but every gift matters. We are now at 882 gifts. We're almost at $200,000. We are off to a great start. One of the highlights so far today has been in the studio to have some of our outstanding students. And right now we're joined by Kennedy Marks, who is a senior, physiology, I think a minor in chemistry, uh, one of our just rock star students. So Kennedy, welcome and tell us about you and your journey here at SIU. Yeah, so I'm a third generation SIU Saluki. My grandma went here. In fact, she met my grandfather here. Uh, my mom went here as well, several of my aunts and uncles, and then me. Um, I'm a physiology major, like you said. I'm also a part of the Science Saluki Ambassadors, the Pre-Health Professions Association, um, the Honors Program, and the list just continues. And my goal in the end is to go to medical school. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, you are a University Excellence Scholar. That be congratulations that you've achieved some great things academically. I don't think I may have qualified for those types of academic scholarships. And that's the beauty of what we offer. And you work in the Barsar's office. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, it's a wonderful experience. I've gotten to build up my confidence when talking to students. Um, I help students out when understanding their bills and everything like that, what basically uh, their bill is down to. Um, I help with understand like, okay, your bill is this, this, and this, and your financial aid is this. I've seen students where they don't get a lot of financial aid, um, so scholarships and everything like that, they play such a huge role in helping pay for students' bills. Wow, that is just, again, underscoring the importance of scholarships, bridging that gap, uh, really making a difference for retention for many of our students. You also, I think your grandparents had an interesting yeah. story here. What is that? So my grandparents did come to SIU. In fact, there was an old fire around 1960, 1970, and my grandfather was a firefighter. And there was this giant fire, I think it was at Old Main old Campus. Main, old main. And my grandmother was a student there. And I believe they met on campus. They met during that fire. Just incredible story. Any, what does day giving mean to you? Oh, it means so much. So I don't get a lot of financial aid, so I don't get a lot of grants or anything like that. So any sort of scholarships or any sort of financial aid, like anything like that, it is a huge help. Um, since, I, like I said, I don't get a lot of grants, so I either have to pay out of pocket or try to apply for as many scholarships as possible. Thank you, Kennedy, for being here. Thank you, remarkable story. We're proud of you. You represent us well. Again, day of giving, uh, siuday.siu.edu. We ask that you give uh, whatever, all gifts matter. We're closing in on the thousand gift marks. 
on this seventh annual day of giving. So thanks again, Kennedy. We're now going to our outstanding School of Education. Grant Miller, Associate Professor here in the School of Education. And uh, let's take a look at what's going on behind the door here. All right, it doesn't look like much, but this is progress. This is going to be our new Welcome Center here in the School of Education. It's going to be a great value to our community at large, to our faculty, to our prospective students, and even more importantly, our current students. Something that we learned after the pandemic is that coming back, we needed a space to gather. And this is going to be that. So as I said, it doesn't look like much right now. This is an old computer lab, but you can see progress that's being made. So a huge deal of thanks to our donors for the School of Education Excellence Fund. Thank you so much for your support. Hi, I'm Cecil Smith, Dean of the SIU School of Education. And I'm Catherine Syme, Director of Development for the School of Education. Thank you for joining us today on this exciting day of giving. Catherine, it is an exciting day today. Uh, in the pre previous video, one of our professors, Dr. Grant Miller, just gave us a tour of our new Welcome Center in the WAM Education Building while it was in the process of being renovated. Thanks to the generous gifts from our alumni and donors to the School of Education's Excellence Fund during our last day of giving and throughout the year, I'm so pleased to share with you that our Welcome Center is now complete. Thank you for making this possible. We look forward to welcoming current and prospective students, families, and community members to this Education Welcome Center so we can showcase our quality programs and faculty in the School of Education as well as to discuss research and innovation in the field of education with students and other education leaders. We hope that this Welcome Center fosters stronger connections by providing a warm and welcoming space for conversation and collaboration. Thank you again for your day of giving 2022 gifts that made this possible. Our motto for the SIU School of Education is teach, motivate, educate. And we are laser focused on preparing students to be teachers and educational leaders in classrooms and academic settings throughout Southern Illinois and around, and around the world. Students in child and family services and our early childhood education programs learn to work with some of our youngest learners. Elementary and special education students and all of our students in the teacher education programs receive hands-on classroom experiences through their time at SIU. Students in our educational administration and higher education programs prepare for leadership roles in a range of academic settings. And students in our workforce education and development program meld education, training, and experiences to impact learning in organizations in a range of academic settings. There's a lot going on in the School of Education. Today, on this SIU Day of Giving, we're grateful for the support of so many SIU School of Education alumni who give back so School of Education can launch forward in our efforts to teach, motivate, educate. Your gifts today and throughout the year make a difference in supporting teachers and teacher candidates, academic leaders, and policy developers. Just like teaching, the ultimate impact of your giving extends far beyond the walls of this university. The reverberations of our alumni philanthropy changed lives in classrooms throughout this region and around the globe. On this SIU Day of Giving in particular, we're asking for your support for a few programs that have wide ranging impact in the School of Education. The Teachers Shape the Future Fund supports teacher candidates as they seek to enter the educational field and emboldens these new teachers as they start their new career. The Education Graduate Fellowship Fund supports graduate students who are seeking to make a difference in the educational field through educational equity and social justice research and policy initiatives. And the Ex Education Excellence Fund provides funding for the most immediate student and faculty needs within the School of Education, including scholarships, tutoring initiatives, and other community engagement opportunities. And finally, you'll soon hear from Dr. Grant Miller again about how gifts to the Undergraduate Scholarship Fund help us respond to the teacher crisis shortage that impacts nearly every community. To give to these programs and more, click over to siuday.siu.edu and select the School of Education. Thank you to all our alumni and friends who have supported the School of Education so generously. 
I see the difference your gifts make every day for our students, faculty, and academic community. And I know they join me in expressing our gratitude. Thank you for being a part of SIU Day of Giving 2023. We're so excited about all the ways the SIU School of Education is making a difference for teachers, students, and educational leaders. Please join us by making your gift today at siuday.siu.edu. Thank you. Hi, I'm Grant Miller. Oh, geez. That threw me off that we were there for a second. <laughs> They haven't come back to tell us a minute. Okay, immediately assigned. We are live in the studio. Okay, we're live in the studio. Uh, what a great segment from our from our School of Education. Again, uh, it's the seventh annual day of giving. Uh, we're uh, uh, off to a great start here, 918 gifts, almost $200,000 raised. And um, uh, it's just a, just a, oh, we're not live? Oh, I heard someone say live in the studio and that light came on and you guys weren't here. <laughs> Lily and I were winging it. Okay, we are live back. What a great segment from our School of Education. Uh, just, uh, just a reminder of the depth and the, of, the, of the greatness here at our university. There are colleges and schools. You heard from Dean Smith and Catherine Syme there. So just, just, it's a, just an electric day. You can just feel it out there. We're almost at uh, $200,000 from our almost at 1,000 gifts. So we ask you that you, you lift and you support SIU today. Uh, any gift, all gifts matter, uh, siuday.siu.edu. My name is Matt Kupek. Again, I'm, one of my privileges today is to be the host and to be in the studio and have so many of our outstanding students with us. Uh, right now, we have Louis Barrera. Uh, Louis is a senior, uh, just truly a rock star. And, and Louie, why don't you tell us about you and all the great things you've done to our audience out there? Sure. Um, I'm a senior. i currently studying social work. I also have a minor in American Sign Language, ASL, so I know three languages. I know Spanish, English, and ASL. i currently involved with the marching band, so marching Salukis here since my freshman year. I'm also just a fraternity. I, so I joined Samuel Lando Beta International Fraternity. Uh, I'm also involved with Latino Cultural Association. So and the list goes on. I'm always, and you'll always find me around campus running around. <laughs> and 3.5 GPA. Yes, 3.5 yep, GPA right. as well. Yes, uh, very proud of that. And I'm also a first generation um, Mexican student from um, south side of Chicago. Just a great reminder of we have a really good first generation uh, center here. Uh, gifts can support the center. Uh, um, you know, we have a, a, a number of our students, our first generation, which is a very cool thing. And you just had, do you ever sleep? Uh, yeah, I do sleep. It's, it takes, uh, sometimes I kind of have to do all nighters, but I, I try to catch up on my sleep. And what, what instrument in the marching salukis do you play? I play the baritone. Um, okay. So if people don't understand what <laughs> instruments are, imagine a trombone or a tuba. But in the shape of a bell, yeah, the, of trumpet. Hey, Louie, I was a trumpet. I played the old trombone years ago. <laughs> you and I can go, you know. Yeah. The, uh, and and uh, you know we are having a huge uh, the Saluki ball we mentioned Jeff Kaleem and I, F. Chancellor and Lauren Lane, and we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge a couple of students and just hint hints. Louie could be one of the outstanding students to receive the Saluki ball award that night. Yes. It's just an extraordinary career you have. What's your life? long ambition so i'm currently in school for my bachelor's of social work and i'm also going to go into my master's of social work once i'm done receiving my master's of social work i'm going to go back to school and get on my interpreting degree because i want to help the community so i'm in chicago because it's my hometown and i want to connect with the deaf people and my community as well my latino community and help out i like to pay it forward a lot especially since we're all doing here people are paying it forward for more students to go to school just, just incredible. I tell you, I got goosebumps listening to you right now. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say to the Saluki Nation out there? Uh, please support us. It's always a great students for me. 
I don't have, I don't get a lot of aid from FAFSA. I always try to go around and ask, or not ask, just, just try to see if there's any way I could complete my schooling. I'm always getting my bachelor's and then I'm really excited for my master's. Louis, thank you for being here. Just a thank reminder you. to the Saluki Nation, your gifts are supporting students like Louis Barrera. Just truly extraordinary young man is doing incredible things. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. And you represent us so well. We'll see you in Chicago. Yes, yes. Saluki training on up there and go rock this world, okay? Yes, thank you. Go dogs. Yeah, go dogs. Again, this is the seventh annual day of giving. Uh, the SIU day .siu edu. Please make a gift. Support students like Louie. We really, truly appreciate it. It's a great day for SIU. We're going to turn now to the Office of Student Affairs. Hello. It's a great day to be a Saluki. I'm Jeff Bergen, and I have the honor of serving as the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs here at Southern Illinois University. Hello. I'm Jamie Clark, and I am the Director of Student Health Services and the liaison for our new HEROES program. Roy Bennett is quoted as saying, help others without any reason and give without the expectation of receiving anything in return. Learn to light a candle in the darkest moments of someone's life. Be the light that helps others see it is what gives life its deepest significance. The need in student affairs is deep and your support will directly provide impact to our students at SIU. Complementing the academic enterprise of the institution, how do we create programming efforts outside the classroom that fosters a holistic experience? It is said in our line of work that an engaged student is a retained student. Our desire is to engage students on campus through meaningful involvement opportunities that enable students to gain leadership experience while also serving the campus community. Our student health center subsidizes mental health treatment, both in counseling and psychological services and psychiatry to offset cost. Additionally, wellness and health promotion services provides health promotion and prevention education to equip students with the skills needed to make effective choices regarding their health and well-being. We aim to promote positive health changes and prevent negative outcomes. Outreach programming and resources are provided to create a healthy and inclusive campus culture. Our disability support services is committed to assuring the students with disabilities receive equal, effective, and meaningful access to all campus programs, resources, and services. We recognize that diversity of abilities is a source of excellence, enrichment, and strength for all members of the university community. Our staff coordinates and provides support services to students with disabilities and works closely with faculty and staff in an advisory capacity, providing disability education awareness around ensuring equal access within courses, physical structures, and in the online environment. And of course, Touch of Nature, which is working to become the premier regional outdoor space that provides this community with education, concerts, team building, recreational opportunities, and a glimpse of physical beauty created by God. We know that if students' well-being and extracurricular experiences are enriched, the chances of their success are increased. This isn't only good for SIU, but a benefit to the world. Dr. Bergen, we are doing some amazing things here at SIU, and for that, I'm excited. I would like to highlight our award-winning first-generation student program on campus. Based on a generation, generous donation from the SIU Foundation, the first Saluki Center was established several years ago. The center is located on the second floor of the Student Services Building and is being operated by Dr. Linnell Love, the Assistant Dean of Students. The first Saluki Center was established to address the large number of first-generation students coming to college campuses. First generation is defined as students whose parents did not graduate from college. The center provides peer mentoring, tutoring programs, events, resources, as well as financial assistance with book vouchers and tuition assistance. Since its establishment, we have had over 300 students access the center with 90% of the 300 persisting from fall to spring semester, and 91% of students above a 2.0 cumulative GPA. Again, the program has been recognized as a Strive for College member, NASPA Silver Award winner, and a first gen forward institution. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk about two programs that are instrumental in providing students with access to the resources, 
services, and wraparound support that they need to be successful in achieving their goals at SIUC. The first is our Saluki Cares program, and the second is an exciting new program called HEROES. Saluki Cares is a comprehensive university-wide program run out of the Dean of Students Office and Student Health Services, where we facilitate and coordinate support in wraparound resources for students who may be experiencing difficulties related to academic, financial, mental health, medical, housing, and other adjustment issues. The program is just what it says, Saluki's Care. We care about each of our Salukis, and we will go above and beyond to help our students succeed both inside and outside of the classroom. The Saluki Cares Response Team has representatives from all across campus who collaborate and work together to meet the needs of our diverse student population. Anyone can file a report on a student, including faculty, staff, parents, community members, other students, and even the students themselves. Reports can be filed on the Saluki Cares website or by making a phone call to the Dean of Students Office. Let me give you a few examples of common issues addressed by the Saluki Cares team. First, a faculty member may not have seen a student in class for the past two weeks. They file a Saluki Cares report about the attendance issues. The Saluki Cares director will assign this report to their academic advisor who will follow up face-to-face -face or by the phone, via email or via Zoom to talk about what's going on and how to get the student referred to the appropriate resource. Depending on the reason that the student is not attending class, they may be referred for tutoring, counseling, financial support, or whatever resources may be helpful in getting the student back into the classroom. Another staff member may have interacted with a student in our TRIO program or in the residence halls and notice the student is very stressed and showing signs of anxiety or depression. When they file a Saluki Cares report on transitional or mental health concerns, they would be immediately assigned to one of our mental health providers at Counseling and Psychological Services, who will reach out and do an intake session with that student. With increased awareness of the Saluki Cares program, referrals are on the rise. There were over 1,750 referrals in the past academic year. In addition to the continuously high numbers of mental health referrals, the number of Saluki Cares referrals for academic concerns and financial distress continued to increase by 29% and 10% respectively. The large number of students experiencing difficulties with housing insecurity, food insecurity, and other financial challenges led to the creation of our new HEROES program. HEROES stands for Higher Education, Resources, and Opportunities for our Salukis in Need. It provides individualized support, guidance, and advocacy for students experiencing stress about where their next meal might come from, or how they can maintain a stable and safe living situation, and how they will be able to afford staying in school while also accessing needed healthcare, transportation, clothing, personal care items, and school necessities. HEROES has specific programming and resources available to help provide our resources to our students in care. This includes students who have been under the care or in legal custody of the Department of Children and Family Services at any point in time. Funding the HEROES program would help us provide students with the opportunities and resources to be academically successful at SIU pursue their future goals while being physically and mentally well. HEROES aims to reduce insecurities and improve wellness, remove barriers to academic success, and empower students to invest in their futures. Staff, faculty, family, and peers can refer students for assistance by submitting a Saluki Cares report or contacting me as a liaison. Students may also self-refer into the program. We understand that college is a difficult time and we want to provide students with the opportunities and resources to pursue their goals without insecurity-related stress. HEROES can provide students with housing assistance, food security, medical care, counseling, transportation, clothing, personal items, school supplies, financial aid applications, food, medical, and housing assistance applications, and your contributions can help allow HEROES liaisons to house, feed, and clothe students in need. Support our Salukis in need through this HEROES program. Dr. Clark, I am truly excited mm -hmm. about the work that we are doing in our student support programs. I always was taught that charity starts at home and it's my belief that people give for multiple reasons. Because they may feel a connection with an organization or institution, because they believe in the mission and the vision of the organization and institution, what I believe to be a very important factor is that they want to insist in the growth and well-being of something that can be amazing. So today, I would like to make a contribution to you on behalf of my family, 
to you and heroes because I believe in the work that you're doing. Thank you, Matt. Go dogs. We are back in live in the studio. What another great segment from Jeff Bergen, Jamie Clark in the Office of Student Affairs. The great the generosity there with Jeff Bergen. And, uh, you know, it's so important. Uh, we're so committed here to SIU to really making sure that student experience is off the charts good. Uh, we work hard to recruit students here. We want them to stay here, enjoy the experience, get a great education. And your gifts help support that. Jeff and Jamie talked about where the gifts go to support. It's seventh annual day of giving. Uh, it's siuday.siu.edu uh, to make a gift. Uh, we are now closing in on 200 donors and over $200,000. And uh, we are off to a spectacular start. We go all the way to six o'clock tomorrow. But uh, so we're going to we're going we're gonna to have this live stream up till 2 p.m. And then we'll go over to the library for a celebration. So um, uh, we're thrilled again to have another one of our unbelievably successful students with us today. She is a senior, uh, one of our student athletes, Brianna Robinson from Indianapolis uh, track and field uh, stellar academics as well. Brianna, welcome, and just tell us about you and your experience here at SIU. Thank you. Um, my experience has been fun. I think it's kind of different being a student athlete. You know, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You um, you meet new people while also being able to, like, travel with your track team and build different relationships and just kind of build my athletic career also, as well as my academic career as well, yeah. And you throw the shot, the discus, the tough things in track, right? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. 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 Well, I've always wanted to be able to do them, but uh, <laughs> it's, and you're also in, get involved, I think, in a sorority on campus. Yes. Um, Sigma Amaro Sorority Incorporated. Um, I'm a part of Psi Chapter here at SIU. Yeah. So, you know, we do want to focus more on like reaching the community, community service. We just came back um, about like a year and a half ago. So we're trying to make our impact and Good. yeah, come back. Good quick. stuff. It, the, the giving back is such an important part of our university. Yeah. Uh, and our students exhibit that each and every day. Academically, you're majoring in what? Exercise science. Okay. And mm -hmm. what are your career aspirations? Um, I'm still figuring that out, but I do think about athletic training or sports medicine physician, just kind of seeing which one suits me best. Yeah, yeah. And you've had a great experience here, a yeah. great education. Yeah. And you got hurt last year I with did. an ankle injury. Yeah. Coming back this spring. Yeah, um, I was injured last year, I sprained my ankle, um, and then came back, and my knee, I've been having issues, but um, we have a whole meet coming up, so hopefully I'll be able to make my opener there. Good yeah. stuff. Well, Coach Jones does a great job yes. leading our track and field program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been very successful on the women's side in throws, mm -hmm. uh, Olympic, Olympians, and, and what yeah. have you, national, uh, All-Americans, so uh, you're part of a great program there. Yes. It is. It's a good program. It has good history, and great people. So good stuff. Anything yeah. to shout out to our Saluki Nation out there? Um, there's a home meet coming up, April seventh and April eighth. We would love to have you guys support. Um, but yeah, you know, just it's a great day to be a Saluki, I guess. Awesome. Well, Brianna, thanks <laughs> yeah. for joining us. Uh, Brianna will be another student at the Saluki Ball that's going to receive. An award will let the cat out of the bag or whatever that expression is, but just an exemplary exemplary career here. Again, seventh day of giving, siuday.siu.edu. And thank you, Brianna, for being here. Let's go now to the uh, Paul Simon Public Policy Institute.
Hello, this is John Shaw. I'm the director of the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute at SIU in Carbondale. Um, very privileged to be the director of the Institute. And first of all, I'd like to, to welcome you on today, which is SIU's Day of Giving 2023. Uh, it's your generosity that allows the Institute to continue to go forward, to advance Paul Simon's uh, uh, vision for the Institute and to elevate uh, his legacy in Illinois. I'm going to spend just a couple minutes and tell you what we're up to, what we're doing now to continue Paul Simon's work. First thing is, as we all know, Paul Simon was a national and international leader, but he was also deeply rooted in Illinois. So we've developed some programs to help strengthen Illinois. The first is the uh, Paul Simon Jim Edgar Statesmanship Award, which is for high level leadership in Illinois. We've already done it for two years. This will be our third year. Uh, we've also launched a Renewing Illinois Summit, held our sec second summit for university students in Illinois last fall had a great, uh, great turnout. And we're really lucky to have some terrific speakers. The Speaker of the House, Chris Welch, was our keynoter. And I might say this was the first time a House speaker had been on Carbondale's campus in nearly 20 years. So he was terrific. So that we're very proud of the, uh, the Renewing Illinois Summit. And the third initiative is called the Paul Simon Democracy Prize, which is a prize that we're giving to, to Illinois students to uh, encourage them to design projects to advance democracy in our state. These three programs, I think, really reflect the best of Paul. We have some additional programs. We have a Meet the Mayor series, which is wonderful. We have an Illinois Author series, which is terrific. Uh, we have a congressional conversation series when we speak to a member of the Illinois delegation. We're very proud of that. And we're also just launching a new series called Rising Stars in Illinois Politics, in which we're going to highlight younger leaders. So we think like we're doing a really good job in keeping uh, Paul's image of strengthening Illinois alive and well. We also are following his, his lead and having a national and international reach. And I'm really proud of our program, Understanding Our New World. It's a Zoom series that we've done for almost three years. Years. We've had about 100 different participants from as far away as Australia, Sweden, Ireland, uh, within the United States, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Seattle, St. Louis, Chicago, just remarkable reach. We've had some terrific lawmakers, policymakers, diplomats, authors, and this series has been watched by people from 25 different countries and about 45 states. So we feel like we've done a really good job in, in projecting the, the work of the Institute. But the, one of the most central things we do is, of course, provide opportunities for students. Uh, scholarships, internships are just terrific opportunities for people to launch their career. And I want to turn this over to my colleague, Linda Baker, who will tell you a little bit about our internships in Springfield. And then we'll also hear from some of our interns who will describe their particular experiences. I'm Linda Renee Baker with the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute, university professor, and I am the professor of record for the internship program. Uh, I'm responsible for directing the students uh, on their journey for the internship program. Uh, the students start in the spring, they start in January, and they finish in May. Hi, I'm Ty McCain. Um, I'm a junior at SIU, political science major with a specialization in pre-law. I'm an intern this spring for the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute. I'm a Gene Callahan intern for the House Republican staff. These internships are very valuable to students. We have approximately four interns every year. We have our Gene Callahan interns, there are two of those. We have the Alexander Lane internship program. Latino Heritage and Bart Brown Internship Program. My name is Kamaria Herman. I'm the Alexander Lane intern. These internships are extremely valuable to students. It gives them firsthand experience in terms of working with the legislative process. They get to learn firsthand what staffers do. They get an opportunity to staff committees. They write uh, reports on a weekly basis. They monitor the General Assembly. They're able to learn from those individuals that are doing the work while they're still in college. I'm Al Tills. I'm the Gene Callahan intern for the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute. I am at SIUC pursuing my political science degree uh, with a pre-law specialization, and I'm looking forward to the law school next year. Uh, these are juniors and seniors, and it's an exciting time for these students to be here at the state capitol. For those students who are interested in public policy, government, all aspects of government, these internships are invaluable. I've gotten networking and a 
good feeling to the legislative process. Uh, I say networking because you meet so many different people from both sides of the aisle, uh, my staff and the Democratic staff. And then the legislative process, I, I analyze bills every day. I go to committees and um, you get a real full understanding of what, what's going on. I have gained a lot of interpersonal skills, developing unique techniques of communication writing for public affairs. I've got the ability to see what goes on behind the scenes with bill review and analyzing a budget, and talking to agencies and Senate members and along with lobbyists. And it's really been cool to see behind the scenes of what goes on with legislation. These interns learn about the legislative process. They also learn about the executive branch. Some of them uh, are working learning and working with the governor's office. Others are working with members of the General Assembly. Some of them learn what lobbyists do uh, on a daily basis. Um, they learn to uh, interact with members of the General Assembly. They get an opportunity to work with the various constituency groups. Uh, some work with the trial lawyers. Others are working uh, with mental health um, organizations and other organizations across a variety of different areas and a variety of different interests. Uh, the good thing about these internships, you don't necessarily have to be a political science student. You can be a history student, a student that's interested in history, a student that's interested in government, any public policy student. This is an exciting opportunity for these students. Many of them go on and they actually get jobs in state government. Some of them stay on and they become staffers and they staff uh, members of the General Assembly. Others uh, go out and they run campaigns and they get involved, involved in the election process. Others are more interested in working in state government um, at the agency level. Some of them go on and work for the Department of Corrections, the Department of Mental Health. These are exciting internship opportunities and our students learn firsthand what public policy is all about and they learn firsthand how our government works uh, in the state of Illinois. I applied for this internship just to give me a pathway and point of direction of where I was going to go after my doctor's degree. I know that I wanted to work in public affairs and this would give me the knowledge and experience that I need. Working here in the Capitol is big for me. Nobody in my family has any professional experience like this, so it's a lot of history to make it for me and the generations of my family. I applied for the Gene Calhoun internship because I was familiar with the Institute. I went to a couple of their events. I uh, had a great history professor, Dr. Schmoot, that introduced me to Dr. Baker, and, uh, and I applied because I was so close to home. One of my favorite memories from this internship was working with the during the inauguration. We got to meet face to face with some members for the first time, so it was an experience and a lot of history in the making. Another favorite memory of mine is when Representative Will Davis introduced me in front of Illinois House of Representatives during the legislative session. I think my favorite memory of the internship so far has been on budget day. I actually got to talk to one of my neighbors who just was here with the Farm Bureau. I didn't even realize it was him, but he came up to me and we just started having a conversation. I realized it was my neighbor. It was awesome to have that interaction on that day. Remember, SIU day was here and it was, it was just a great experience. With my career, and uh, if I end up going into politics, it's invaluable to everybody that you meet. And a lot of people that I work with on a daily basis now, uh, in three, four years, could be leading their committees, could be members. So just building a good relationship is, is really important. If I get my, my law degree, I can maybe use these connections to talk to staff members about what bills were intended to do, what members were focused on doing, enacting legislation, and getting a better understanding for it. Whenever I make my arguments, I love working in the Illinois State Capitol because I'm originally from here and uh, so I've always been around it and, and it's a beautiful building and so to really be inside and with the House of Republican staff we work on the second floor so it's going it's to be hard to go to, to an office that doesn't have 20 foot high ceilings with paintings and all kinds of ornate decorations on it. It's uh, and the, the, being approximately close to, to everything, to the House chamber, to the committee rooms. It's, uh, it's a great experience. Working in the Capitol is surreal. I have gained a lot of memories that I'll have for a lifetime. These internships really prepare our students for the future. Better politics, better government. When we think about Paul Simon and his legacy of working with students, these students learn firsthand what happens in government and it's building our future. Our future leaders are those interns that come out of this internship program. We're very proud of it and we look forward to uh, having more interns here in the capital in the future. By donating to the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute, you can help interns like us.
The Institute is proud to have had the opportunity to work with students like Alex, Kamaria, and Ty over the years. We've had just some terrific interns who've gone on to do really important things in state government and elsewhere and really kept Paul's legacy alive and well too. So again, thank you for all you've done to support the Institute. We'll be uh, delighted for any future support and particularly today on SIU's Day of Giving. If you'd like to make a donation, please go to siuday.siu.edu and make your tax deductible contributions. And we'll continue to work hard to keep the legacy of Paul Simon alive and well. Thanks so much. We are back live in the studio. Just another great segment from our colleagues over at the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute. John Shaw does a great job. A shout out to Linda Baker, one of our great friends, and just uh, truly one of the most important uh, uh, public policy institutes, not only in, in Illinois, but in the, in, in the Midwest and, and, and arguably in, in the nation. So they do an incredible job. And, and again, it's, uh, this is our seventh annual day of giving. Uh, we are now over a thousand gifts and over $330,000 raised. We kicked off at six and uh, we are looking good and picking up momentum. So the day is early uh, and Salukis are already standing tall. If you hadn't made a gift, we ask that you consider it and, 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 and give as much as you can. Uh, all gifts matter, it's the theme this year. We're trying to get past 3,500 donors and uh, on our way to what we think will be a record-breaking year. Uh, uh, to make a gift, it's siuday.siu.edu, siuday.siu.edu. All gifts matter. The beauty of it, it's very simple to do it. As I mentioned earlier, I went at 7 o'clock this morning, made my gift. Uh, our, our colleagues at the, in our foundation have done a great job setting up Matt McCoy and others. Uh, and you can give to whatever you want. You've heard from students, you've heard from our leaders, uh, make the gift and make it to where you want. All gifts make a difference. Uh, uh, philanthropy has a incredible role here at our university. So uh, we're just uh, uh, thankful for what you've done so far. And we're looking forward to finishing this day with a bang. That's the Saluki way. Uh, we're gonna turn now to our friends and colleagues over at the College of Agriculture, Life and Physical Sciences. Hello, I'm Eric Brevik, the Dean of the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences. I'm very excited to be here with you today for the SIU Day of Giving. And I'm Susan Graham, Director of Development with the SIU Foundation for the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences. And I'm very excited to join Dr. Brevik here today as we celebrate another day of giving at SIU. So Dr. Brevik, how about you give us a few updates on the college and different initiatives that are going on within the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences? Now, there we have lots of things that are being supported by donations made to the college. Uh, for example, we have a soybean center here on campus, originally established with an endowment provided by Illinois Soybean. And that endowment generates funds that let our faculty and our students research. So we have, for example, this past year, uh, grants given out to faculty within our crops uh, program our chemistry program, geography program, animal science program, and at the School of Medicine. So it really gets across the entire college in terms of its reach. Um, we also have a study abroad trip going to Australia this year, and we have a, a generous donor that provided scholarships for two of the students that are making that trip. Um, Earth Systems and Sustainability received a planned gift for the geography students. Um, this past year, something that will enable those students to be more active in going to conferences and, and engaging in some of those things that build those students into their careers. Um, we also have uh, an agreement with uh, SNN, uh, one of the uh, SNP, I'm sorry, one mm -hmm. of the local uh, John Deere dealers uh, in the uh, here in the area, our local John Deere dealer, uh, but that provides equipment for the farms, which allows us to uh, do things that we simply could not do uh, prior to them providing uh, that equipment on an educational lease, which it, you know, the difference between you know, what they could make leasing that out and what they don't make because they let us have it, that's, that, that's a big donation to us that, that's very meaningful uh, for us. Um, 
we have uh, two of the Mashoff family, uh, Ken and Dave, are alumni of our program here. And they, the Mashoffs have very generously been donating animals and feed and other support to our swine center on the farms uh, here at SIU. And, you know, animal um, the training in the animal sciences is very important that our students have the ability to go out there and work with the animals, but it is not inexpensive to provide that education. That makes such a difference for us um, in terms of what we can do. Uh, we've also been working on building up our sustainability program out at the farms. Um, and we have uh, we received a grant this past year from the Illinois Farm Bureau that very generously allows us to do community programming um, there. Um, the foundation has provided funds for state-of-the-art equipment that allows our chemistry faculty and faculty-related areas to run analyses that you know, they, they could not otherwise run. Um, and we have the uh, Bob and Beth Gower who have provided uh, funding for uh, an annual uh, research symposium. They come up just about every year to see what the students who receive uh, the awards from that funding are, are researching. Um, and so those are just a, a few examples of some of the great things happening in CALPS. And they're happening because of various donors and the things that they provide to our programs. So many outstanding things that affect our students um, and impact their experience here at SIU. So let's talk about as well that community engagement and involvement and recruitment activities within the college. That's a vital part of what we do and is provided in part by funds provided from our donors. Yes, there's a lot of ways that we engage the community and that our donor funds really help with that. Um, we, some of you might remember back in 2017, we had a total solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. Uh, here in Carbondale, a lot of really great programming that went along with that. We have another eclipse coming April 8th of 2024, and planning is underway. Um, and we would love to you know, get additional support to help those eclipse efforts. Um, we had something like 30,000 people on campus the last time the eclipse came through, and we're shooting for every bit as big, if not bigger, this time around. Um, we, have, uh, we have field camps that we run to support some of our programs. In particular, geology and forestry um, have summer camps that are critical to their students' education and to providing um, that opportunity to learn all the different things they need to know to be professionals in their field. Um, again, those field camps, they're critical, but they're not inexpensive to run. And support for those field camps from our alumni and donors is crucial in order to provide the students what they need. Um, we have a number of labs and facilities here on campus that need to be renovated, upgraded, uh, or in some cases even replaced. Um, just uh, for example, um, we're looking to get a greenhouse rebuilt back behind the agriculture building. We need a new wet lab uh, for our fisheries program. Uh, the one that we have right now is the roof literally is caving in. Facilities is doing some amazing things to keep it operational at the moment, but we really need to, uh, to replace that facility. We would love to build on the uh, on, on what we're doing with the eclipse and that astronomy side of things with an observatory here on campus. So these are examples of great places that people could help us out and that we could move the college forward. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not, uh, of course, these aren't all encompassing lists. There's a lot more out there, but, you know, we're short on time. So those are just some <laughs> good examples of what, what we what we have out there, what people can help us out with. So yes, there's a great number of things that impact our students and programs, and we're very excited to share those. And don't forget to go to siuday.siu.edu <laughs> to support us on Day of Giving. Thank you very much. My pride in SIU and appreciation of the opportunities offered to students of all levels has expanded exponentially since joining the Ambassador team. I've developed this passion for SIU and it's something that won't falter. To me, being an Ambassador means having a commitment to tradition and to embodying Saluki pride. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a group as unique and as long lasting as the Ambassadors at any other university in the country. For 36 years, the Ambassadors have had an unmatched passion for agriculture, made complete by our love for SIU. I wanted to join the Ambassador team because I was recruited by Ambassadors. They added such a personal touch to SIU and the then College of Agriculture that no other university could compare.
I'm so happy to carry on their legacy and I hope to see students that I've recruited up here in a few years. From this experience, I'll be leaving SIU knowing more alumni than I ever thought I would ever meet and with a better set of networking connections across agriculture. I joined the Ag Ambassador team to give back to the agricultural program at SIU and to show high school and community college students that agriculture is an option for a career. I didn't come from a school with an existing agriculture program, so I have enjoyed connecting with students who have and have also not been around traditional agriculture. Being an Ag Ambassador has opened my eyes to the unique opportunities provided to students within SIU Agricultural Sciences. The community here is extremely close-knit and very different from other programs. My experience with the Ag Ambassadors has given me a reason to take great pride in not only being an Ag student, but also a Saluki. The best part about being the advisor of the Ag Ambassador team is watching students grow. Ultimately, each Ag Ambassador is reminded every day of why they chose SIU. The more students that they meet and the more recruiting that they do allows them to develop a deeper appreciation for what it means to be a Saluki. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. Ag Ambassadors. We're excited today to be joined by a couple of our outstanding students from the college to share their experiences and as an SIU student in CALPS. So I'm going to let each one of you introduce yourself, tell us what your major is and where you're from. Yeah, well, I'll start off. Hello, uh, my name is Shelby Basham. I'm currently a sophomore here at Southern Illinois University studying agricultural communications and agricultural business. And my name is Cade Cockburn. I am also a sophomore here at SIU, double majoring in agribusiness economics and agricultural systems and education. And I'm from Johnston City, Illinois. So Kate and Shelby, how about share with us just in a few seconds here, um, what it means to be an Ag Ambassador and how it's influenced your time at SIU. So I'll start with that. Um, being an Ag Ambassador really means um, promoting SIU and the College of Agricultural Life and Physical Sciences. As Ag Ambassadors, we're really the ones that are on the front lines recruiting students, going to high schools, community, uh, community colleges and college fairs, really to promote SIU and our Ag majors to our prospective students. Yeah, for sure. So when discussing that and discussing what being an Ag Ambassador about and what it's about for our prospective students is really opportunities. So having that opportunity to connect with these students about their passion for the agricultural industry, as well as show them the great opportunities SIU Agriculture has to offer. So you also both have received scholarships. So could you tell us a little bit about how that influenced your selection to come to SIU and how it's impacted your journey here? Yeah, so when talking about scholarships, being here today and being able to choose my chosen course of study, I've been able to travel to different conferences, been able to take advantage of all the great learning opportunities given to me due to the scholarships offered by SIU Ag. So as Ag Ambassadors, we're pretty used to promoting SIU and all the benefits that come with being a student at SIU Agriculture. And one of those things I always tell them about is scholarships. Um, my Saluki experience truly would not be what it is today had I not gotten the scholarship opportunities that I did. That's allowed me to have on-campus jobs, to attend more networking opportunities, and to spend more time worrying about my studies and my involvement than about how I'm going to pay for college. Well, thank you both for helping us today. This is just a sm small example of how your scholarship donations impact our students and the programs they serve in, such as ambassadors. Be sure to go to siuday.siu.edu to support programs such as these. Saluki spirit isn't born. It's nurtured by those who came before. It must be shown, a flag waved proudly by those who know. Our future rests with our students and support from their biggest fans. On the SIU Day of Giving, we let our imagination run wild always moving forward together as past, present, and future collide. Join us. 
We are back live in the studio, the largest broadcast studio in Illinois, south of Chicago. What another great segment from our colleagues at the College of Life and, and, and uh, Life, uh, Agriculture, Life, and Physical Sciences. Mouthful. It is a mouthful. It really is. Just a, a reminder, the seventh day of giving, siuday.siu.edu. We are at 1,100 gifts. We have surpassed the 350,000 mark. We are off to a truly spectacular Saluki day here. We're thrilled to have in the studio with us our chancellor, Chancellor Austin Lane, who's doing an incredible job leading our institution. Chancellor Lane, welcome and great to have you. Thank you. It's great, great to be here. I'm excited. Uh, day of giving is here. It, it went fast. Yes. It? It's like we were just here. <laughs> uh, and, and it's turned out to be a day of excellence. Yes. All of the uh, folks yeah. that have been on, I've been tuned in to my office, and as I drive around campus, I have it on my phone. I promise I'm not driving and watching it. But uh, just to showcase all of the departments and, and all of the, the excellence that's happening at the university, and for people to be able to see uh, exactly where their dollars are going, I think you've accomplished that, Matt. You and your team have done a fantastic job, so hats off to you, and I know the day is just beginning. We still got a lot of time on the clock here behind me, but uh, excited. It's a great day. And Chancellor, you told me you were just uh, on the website making a gift yes. and you were navigating and giving to certain different areas and pretty simple. Even I can, can do this uh, <laughs> without the help of Jody and some other folks. So I, I was able to go in there and I love how you can designate where you yeah. wanted to go with the the different squares that are there from all of our yeah. schools or different offices yeah. and and you can split up your gift and, and move it around and, and put your card in and hit submit it's, and it actually works. I got my emails uh, yep. as a response yep. to yep. that and, and it's your name on it's there. The, you give a nice little yeah. letter. There we go. Uh, that comes out. So great, <laughs> great job. Yeah, great job. Well, that's credit to our great team in the foundation who do a spectacular job. Fundraising yep. is just doing extraordinary things. And it's because uh, great staff, but great loyal alums. That's right. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the day of excellence. It's really the day of impact as well. Wow. Let's talk about scholarships. And, you know, mm -hmm. for those who are giving a scholarship, we've had some students up here, rock yeah. stars, yes, Chancellor, you have. rock stars. Yeah. Talk about scholarships and what we're doing here with the university. Yeah, you had one uh, student here by the name of Louie. Louie. Louie is a rock star. Yeah. And, and I tell you what, Louie was, was being a little modest. Yeah. You notice in his segment, he said, you know, I, I have to go around and ask for money. And he tried to clean it up, but I don't want him to clean it up because right. that's exactly what our students are doing. Uh, if you're on our campus in that period of time between about a week before the semester begins, uh, myself, Matt, and others on the cabinet, we run into students all the time when it's crunch time. These, this is times when students say, I don't have 500 bucks. I don't have $1,000 to close this gap. I won't be able to register. In some cases, I won't even be able to graduate unless I have these funds. This is how serious it is, and this is why days like this are, are needed, because that, that's the worst part of my job, right, is yeah. trying to figure out, well, the best part is figuring out how to keep students financially here, but the worst part is to see those students that you can't help. And, and that have to go home. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they failed out. It's not because they didn't take care of business. You see all the excellence that you're showing today with mm -hmm. our students. Not about that at all. It's about students not having those dollars to close the financial gaps to stay, right? These are great students, great kids from all over our state, all over our country, all over the world that need the support. And I wanna thank our donors. I wanna thank our alums, supporters of the university, uh, our community, everyone today that's, that's, it's not the amount. I think you said that before, mm -hmm. right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, we're just asking for the gift, mm -hmm. right? Every little bit helps. You'd be surprised how much your gift will save a student. And as Louie mentioned, they'll, they'll pay it forward, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Those students, when they become alums, they will remember this day, just like you out there that have been giving today, and they will pay that forward. Uh, to other Salukis that are going to come after them. And that's what this day is about. And I'm excited about that. Yeah, it truly is extraordinary. You're the leader of this great university. And so quick comments on the state of where we are 
and the direction where we're headed. You know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm almost, uh, this July will be three years three for years. me. It's gone fast. And I think what I was talking about, the day of, of excellence, uh, it's not just a chancel that makes this happen. It's folks like Matt, you. Uh, it's other folks on our cabinet. It's our faculty. It's our staff. It's our campus community. And so it, it takes all of those entities to really help move a university of our size forward. Uh, you're seeing a lot of new faces. I finally yeah. rounded out the administrative team. So you're seeing a lot of the folks who've done the videos or new deans or new uh, 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 cabinet members that are on. So you're seeing a lot of new folks who are all dedicated and, and fully bought into the Imagine SIUC and 2030 strategic plan. Yeah. And, and that's really our, our laser focus. So if anyone is wondering what the university, what their alma mater is doing, uh, what their institution is doing to try and move the needle, we're still focused on those top five priorities and pillars. Uh, student success and engagement, very critical for us. Academic innovation and research, critical pillar. Uh, you heard from Dr. Frazier and, and uh, Sherika was here earlier with our anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's also a pillar. Uh, branding and, and marketing, uh, and then sustainability. And so all of those areas we're focused on and your gifts really tie into one of those key pillars, right? You've, you're hearing from individual departments, you're hearing from deans and, and other areas, but everything that we do and that we're collectively focused on is tied into one of those pillars. And so we're excited uh, that work continues and uh, things are, are going well. Yeah, just a, a great plan, inspiring a shared vision. Mm -hmm. This is a community plan, yeah. just not yours. And that's, that's right. the fun part yeah. of it. And then having the right people in the, to, to execute uh, and deliver on our commitment to the public. That's right. As a public university. What about faculty? You know, yeah. and you're th we have great faculty here. Just comments on our faculty. You know, our faculty, luckily they're here. They could be anywhere in the world. Uh, the level of expertise, the level of scholarship that our faculty have, our faculty, uh, I would put our faculty up against any mm -hmm. top university in the country in terms of what they do. But what's special about our faculty is that they engage with our students as soon as they arrive, right? If you're at most research universities, yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, a lot of those faculty are working with mm -hmm. graduate mm -hmm. students. They're working with, with upperclassmen here at our university historically. Uh, our faculty have engaged with undergraduates in their research. Just today, we we're awarding uh, an award uh, that came from the governor's office that related to the Lincoln uh, Laureate, the scholarship for students. And there's only one of 48 students that received that. We had a student today uh, that received that and we had her, her uh, um, ceremony oh, cool. over in the library. And it was because of the, the recommendations that came from our faculty is why she won that award. So oh. our faculty make all the difference. Yeah. I always tell people at commencement, uh, you will not remember who your chancellor is 20 years from now. I mean, I don't even remember who my chancellor was at the universities <laughs> I attended, but you will always remember your faculty members yeah. 20 years yeah, from now. If you true. think about that, that's you'll true. remember four or five. Now, some you'll remember because they're that's very true. hard. Right. <laughs> They're very tough and, and, you know, they put you through the, the ringer and others, you'll just remember the support that they gave you. So our faculty, uh, you know, I know John Pollitt's like this, likes to say this a lot, where the library is the heart right. and soul right. of the university. Right. Our faculty right. are the heart and soul of the university. Yeah, very well said. I will tell you, uh, you're a dynamic leader. And I do think people will always remember you. Uh, but I yeah. totally agree with you about the <laughs> no, faculty. Yeah. yeah, it just, uh, <laughs> those right. are truly game changers yep. that really help influence our young people and our students mm -hmm. here. Let's talk about outreach. You yep. know, uh, we've spent a lot of time building those pipelines. We've done a lot in takeover tours. Oh, yeah. What? What's, tell us about all that. Yeah, you know, you know, you know about that better than I do. <laughs> uh, you and I talked about this a couple of years yeah, ago, yeah. and you ran with it, mm -hmm. and that was the Saluki takeovers. Mm -hmm. You know, we we talked about how we wanted to reestablish ourselves in the region, uh, and also in the state, right? And that was kind of our 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 starting point, mm -hmm. right? We wanted to make sure those in the region knew that they were mm -hmm. first priority. Right, because we're physically located in yeah. the Southern Illinois region, yeah. that was important. Uh, we also wanted to make sure in the state that we reached out to one of the largest uh, alumni pockets and, and student 
uh, populations in terms of what we would want to attract to the mm -hmm. university. I think Cook County still continues mm -hmm. to be the number one county for enrollment. So we wanted to make sure we had a, a stronghold in that area as well. And so the Chicago takeover and some of the other takeovers that we've been able to do, it really takes the excellence on the road. Mm -hmm. And we engage not only with our partners in those areas, but we're engaging with other uh, leaders and, and folks that really want to help the university grow. So uh, those have been game changers for us and our university. We're seeing the difference now in enrollment in terms of what we do to enroll students from the Southern Illinois region, that percentage has increased. That means more students are staying home. So we're dispelling the myth that students are now leaving the region yeah. and going somewhere else. Yeah. That day is over, yeah. right? We're keeping those students home. We're making competitive offers to those students, making sure they don't seek yeah. out institutions and that they don't have to go anywhere, yeah. right? They can, they can start here and go wherever they yeah. want to go after they leave. And so, that's where the Imagine theme comes into play. Yeah. Imagine starting here and going wherever you want. And so we're really excited about those, those types of, yeah. of opportunities. We'll continue to yeah. do that. We'll continue to engage with our mm -hmm. alums to help mm -hmm. us when we get to those cities. Uh, but those have been really fun to do. And, yeah. and we, we're gonna continue Just that. Incredible. Slukies are everywhere. They are. 266,000 yeah. alumni. Again, you can see we're up to 1,129 gifts. Chancer? During your time, I think we've gone up over a hundred thousand wow. dollars. So you're doing a great job. Well, let's here. keep let's keep talking. We're at four hundred and thirty-three thousand. <laughs> your gifts make yeah. a difference. Yeah. It's siuday.siu.edu. Please uh, keep on reaching and thinking about your alma mater. Make a gift. All as the chancellor said, all gifts do make a difference. Let's talk about research mm -hmm. and aspirations we have around e research as truly one of the leading goal, global universities as a research university. Yeah, part of one of our pillars, uh, I mentioned academic innovation right. and research. You know, we were very fortunate to hire uh, Dr. Uh, Costas Sesoulis, and so hopefully people are, are able to right. engage and start to meet him. He's doing an incredible job, has only been here a few short months, and so leading that research effort, he's our vice chancellor for research and the dean of our graduate school. And so a lot of, of, of ideas and plans there. You know, when I arrived almost three years ago, we talked about our status as an R2 mm -hmm. high research university and what it would take to really move that needle and become that R1 status mm -hmm. university. And I didn't take that lightly when I came in because we had to lay a lot more of our foundation mm -hmm. to be able to move there. And so that's really what we're working on now is what does it take to not only get there, but then to sustain of uh, being there yeah. and making sure that we're doing the, the types of things that we want to do that's going to make the difference, not yeah. only in our university, but then obviously across this region and yeah. in the state. And so that work continues on. Our faculty are critical in that role. We just redesigned our indirect cost uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, of where those dollars go and how we can incentivize mm -hmm. research in that regard. So that's moving in, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Our faculty, uh, particularly our graduate faculty, helped us mm -hmm. with that. And so mm -hmm. we're excited. Uh, of what that's going to do to incentivize a little bit more research out there to help us move closer to that R1 status. So that work continues yeah. with a lot of, of uh, what I consider to be key, key individuals here on campus. Yeah, it just, uh, and you know, the camp, Matt Salverson mentioned our campaign as the uh, half a billion dollars, uh, right. the fifth largest in the history of Illinois public university. That's going very well. Going very well. And I noticed Matt did a great job. You know, we were down yeah. in Florida and he, he gave some props to his wife. <laughs> That's kind of a, an inside joke, but uh, Matt, he's such a nice guy. Isn't he? He truly and is. uh, he got some brownie points today. I saw him earlier on the, on the uh, show, uh, Matt. And I, I think Matt has done an incredible yeah. job to help not only with the forever SIU uh, campaign, half yes, billion yes, dollar campaign you talk about uh, university our size and, and yeah. the kind of power we have in our alums and our donors yeah. to, to be able to get there so we're on the right track yeah. and again you, with you and your team you guys i don't know well, when you, you sleep thank but you. uh you guys are always <laughs> hustling out there we appreciate it thank great things ahead for our yeah. siu aren't they chance they are great great day to be a saluki it's great day go dogs great day to again, be a saluki. we're coming to an end of this segment with our leader chancellor lane you only uh, gave me 15 minutes, man. 15 minutes. Sorry, Chanta. I see. You guys want a tight ship.
we've got we've got such excellence <laughs> oh, yeah. across that's campus, right. and we right. only have yeah, six hours. So uh, that's a testimony <laughs> yeah. of the chancellor's leadership, though, that we want to showcase all the great things we're doing oh, here. Yeah. It's a team. There that's is no right. I in team, right, right, Chancellor? That's right. So totally it's uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the incredible job you're doing. Yep. Chancellor, we're up to 450000 now. The gifts continue to flow in during right. your segment. Again, siuday.siu.edu. We ask you to give what you can give. Support this chancellor. The great leaders you're hearing from today are students. Uh, this is a game changer type of day, Chancellor. That's right. It is. Let's keep it going. Great, great stuff. And thanks again for joining us. Uh, we're going to now go to a quick uh, message from the School of Medicine Chancer, and then we're going to hear from our Women's Leadership Council. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. We're at Schlafly Pap Room in the heart of downtown St. Louis, and this is an event that is bringing Salukis together from all over the region. So excited to see what this weekend brings, and go dogs! I'm excited about the Saluki Takeover Tour and now excited for it to come to St. Louis, get a chance to engage with other alumni. So as an alumni, it's very important to stay connected because we have a lot of lessons that we've learned over the course of a few years and we can always share those with students that are coming through SIU's programs. I can't thank SIU enough for how it prepared me for my career today. We've got a lot of activities going on. We have the NBC basketball tournament. We've been out all day giving out scholarship letters to students who we hope to bring and be future Salukis. So great to be here. Great to be with our alumni. We're so excited about another St. Louis takeover. If you look behind me, this is Saluki Nation. We've got it out on the highway, on billboards. We've got our fans here with their paraphernalia and their gear on. I'm just really, truly proud of what the administration has done in the last several years. Uh, Chancellor Lane is just awesome for our alma mater. I'm just really proud to be a Saluki alum. Go dogs. At SIU, we value compassion, collaboration, excellence, equity, discovery, and most of all, the best of patient care. For every gift you give, tells me that you value the same thing we do. You value our community and you value the work we're doing for the patients. Please join me in being a Day of Giving champion. Hi, hello, and happy day of giving. My name is Sherika Hunt. I am the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion with the SIU Foundation. And hello, I'm Dr. Dawn Cordy. I'm a board member with the SIU Foundation and proud co-chair of the Women's Leadership Council, a division of the SIU Foundation. So Dawn, um, as the foundation, we are you know, steering in this new phase on really identifying diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so as um, the student population has grown and 51% of our students are now women, why important uh, was it to formalize Women's Leadership Council? Can you tell us the background, the beginning stages, and some of um, the objectives? I can, I can, and it's exciting. The Women's Leadership Council was established in 2020, and it's a network of alumni, parents, and friends who are committed to creating a culture of women-driven women philanthropy at SIU and mentoring future generations of Salukis. We do a lot of things, and the important thing, though, that you have to remember is, did you know, Sherika, that three out of four successful women credit their professional success to having a female mentor? Wow, I, I can't believe it. Um, we all know, you know, mentorship, um, like you said, is a factor of success um, with women, sponsorships and mentorships. And that's one of the things that we sought to do with this program was create a mentorship program and cultivate the expertise that we know that can be shared between professional women and our female Salukis that are on campus here. One of our goals of the mentorship program is obviously to, to facilitate professional growth and development, but we wanna build confidence with them too. 
We wanna provide an avenue for women to develop and demonstrate their leadership abilities, provide a network opportunities to enhance teamwork and coaching and development. And the most important thing is probably help women realize their true value. And that is something that can be so shared. You know, I get a lot of questions about, well, I'm, I'm a woman, but I don't know if I have enough to give. And I can tell you that our pursuit here is to create lifelong commitments and future donors. And you have a story and every woman can share that because that's what creates the sustainability for SIU Carbondale. So we're pretty excited. Okay, okay great. Yeah. So as an alum um, and going back to when you were a student here at SIU, how um, significant would a program like this um, have played um, in your journey, your career? And you are, you know, highly successful now. And we all know that it's very important to extend the olive branch back, you know, um, to those walking behind us. But when you were a student here, how important would this mentorship program would have been um, to your overall success? It would have been huge. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I started out as a music major here at SIU. Um, for piano performance. And while a great gift, um, I just realized quickly mm -hmm. that it might not be the right place for me. And so I could have really used a mentor, a future woman that I could have looked up to and been able to help me guide my path. Um, and when I changed majors, um, I went into the paralegal studies program and then subsequently went on to finish with an MBA and then my PhD, but it mattered. Yeah. It mattered a lot. And that's why I appeal to all of you. It doesn't have to be just treasure. You have time and talents too. Yes. And that's what women really need. And, you know, we want to create the future. So if you have a thought about our program, believe me, there's a future Saluki, a female Saluki that's waiting for you. And I know you can make an indelible mark mm -hmm. and help us build the future. Um, you know, I always mm -hmm. say it's about tomorrow today. Mm -hmm. You think about tomorrow today, and this is how you can do it. Yes, um, I love that, right? You know, oftentimes we hear the narrative, you know, be the change that we right. want to see. Right. And so I love how, you know, Saluki um, female alums are pouring back into the students. And I also think it's important to recognize that it's not just about that academic support, what you all are doing are providing life skills um, and leaning in on those critical thinking skills that can be transferable from career to career. Because we all know, right, you may major in something and you may not, you know, that your life destinations may not take you that course. But if you have those fundamental yeah. skills, you can transfer them over and over again. I think that's important for young women to see too. And we have a lot of first gen students. We have a lot of students, you know, just from social economic backgrounds. And so when you talk about just changing the course of someone's life, having someone there, not only as a mentor, but as a friend um, as well, can aid in mental health, because we don't talk a lot about that too, with being, you know, a female on a college campus. Um, and again, especially if you have these disparities, it's just having someone with that listening ear who may have gone through the same things that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. And I also love that you all are very transparent and are aware of you know um, your position. So if you don't know something, you're able to say, hey, I can't help you, but I know someone in my network who can help them as well. That's the trick, right? Mm -hmm. It's about the support and how that support plays out is certainly something that you define with the mentee, mm -hmm. but you're right. I mean, with over 50% of the freshman class being women, we have yeah. a need. And I think it's important because research shows that mentoring girls, especially women of color, mm -hmm. can really have a difference. Anything from lower dropout rates, to higher graduation rates, college enrollment, mm -hmm. higher aspirations. Yes. And I think that's the best thing you can do. You talk about legacy. Yes. You want to leave a legacy. Yes. yes, you can do it in a lot of ways. But what better way than giving your time and expertise and transferring knowledge mm -hmm. to a female Saluki today that can help realize her true potential? Yes. And I think that's one of the best things we can do here. So I love that. We're really proud of it. And, um, you know, mentorship and the other thing that we're doing with the program is making them into lifelong 
givers, Mm -hmm. right? And again, time, talent, and treasure. We want them to be forever tied and committed to SIU. And this is one of the ways that we do it is through mentorship. Um, I love that. Um, um, And as you all know, we have a lot of work to be done just as women in general. So when you talk about, you know, time, talent, and treasure, um, and the treasure piece of it, you know, is that women today um, still um, only make 82 cents of the dollar compared to their male counterparts and with women of color making even less. less than that. And so I think, you know, what you all are doing with this program um, is that you are giving a sense of confidence, a sense of empowerment, so that as we continue um, to combat these disparities, right, individuals, they remember, right? They remember the foundation. They remember the support. And you are right. We are, we, we do want to make, you know, students here lifelong Salukis, um, mm-hmm. being a student here, as well as volunteering, being a part of the program, and then being able to create a legacy of their, of their own by giving back and creating exactly. scholarships and endowments, um, naming opportunities as well. You know, it's just not the male's playground. Women, we can play in the sandbox too. You got yeah. it, we can. <laughs> yes. And frankly, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to yeah. mention, but most women make the decisions in the household. Yeah, so I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've met your husband. <laughs> And you've met mine, yes, yes. <laughs> but I think it's important that we help them find that mm-hmm. voice. And this is the way that we can do it. Um, you know, when I get on campus, I just get so pleasantly reminded of my happy time here and the, the things that I in- encountered and the people and the memories. And I want that same thing, yes. but I want to also help them get on a trajectory and again, make them lifelong Salukis and lifelong donors. And I can't think of a better way with the sure. foundation's help and, Again, it's it's my honor and privilege, and I hope that people consider today as a way to find their voice, too, to be able to mm-hmm. give back to a place that gave so much to them. Okay. So talk about, um, tell me, Don, what are some um, ways that individuals can, can support Women's Leadership Council? Um, of course, you know, with their treasures. So talk about, you know, a little bit how that impact, how that will impact um, the program. Well, it certainly is going to matter if you make a donation today. We utilize those funds by creating scholarships for future women. We also are creating micro grants for women groups and women philanthropy on the campus. And we're certainly wanting to really make SIU Carbondale a female friendly institution on the map of colleges and universities across the world. So that's how we're using it. Um, Everything goes back. We've had several events. We had our first Saluki Women's Weekend last fall, Mm -hmm. which was a great success. And I know we're gearing up for another one this year. So I'm happy to say that if you you make a donation today, which is what we hope you do, if you decide to be a mentor today in the program, we certainly have the information on the screens that you can do that. But moreover, just know that you can make a difference. And this is a way that you will actively see your dollars at work with the female Salukis here on this campus. Well, Don, I think you summed that up perfectly. Thank you. Um, again, we, we thank you for your continued support. We thank you for our uh, potential supporters in supporting this wonderful program that will help to make an impact with uh, female Saluki students here on our campus. So again, thank you. Thank you. I have the fortunate ability to not only have been a mentor in the Women's Leadership Council with the SIU Foundation, but also in my career. And it has probably been the most rewarding experience of my life. I think the biggest thing is being open to opportunities. I think a lot of time you're like, okay, this is my prescribed path. I'm going to take it. And my mentor really helped me just open my eyes up and look into um, different possibilities. And because of her, I'm now on a different path than I had originally planned for myself. I think talking to a mentor really just helps you put things in perspective. And it helps you realize you don't have to have all the answers and you may change your mind and that's okay. My mentor, regardless of what I told her, she was always understanding, always there to offer me advice and just hear me out. I've been in a lot of leadership roles and leadership groups and just women's groups and listening to women and sharing experiences um, is so valuable. 
because we all kind of encounter a lot of similar things and you can use that experience based advice to kind of mold how to handle a situation and it can be so impactful to a career or whatever you're trying to figure out in your life that you just you've got to make the time to do it the business world tends to be very male dominated so it's very cool to see her perspective on it and it's cool to see multiple generations of salukis coming back and taking care of current salukis that's really awesome everybody has a pearl of wisdom everybody has a story a success a failure sometimes it isn't so much how you succeeded as as much as you learned from when you failed hopefully we can teach them how to define success with themselves and within themselves and then they go for that mark for the rest of their career not just what somebody else says you should be and you have to to know what you're doing matters and i can't think of any better way to spend time than to give it back like this we are back live oh god another great segment from the Women's Leadership Council. It's so exciting to see uh, what has been started to engage women in the life uh, of uh, women alums in the life of the university. And kudos and a shout out to Dawn Cardi for her leadership, uh, for Sherika Hunt and her great work. And just uh, another example of the great things that are going on at our university. Uh, we've got another opportunity to talk with one of our rock star students, and he is a rock star. I'm going to tell you, he is uh, Sue Haas Dantolori, a freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, Chancellor's Scholar. So I'm talking about you got it going on, Sue Haas, uh, pre-med, uh, and just uh, very active, engaged here. Suhas, welcome. Tell us about your, tell us more about you. Well, um, the story of how I ended up at SIU is almost, it's almost like an accident, honestly, but a happy one, I guess you could say. Uh, I actually ended up applying to SIU through um, a friend who told me about SIU, didn't even know it existed until my senior year of high school. When my friends like you should you should apply to SIU. It's a free application, pretty easy. You'll probably get in. And I was like, you know what? I'll apply. And I actually ended up applying in the middle of my high school economics class because <laughs> um, that day I just couldn't be bothered to listen. It was senior skip day actually, so I couldn't be bothered to listen to them. So I was like, I'll apply to college. So <laughs> um, how'd you do on the test? I did pretty good. Did pretty okay. I had an A in the class for what it's worth. There so, you go. You, know? <laughs> you can multitask. Yeah. Truly. <laughs> so I, I applied and, um, you know, after applying, they're like, I got an email and it said, you should apply for scholarships. So <laughs> I was like, you know what, I'll do that too. So I, I applied and before I knew it, I was interviewing for the Chancellor Scholarship and a chance at, um, you know, not having to worry about um, debt, you know, putting aside funds for school and stuff. So I ended up interviewing and I ended up getting that scholarship and I'm immensely grateful for that. And through that, I was able to make connections with uh, my friend's family, who um, most of his family had ended up going to SIU. And for what it's worth, his mom was actually a physician at the SIU School of Medicine. Wow. Um, and that, that was really valuable to me as someone who really values rural health and primary care. I knew that SIU had a great emphasis on that and that, that mission statement really fit me. So through that, I was able to make a ton of connections in the um, field of medicine here in Carbondale and um, where I live in Metro Atlanta. And it sort of snowballed into me getting a ton of clinical experience, a ton of exposure to medicine, and truly finding that I don't see myself doing anything other than medicine. And at first, it was something more like, you know, I like yeah. um, biological problem solving. I like people, maybe medicine's for me. But now it's Medicine's the only thing I see myself well, doing. Well, that beauty of college, finding your voice. You, know, you had those aspirations, but to be so clear now, mm -hmm. uh, you're actively involved with research as an undergraduate, and that's a great experience, right? In the School of Medicine, too. Um, I'm, doing a, I'm doing some research related to ALS, which is um, a neurodegenerative yeah. disease. And um, obviously, it affects a lot of people, and um, it disproportionately affects people in rural areas because they don't have access to care. And so being at the forefront of something like that, where, you know, we're helping those who 
um, are disadvantaged is something that once again is exceptionally valuable for me yeah. and it's something I don't see myself doing anywhere else. Wow, truly a remarkable story. Suhas, we need about an hour <laughs> of a segment here. This is another great example of what is going on here at SIU. Suhas, I believe you've always been a Saluki. I, you know, you feel it, you ooze it, you got it, even though you just learned about it not too long ago. But we're so glad you're here. We're so proud of you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and again, it's the support from alums out there that helped to make a difference. The Chancellor Scholarship is another example that brought you here. So siuday.siu.edu, our seventh day of giving. Suhas, thank you for joining us. Thank let's, you for we will me. do more of this. Uh, you're engaging, and we're proud of you. And uh, let's uh, let's keep supporting SIU, the day of giving. Support goes to students like Sue Haas. So we're going to go to a commercial for athletics, and then we're going to hear from our colleagues over at the College of Liberal Arts. Mr. Salukis, my name is Jeff Glean. I'm the executive director of the SIU Alumni Association. I can't wait to show you what we've been up to. Day of Giving is an exciting time for us, and this year we've launched a brand new effort to support students. Much of our work at the Alumni Association would be impossible without the help of our Student Alumni Council. They volunteer their time and effort to support alumni all over the country. That's why we started a scholarship to give back to them. It's called the Student Leadership Fund, and it will provide our Student Alumni Council members with opportunities to advance their careers for years to come. The fund will be used to send these students to leadership development opportunities like conferences where they can network. Here's an inside look at who the program would benefit. My name is Sarah Lynn. I'm the president of the Student Alumni Council. Hello, my name is David Nelson. I am a academic junior and this is my first year within Student Alumni Council. Um, I'm currently a junior studying marketing and economics. You're really studying human behavior, but then applying it to business principles to help people make money. So I've always been a Midwest kid. Uh, last I went to high school in the south suburbs of Chicago in Frankfort, Illinois. Uh, I came to SIU to pursue aviation flight. Alumni who we run into, they don't know that we exist. And they're like, what are they up to now anyways? And we kind of get to tell them what what's going on on campus. Whenever I'm talking about my position as president, um, like on my resume or in an interview, I always like to say it's not like a typical um, president position because it's like you're leading a group of leaders. Everyone is very independent and in order to be accepted into the Student Alumni Council, you have to meet certain criteria. This organization gave me the opportunity to meet probably more people than I ever have. So like President Mahoney, uh, Chancellor Lane, all those, uh, all of our big figureheads I've actually had personal interactions with. Building relationships and friendships with the fellow SAC members, that's, that's the entirety of it. Um, I, I'm always looking forward to just getting to see my friends and they're wonderful people to work with. So what a great video about our Student Alumni Council. And with me is one of our Student Alumni Council members. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Jacob Rothenberger. I'm from Winsville, Missouri. I am majoring in business finance here at SIU in the College of Business and Analytics. So Jacob, we've talked about the Student Leadership Fund. That's what we're here to talk about today. Um, it's still uh, in, the, in the beginning stages of being put together. Uh, we are asking people if, if you want to support students in the Student Alumni Council and the SIU Alumni Association, uh, this is a great way to uh, help promote and provide assistance to our future leaders, which is you. So tell us a little bit about what having a professional development fund like that, what would that do to yourself and members of the Student Alumni Council? So the professional development fund would enable members like me not only to increase our um, uh, professional development, as the fund suggests, through networking, resume building, um, and other opportunities to build our social and professional skills, but also give Student Alumni Council in general a bigger reach to um, uh, help affect our community and college in a positive light. So um, tell me a little bit about how long have you been an SAC member? I've been a Student Alumni Council member since my sophomore year, so this is my second year. Um, I'm the vice president now, and I got that about a semester ago. So. Tell me, what has that done for you over these past 
two years. The Student Alumni Council for me has given me lots of networking opportunities on campus. I've gotten to meet a lot of the um, uh, administrative administration of SAU and have gotten very close with them. It has also given me lots of opportunities for volunteering and also through volunteering, meeting lots of friends and social aspects and also lots of professionals in the Southern Illinois community who are helping to build and improve Southern Illinois right now. So from a professional development aspect, what would you hope that these funds would allow you personally to gain? I hope that these funds would allow me to gain um, a, a broader experience, not only in the realm of my specific studies, but also through just the various things that you learn in college life and maturing and growing. I hope they give me the opportunity to see some more of Southern Illinois and just what it has to offer as well as what SIU um, uh, can offer specifically. And I hope it allows me and my clubmates and friends to all try to improve ourselves as much as we can for now and the future. Well, um, I know I'm biased. I think the world of this group. So uh, without them, there's so many things the Alumni Association couldn't do. And so for that, I want to publicly thank you for all your efforts, as well as your uh, council members efforts for uh, really helping promote the association, but also promote the Student Alumni Council. But uh, um, just in closing, uh, what has the Student Alumni Council meant to you? The Student Alumni Council has meant to me an opportunity for me to grow and develop and mature. Um, I've developed a lot of skills recently from just being able to send an email and not spend 20 minutes reviewing it and being nervous about sending it to other things that are a bit more in depth, as in just trying to actually be able to make a real connection with people when I first meet them and actually get down to a, um, a deeper understanding with them and what they are trying to do. And it's allowed me and my team members to not only support SIU and learn everything it has to offer, but also help improve it in ways where the administration comes and asks us questions and we can actually give our honest opinions that they take seriously. It's a way for all of us to help improve ourselves and SIU. Well, again, I'm biased. Uh, Jacob, you are a fine representative, not only of the Student Alumni Council, but of what this university is producing. So thank you for spending some time with me thank today. You. Yeah, and appreciate as it. always, go dogs. Yeah, go dogs. All over the country, alumni have volunteered to lead fellow Salukis in sharing the Saluki spirit. From Dallas to Michigan, these chapter leaders are keeping alumni connected and excited about what's going on at SIU. These chapter leaders help fundraise money for scholarships by hosting events in their hometowns. Those scholarships go towards helping current students cross the finish line. Here's more on some of the amazing work these chapter leaders are doing. Hi, I'm Leslie Patterson and I help run the St. Louis area alumni chapter. The trivia night has been amazing to run all these years. We're in our 18th year now. And it's just been amazing to see over the years everybody come back and be willing to donate money, be interested in our events, and help keep our scholarship ongoing. Over the years, we've been able to give out anywhere from $1,000 up to $4,000 scholarship each year. It just totally depends on our fundraising capabilities. Hi, my name is Adam Reed, and I am the SIU Alumni Association Greater Michigan Chapter President. And my name is Quincy Schiff, and I am the Greater Michigan Area Alumni Association Secretary. So we've gathered today for an alumni event at one of our alumni's houses in Southeast Michigan. We have the individuals who have had long careers in the automotive industry who have uh, recently retired and we have individuals who uh, just graduated in 2022. It has just been amazing to see over the past almost two decades how it's just been a solid group of people wanting to keep the Saluki spirit alive here in St. Louis. We get people coming out year after year and um, just be willing to give back so that looked like a great event. And with me is Kathy Maldacious. She's our Director of uh, Constituent Relations. And Kathy, you were at that event. So tell us a little bit about what uh, St. Louis Trivia Night is all about. I was at the event. It was, it was awesome. Um, St. Louis Trivia Night is hosted by, by the St. Louis chapter. Leslie is our group leader. Leslie is our group leader there. And um, she puts this together each year. We host tables. And what this event does is it not only is a game where you play trivia, but it also opens up for some socialization. And people get up from their tables and they get to visit. And so it's really a fun and great event, even if you're just there to 
host it. And most importantly, the money raised for that evening is going to support local students, correct? Every dollar that is proceeds from that event goes back into the St. Louis Chapter Scholarship and they give that scholarship out annually. So uh, that's a good segue here. So uh, St. Louis is one chapter mm -hmm. uh, that does uh, host some sort of scholarship mm -hmm. function. Tell us a little bit more about some of our other chapters around the country who might be doing the same thing. Sure. So we have several chapters that are raising money for their scholarships. St. Louis, though, is one that is actually looking to endow their scholarship. So they are they are working toward that twenty five thousand dollar endowment. And this year's um, this year's trivia night was a great step in that direction. Um, our other ones are mostly mostly given as annual scholarships, and the group leaders will get together with fellow um, fellow. Salukis from their areas, and they do things like pizza parties, and they may just ask people to donate money at the time, or they may have um, an event where they just go to a local tavern or a bar, and they just have put a donation jar out. So there's lots of different ways that chapters can raise money. They can be very formal to the to the trivia night, all the way down to let's just get together and let's just get some money together for these students. So let's elaborate on that, just so people have a good understanding. So. Uh, as you indicated, there is a, a more formal way about going about uh, creating a scholarship through endowments or, or, or what have you. But if, if people just want to give money to help a local student, that is acceptable, correct? Absolutely. We have scholarships available in many counties and regions across the United States. And um, I believe on our day of giving, there's a drop down menu to choose from those. So I would encourage you to give to one that is near and dear to your heart. Maybe it's someplace where you grew up and maybe it's someplace where you live now. Maybe there's not a scholarship where you live. Maybe there's not a group where you live. I would love for someone to contact us, me, the Alumni Association, and we can definitely get those things started because that's what we do. We want you to engage with each other, but we also want to support our students, current and future. Well, uh, again, another segue. Um, if you are interested in either starting a chapter uh, locally here in the state of Illinois or around the country, uh, I would encourage you to reach out to Kathy. If scholarship is, is something that you um, are interested in in creating, Kathy can also help you with this. So uh, again, please, if any of these types of things are of interest to you wherever you're at in this country or in this state or even in Southern Illinois, I would suggest reach out to Kathy Maldacious at the SIU Alumni Association and she can help get you started. So as you can see, the SIU Alumni Association, Student Alumni Council, and our alumni all over the country have been very busy at trying to help current students. Remember, if you wanna give, it's the gift that counts. We're really focusing on the number of gifts, not the monetary value of the gift. So if you wanna help students, please consider giving today. If you want to learn more about any of the SIU Alumni Association programs that we've talked about, please go to the website or more importantly, uh, my favorite, give me a call or stop by and say hello to learn more. So with that, thank you for your time and attention. And as always, go dogs. Hey, look, beer group, we have your trophy. SIU may have been great back in the day in the 80s and 90s, but the dog pound is in full force and wanted to tell the world that the dogs are coming after the old dogs on the SIU Day of Giving. We're encouraging everyone to support the dog pound on March 28th by making a gift of any size. The support of the beer scholarship is wonderful, but I think we should hang on to this for a little bit longer. Go dogs! Go dogs!
Hi, my name is Jody Murray. I'm the Dean for the College of Liberal Arts. I'm Peggy Benedict, and I'm a professor uh, in creative writing, and I'm uh, about to be the director of the uh, uh, Center for uh, Virtual Expression in the College of Liberal Arts. I'm Toby Merriman. I'm with IT, but I'm the relationship manager for College of Liberal Arts. So I'm very excited to be attached to this project. Yeah, so welcome to SIU Giving Day. Uh, the College of Liberal Arts, um, we're made up of a lot of different um, components. We have a school of Africana and multicultural studies and that includes women and gender studies. We have a school of anthropology, political science and sociology. We also have a school of communication studies and we have a school of writing, literature and digital humanities. And we have a school of history and philosophy and all of those areas represent for us uh, what is the key benchmark and stone and um, basically a building block for uh, education in higher education that is the liberal arts. The well, liberal arts are important to everything and the way that you might um, pivot from one career to another to the way in which uh, you expand your own humanity and think about yourself as a whole person and not just a disciplined person within a particular set of knowledge. The uh, day is really important to us in, the, in COLA because we use the Undergraduate Studies Fund to throughout the semester help supplement student need and whether that be they're having problems with textbooks, with being able to make it through the week, with having uh, extra um, funds or for special opportunities that come up. We use the funds really as a case by case basis and it's this particular event that helps us build that particular fund up every year. So I encourage you to donate if you can and, and to donate to the COLA Undergraduate Scholarship Fund. One of the things that we're doing right now that I think is sort of exciting is, is the fact that we're trying to build a new center for the, uh, for the college and for the university. And it's called the Center for Virtual Expression. And as you may know, you've heard it in the news, there's a lot going on with virtual expression. We, we have VR, we have AR, we have artificial intelligence, we have gaming, all of these things. And, and, and they're working in various different places all over campus. But what we're trying to do in COLA is to consolidate them, to bring them into a single center. And we're calling it the Center for Virtual Expression. And Pinckney is essential to the establishment of this center as its leader. Well, and it is, uh, I am more, I've taught here for 17 years. I've been teaching at college for over 30, and I've never been more excited about what I'm doing uh, as a, <clears throat> Pardon me, as a teacher, as a person who's involved in establishing uh, this center, um, we're, you know, we are at a pivotal moment. I think a pivotal moment in history, certainly a pivotal moment in the liberal arts, um, where all these new forms are coming out, uh, new uh, methodologies. Um, everybody, you know, has heard of chat GPT and AI, um, and those sorts of technologies are, are, profoundly important uh, to the liberal arts and they're they're at the center of what we're doing in the uh, uh, in the center for for virtual expression yeah and, and one of the things that I've noticed from your own teaching in your classroom is the way that you engage students in a way that they've not been asked to engage in the past could you talk a little bit more about that well I mean it, it, there's a lot of discussion about well for AI for instance, that, that, you know, what, how do we keep it out of the classroom? How do we keep students from accessing it? How do we keep students from using it to cheat? I mean, from day one, my students are required to use artificial intelligence. Um, and I, I want them to engage with it. I want them to collaborate with it. Um, and that's precisely what AI promises to be and what it already is, is an extremely powerful collaborator. In my particular case, a collaborator um, in the arts. Uh, it allows my students to illustrate their uh, their narrative work. It allows them to explore subject matters that they wouldn't have been able to explore, um, you know, world creation, that sort of thing. We also do, and this is Toby, uh, has, has really advanced what we're able to do there. We do a lot of gaming, um, you, know, you know, tabletop uh, sorts of things and table, virtual tabletop. 
um, that's how my remote classes are are held now. Yeah. Is in a is in a you know a, a virtual tabletop environment, essentially just like playing a AAA video game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not it's not the the old you know nineteenth century twentieth century classroom. This is a real classroom for the twenty first century. Yes. And of course, none of that would be possible without the high-end equipment that we need to put in this center. Right. Well, uh, I was I was almost wanted to interject when you mentioned how AI is taking the world by storm. I'd just like to shout out to Microsoft's AI, which went rogue and refused to answer <laughs> public questions this week. Wow, that was an amazing moment. Um, we have seen four or five years ago, Pinky was one of a small minority of teachers who are willing to incorporate technology, new methods, teach in VR, teach at a distance, teach in hybrid classrooms. Then COVID happens, and then everyone is forced to kind of get their feet wet with this technology. And overnight, I went from having hundreds of professors who just wanted to be in the classroom with the kids like they always were, saying, where do I get a better webcam? How do I improve my audiovisual quality? How can I possibly convey this lesson to 40 people who aren't in the room with me? And Pinky had already answered some of those questions. There's a bunch left to answer, and this center will fill in those blanks. It will rein- reinvent the old ways, and it will invent new tools to take us into the future. I mean, the students are ready. The students are ready for anything. And I have a lot of faculty, way more than you would think. I'm really proud of the COLA faculty for being so open and excited honestly excited about trying new stuff here. And it's it's all over the college in every every area. Yeah, I mean, the faculty are incredibly gifted and are on board with this. One of the things that we really try to encourage in COLA is interdisciplinarity. And I know a lot of people talk about interdisciplinarity. They, they want things to be interdisciplinary. But when you really look at interdisciplinarity, you have to reward it and you have to systemize it within a structure that is the administrative structure for the college. I think this center is going to do that, don't you? That's the idea, yes, is that it will be, it really will be a center. It will be a place where students can gather, students can hang out, students can play, students can work, do research, but also a place where um, faculty can develop pedagogy, where they can develop, um, you know, pedagogy in AI, pedagogy in virtual reality, pedagogy in um, augmented reality. Um, uh, so, yeah, so my hope is that it, 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 if it is not a facility where everybody feels welcome, can have a good time, and can do their work, then we've failed. And I don't intend to fail. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I, 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 yeah, it's really going to be a hub. It's going to be exciting mm-hmm. for COLA and for the whole university. I agree. Starting with COLA, but we, you know, We've already done this several times where we've had Gary, the recording tech from School of Music, helping to do audio splicing for Lourdes Albacek and Spanish instruction, bringing these different departments together. It's very easy to get lost in your own lane and forget that you're surrounded by experts in 50 different fields. And part of what Pinky and I like to do is cross those lines. Sometimes people get mad, sometimes they welcome it, and you connect all these elements together. You know, we just saw Mark Stoffel in the hall. He's a master of recording technology and music recording. We want to connect all these people together. That's the whole point of being a university. Otherwise, we could have, you know, separate sites for all this stuff. So now if we can just get you to get the uh, required haircut, Toby. <laughs> yeah, right. No can do <laughs> <laughs> You guys get to enjoy the convertible model. I like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, all right. Remember, please do uh, give. We don't really... Uh, track as much the amount as, as the, the number of donations is what we're trying to emphasize. And so please do give for the SIU Day of Giving. And um, thank you very much. I look forward to meeting you in person. I do that. track the account of the do? amount. Oh, at give it. a lot. Lots. <laughs> no, bless, bless your heart for giving. That's, they're they're that's... going to rope you into the rest of the day. <laughs> aggressively fundraise. That's right. Uh, A financial contribution to the Center for Teaching Excellence is a direct investment into the central hub of the SIUC campus. Every instructional support activity we provide, every training we lead, and every service call we answer for classroom technology support increases the quality of teaching and learning at SIUC. 
a contribution to the CTE is actually an investment. It's an investment to improve faculty teaching, student learning, and student retention. Here's why. CTE is the unit that provides training and development for our faculty. According to a study by the consulting firm Accenture, there is a 5x return on investment in professional development. This means your $100 com contribution today will have a $500 impact on the SIU community. CTE is the unit that maintains our learning management systems and offers ongoing training to instructors so that they can deliver high quality and engaging content to SIUC students whenever and wherever they need it, from home, from work, or from campus. We make it possible to deliver instruction to students who otherwise would not have access to the world-class Saluki learning experience. CTE is the unit that maintains over 130 classrooms and their ever-evolving technology. We install classroom technology that is accessible and adaptive, so any uniquely enabled student can attend and engage with lectures no matter their cognitive or physical ability. We are investing in top-of-the-line audio-visual equipment so that students can attend lectures in person or remotely. Thanks to the financial support of donors like you, we have one of the best classroom sound systems in a 200 mile radius of campus. CTE is the unit that offers spaces and places to create engaging video content, support with material digitization to enable online learning for blind students and instructor evaluations for continuous feedback and learning. And right now, we're focused on energizing our faculty and moving their campus forward through strategic investments and upgrades in our instructional technology and classroom infrastructure. We're developing new ways of delivering training and amplifying the types of training we offer. This year, we have seen a 200% month over month increase in faculty attending workshops. Currently, we are focused on offering 15 minute micro lessons and workshops, as well as purchasing technology to assist our instructors with positive application of high flex teaching and artificial intelligence. On this day of giving, we are asking you, to donate a modest amount of money to support our faculty, graduate teaching assistants, and students with a contribution to the CTE. $100 would be awesome, but even $5 will make an impact. Invest in the Center for Teaching Excellence so our instructors continue to receive the training and technology they need to launch our students' careers and propel them towards greatness. Happy day of giving, everyone. My name is Dr. Greer. I'm the executive director for the Student Multicultural Resource Center. We pride ourselves as being one of the safest spaces on campus for students. We promote diversity, equity, and inclusion to help individuals become more culturally competent. Within the Student Multicultural Resource Center, there are three coordinators, um, actually four, um, the Women's Resource Center, the LGBTQ Center, the Hispanic Latino Center, and the Black Resource Center. All of our coordinators are amazing and will advocate for any student that needs help. There are a lot of similarities between centers, but all centers are developed to help students find a sense of belonging and a place where they can find a sense of community. Um, our first center coordinator is Ms. Shara McKenzie. Hi, happy giving everyone. Uh, I am the Women's Resource Center Program Coordinator. Uh, one of the things that I mention to students is when they ask me, uh, what is the Women's Resource Center? I tell them it is a place where we can celebrate various expressions of persons who identify as women. When I meet with students one-on-one -on -one for the first time, I ask them, I say, are you surviving? or are you thriving? And if they tell me that they're just surviving, then I tell them you need to come to my office. We need to find out how we can get you to thrive. And sometimes the issues that uh, some of our students experience can be financial issues, life issues, or just finding college life balance. And all those things are important. So I want to talk about a little bit of the programs that we offer. So we do provide leadership training workshops, study skill workshops, self-advocacy workshops, and we have other resources that we provide such as scholarships and referrals, book vouchers, free printing, and clothing and food drives. And so all of these things are important uh, to make a great impact on campus uh, for the women that we serve on campus. So I'm asking you to please give to the Women's Resource Center and help them thrive. 
I'd like to thank uh, Char McKenzie for telling us about the Women's Center. Now I have Dr. Angela Town here, coordinator of the LGBTQ Center. So Angela, can you tell us about the uh, center? Absolutely. So my name is Dr. Angela Town and my pronouns are she, her, hers, or they, them, theirs. And I'm the LGBTQ Resource Center coordinator. The Resource Center offers a safe space to discuss any concerns, access resources, get answers to questions, find help, make connections, and build a healthy and happy, supportive community together. As part of, the, of community building, the LGBTQ Resource Center provides fun and educational programming like movie nights, lavender graduation, a queer mentorship program, and safe zone trainings. So safe zone trainings are an easy way for anyone to learn more about gender, identity, and sexuality. Your donations not only support the cost of these programs and trainings, your donations also provide scholarships for our LGBTQIA mentors engaged in leadership development while assisting incoming students new to SIU. Know that the Resource Center serves everyone in the queer community, including people who might wonder if they are included. The Resource Center welcomes intersex people, pansexual people, asexual and aromantic people. We welcome friends, family, and allies. And we welcome people who don't identify as queer, and this includes anyone who might be questioning or exploring their identity, sexuality, or gender. So please consider donating to the LGBTQ Resource Center Fund. Your donations go a long way in supporting self-worth of our valuable students, as well as building a strong and inclusive community. I'd like to thank Dr. Angela Town for telling us about the LGBTQ Center. And now I have with me uh, Avian Wilkins, who's a grad assistant for the Black Resource Center. So Avian, can you tell us about the Black Resource Center today? Yes, Dr. Greer, my name is Avian Wilkins. I'm the graduate assistant for the Black Resource Center. And the Black Resource Center is one of the centers within the Student Multicultural Resource Center. It cultivates community and sense of belonging, promotes intellectual curiosity, and fosters leadership development. The Black Resource Center provides a supportive environment for our Black experiences here at SIU. The goal of the center is to support students by connecting them to campus resources and providing academic support and the opportunity to engage with faculty and staff and alumni. And you might ask, how can I help? We have two special programs that would help greatly support our Black students here at SIU. The Emergency Fund and the Ridership Fund. The Emergency Fund helps students eliminate barriers, matriculation, and graduation. Expenses paid through this fund include small bursar bills that may prevent re-enrollment, transcripts, use of technology, and textbook scholarships. The Ridership Fund helps Black students get home before and after holiday breaks during family emergencies and other unforeseen circumstances. This fund supports all black students, undergraduate, graduate, and or professional school students enrolled here at SIU. Our students travel by railway or bus and come as far as areas from Memphis, Chicago, St. Louis, and you can purchase Amtrak tickets such as low ads, $67, and help our students here at SIUC. Thank you. I wanna thank Avian Wilkins for telling us about the Black Resource Center. Now I'm here with Christina Castillo, the coordinator of the Hispanic Latinx Center. And so Christina, you wanna tell us about your, your center? Uh, thank you, Dr. Greer, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Christina Castillo, and I am the proud coordinator of the Hispanic Latino Resource Center and the director of Undocumented Student Support. When I am in these two roles, is uh, they are separate, but they overlap. Uh, the undocumented issues are not unique to Hispanics. So we have Asian Pacific Islanders. We have uh, black undocumented people as well as white people. So this is an issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And if you know, uh, or you may not know that undocumented populations do not uh, are eligible for federal financial aid. So the main barrier for, our, for these populations uh, is financial. Mm -hmm. 
and not to mention that these populations contribute to the economy and, and pay federal local taxes uh, and state taxes as well. And let me just give you a small statistic with uh, in Illinois, the spending power of DACA eligible residents is $1.56 billion yearly. And this is uh, information to the higher education immigration portal. And then DACA eligible residents paid federal tax contributions of $187 million and eligible residents state and local taxes. DACA eligible population is $182 million. So this, uh, uh, contrary to popular misinformation, these uh, populations do pay taxes. And when I am in the role of Hispanic Latino Research Center coordinator, uh, well, that's that's uh, hits home, right? I am a Latina, and this population as well is mostly low-income first-generation college students, and the barrier for them is also financial. For me, uh, we always talk about the Hispanic population being the fastest-growing minority, but we're still lagging educational attainment. So for me today, in this day of giving, it is extremely important to not just ask you uh, to contribute to the uh, Hispanic Emergency Fund or for the DACA uh, um, fund, emergency fund, but also to have a change of heart because uh, to have the, the understanding and to really um, look into know more about these populations and uh, invest. Many of you or many people do not want to invest on people that do not, uh, they don't believe they're worthy, but believe me, they are extremely worthy, especially educating, uh, educating our fastest growing minority and being equitable with the resources when our populations like undocumented college students do contribute. So um, I, I'm asking you to change your heart but also I am asking you for contribution to these populations. And uh, while I am there as the coordinator and the director, I can assure you that these populations are not alone. They're in power, they're believed, and they, my most important um, contribution is to help them with their educational attainment. And so I need your help, and I, our students need your help, and SIU Foundation needs the help to contribute to the expenses of these students. Thank you so much, and I hope to for your donations. All right, so thank you, Christina, for telling us about the Hispanic Latinx uh, Resource Center, and thank you all for tuning in for us uh, with us today for SIU Giving Day. Hi, I'm Dr. Angela Town, the LGBTQ Resource Center Coordinator. Hello, and my name is Dane Jones, and we're queer. You may recognize Daniel because he's in just about every video and web page here at SIU. That's true. Mm -hmm. However, it's time to get serious. Yes, it is. And talk to you guys why it is so important to donate to the LGBTQ Resource Center. The LGBTQ Resource Center it does outreach to our LGBTQIA plus students, faculty, and staff with education and programming that increases inclusion and um, advocacy for our community. We provide students with opportunities to receive mentorship under senior LGBTQ plus students, attend educational and social cultural events with LGBTQ and ally students, as well as to gain access to resources to make life on campus as fun, safe, and fulfilling for them as possible. Our resource center coordinates with several departments, student organizations, and community organizations to host events on and off campus to build our connections with the student body and the community at large. Some of the events we organize include lavender graduation, queer cinema, and safe zone training classes, among other events throughout the year. Our LGBTQ History Month in October is when our efforts shine the brightest. During History Month, we host several events across the campus to educate our students and community members on the contributions of LGBTQ people across the globe. Your donations will be used to support these many initiatives, such as scholarships for the Queer Mentor programs to support other queer mentors just like me. Like you. <laughs> we hope that you participate in our community and consider donating to the LGBTQ Resource Center. Tonight starts the beginning of the Saluki Takeover Tour 
Florida. Here at the Villages, we get to talk to our alums, our donors, our friends of the university in this beautiful setting where we reunite Salukis and talk about all the wonderful things that's happening at the universities. When it comes to giving back to SIU, it's always important to give back to the alma mater that you, that you were founded in. I give back to SIU just because I know that it's going to help future uh, Salukis such as myself. Uh, it's going to help the campus grow and build. We certainly believe in change at SIU. We're not ones to be living in the past. We believe in change, but it's the way you change things. The smart thing is to get into the business and change from within. So it is very important to me to stay connected with the SIU family because it gives me the opportunity to network and, you know, talk to some older SIU alumni and some that were also in my class. And it also gives me the opportunity to branch out and network even more within my field and maybe even possibly uh, some other fields that I'm looking into for my future endeavors. I'm a proud Saluki grad and we've been strong supporters of the university. I would encourage others to do so because it pays huge dividends, dividends. to be involved Every and be part of it. Every dollar we can spend in SIU yields huge, huge dividends and it's a fraction in the bucket for what that means to a person's future. Go dogs! <laughs> Loki spirit isn't born. It's nurtured by those who came before. It must be shown, a flag waved proudly by those who know. Our future rests with our students and support from their biggest fans. On the SIU Day of Giving, we let our imagination run wild, always moving forward together as past, present, and future collide. Join us. Thanks so much for another great day of giving. We can't do it without you, our champions. You're our champions because we partner together for all that we do to improve the health of our communities and the people who live there. Every gift matters. So we will continue to educate, innovate, and collaborate for better health for all. Forward with you. Thanks so much. For those that are here coming back home, welcome back home. Homecoming week to unveil something like this is absolutely incredible. We're celebrating all 166 past and present alumni judges of SIU Law. Thank you so much. I'm just so happy to be here and see so many people that I know. When I look around the room, I have tried cases against, with, and in front of many of the people in this room. It means a lot to be reconnected with your alma mater. It means a lot for us to be together as judges. But more than that, I think all of us kind of hope that if we were students and saw something like this, where there's more than 100 judges out of this law school, that it would be kind of inspirational for those students and give them some motivation and hope that they could become a judge if that's the path they want. Hi, I'm Kate Hansen, and I'm the Director of Development with the SIU School of Law, and I'm here with Dean Camille Davidson. Um, I love that video. I think that is such a cool video and such a cool wall of judges, a wall of honor. Can you tell us a little bit about I the event? And it was such an awesome video. And if you step into the Lazar Law Building, take a look at the awesome wall of judges. And it just speaks the 50 years of the history of SIU School of Law. 
SAU law was founded in the public interest to serve the public good. And when I joined the law school as dean, I heard so many people tell me that we had so many judges who were alumni of the school. And I thought, what better way to kick off the 50th anniversary than to celebrate those judges who are true public servants and are indeed serving our region, our state and beyond. We have over 170 judges and counting. And just to see everybody in the building, our system president, our chancellor, the board chair, judges from every class, inaugural members of the of the School of Law, and it was just a wonderful feel-good evening, especially we've all been cooped up since COVID and just the opportunity to get out and fellowship and just celebrate 50 years of SIU School of Law and celebrate public servants who are serving in the judiciary or retired from the judiciary who are alumni at the school. No, that's awesome. Um, I know that there are a lot of events this year surrounding the 50th anniversary. Can you talk a little bit about those? Absolutely, Kate. Thank you so much. So the first class of SIU law started in the fall of 1973. And so the law school symposium this year will celebrate 50 years of SIU. The journal will highlight various articles that talk about different perspectives. Several people who have served in the dean's seat have written articles, as have um, other folks in the community. So we're excited about that. That is April 14th at the School of Law, 50 years of SIU, the Law Journal Symposium. So looking forward to hearing about all of that and to honor the founding dean who was Hiram Lazar. Right now that is who the building is named after, the Lazar Law Building. He had come to SIU Law from Wash U in St. Louis. And just to hear the narratives as we prepare mm -hmm. along the way, uh, <clears throat> just excited about that. So in addition to the Law Journal Symposium, also in April, we have the Simons Lecture coming up, the Jean and Katie Simons Lecture will be April 5th. So we're excited about that. We have a judge who will be in the building, meeting with students, talking in their classrooms throughout the day, and there will be a community reception and lecture on that Wednesday evening. So we're very excited about that as well. And then we'll head up to Springfield. We're very yeah. busy, right? <laughs> we'll head up to Springfield. We'll head up to Springfield a bit. And in Springfield, we have a, a couple who actually met in the inaugural class at SIU School of Law, and they are hosting a wonderful reception for us mm -hmm. there. And so we're looking forward to meeting with all of our folks in Springfield and all of all of the players who um, are not just members of the SIU community, but are um, community friends of ours as well and support the law school. So looking forward to that on April 28th. Yep. So that, that gets us through April, I think, <laughs> with, with some of the exciting events that we have coming up. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think one of the biggest things that we want to try to do is take what the law school has done in the past and just elevate it for the 50th celebration. So I think that the school has a lot of exciting things planned. So make sure that you are uh, keeping track online on our website, on our social media. Our team does a really great job of making sure that everyone is invited and knows about what's going on. So you can follow us there to uh, see what you have interest in and, and attend. Um, and if you want to give to the law school today, you can go to SIU. Uh, day.siu.edu and we have a list of all of our different funds that are offered to um, contribute to and make sure that you can find something that interests you within the law school. Um, and with that, I know that it's our 50th year. We have a few priorities that um, the law school is making uh, a top, top priority, right, for giving. So could you talk about some of those? Absolutely. So we are a school of law and our sole purpose is to train the next generation of attorneys. And we all know, I will say, we all know that from birth to death and everywhere in between, we need lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. From from healthcare lawyers to 
employment lawyers to education and environmental lawyers, all the way to trust and estates attorneys and everything in between. So we know at every stage of our lives, we do need attorneys. And so we want to make sure that when our students come to school, um, they have what they need to succeed. So the first priority is emergency funds for our students, for scholarships, and for our students when they are studying for the bar exam. Mm -hmm. We do not want our students to work while they are studying for the bar exam. We want to make sure that they are successful the first time out of the out of the gate, that they are successful when they sit for the bar exam. And so we do want to be able to, pro to provide funding, whether it's for um, a utility bill or whether it's for a meal or transportation or a hotel room when they have to get to Chicago to sit for the bar exam. Also, scholarships. Most of our students come to school here with financial need. And so we do want to be, but most of our scholarships um, when a student is being admitted are for academic purposes, for LSAT and GPA. And so we do want to be able to provide some opportunities for students when there is a financial need that we're able to stand in that gap. And so we do want to um, have the ability to offer some scholarships as well. So priority number one, student emergencies for bar passage and um, student scholarships. The second priority um, is diversity, equity, and inclusion. We know that that is a priority of our system and of our campus. And as a law school, we want to ensure that we are attracting and retaining students from all different backgrounds, regardless of age, race, national origin, gender identity, gender expression, religion, disability. And so we want to make sure that we are able to train our students in the ways that they need to be trained because lawyers are the keepers of democracy and democracy is not given. It is something that we all have to work to each day. And we also know that we all have to work to have an inclusive and nurturing environment. And that sometimes means bringing in experts and holding particular days. Mm -hmm. In a week or so, we're going to have a professionalism day. The law students and the medical students will join together and go through an, an interdisciplinary discussion of several issues. And with those issues, they will see that they're not just medical or legal, but they also have to deal with each issue, such as socioeconomic and race and gender and all of those other um, categories. And so we want to make sure that, again, we have the funds such that we can bring in experts. We'd love to endow a faculty chair and have an expert on campus. Um, to, to teach our students because we're all lifelong learners. So initiative number two would be anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion, because we want to be able to live up to the ideal that we say. And then the third priority would be facilities and technology. We are a 21st century law school. Our faculty are amazing. They are so smart. They are teachers and scholars. Our students are engaged. And we want to be able to provide an environment where um, our students can enhance their educational experience with modern technology. We have a new satellite um, in Belleville, Illinois. We'd like to be able to offer classes in both locations where our students in Carbondale and our students at the semester away in Belleville can communicate with one another. And so that means that we need the technology and the infrastructure to do that. There are wonderful naming opportunities in our school from the library to the auditorium to the courtroom that needs to be updated a bit. The auditorium needs to be updated a bit. Just beautiful, beautiful bones. The structure is great, but we could use a little bit of a facelift. And we all know that impressions matter. And we want people when they walk into our building to know that they can receive a world-class education. And we want to have that world-class facility that looks like the world-class education that we're delivering for them. So priority number three is technology and facilities. Yeah. There's so many amazing things going on in the law school. It gets me really excited. I'm super fired up. Because I'm, I'm so think, glad you're are here. Are we fired up? I know. This is going to be we're awesome. We're fired up. We're, we're excited. Live. We're yeah. live today. We're, we're, live. Like, we're not recording. We're going live. We're, we're going, going live. live. There's so much, so That's much right. to give to. That's right. We've got a food truck over at the law oh, yeah. school right now. We have a food truck um, outside. It's sunny. 
cold it's blooded amazing. tacos. Cold That's blooded right. tacos. We have all of the things. Go to siuday.siu.edu to give. I'm super fired up. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. <laughs> I already gave my pledge. I challenge Same. you to meet me, meet Kate. 50 years, add whatever zero to the 50 that you want to, whether it's five <laughs> or 5,000. I stopped at 500, so meet me at 500 or give five or even 50 cents. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We just love to see everybody engaged with the School of Law, and we hope that you love the School of Law as much as we love it. And we're just so happy to be here yeah. live. Right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Oh man, I think there's still some time. Oh, oh we got time. Taco. Come and get a taco. It's cold blooded <laughs> tacos. Oh, I was going to say, now I'm going to go over because Kate was going to say, had I ever been lost in the library? And I was going to say, yes, when I was lost in the library. Um, um, and if you come and you get lost in our library, you will discover we have a playroom for non-traditional students yeah. where parents, when they are studying, can let the children play. Um, there's lots of games and stuff in there for the kids. And there's also a meditation room. So yeah. if you want to need a quiet spot for religious or other purposes, there's also a meditation room. So we have a, a living and breathing library at the School of Law. Come on over. Come on over. Hey, Salukis, the Salukis are here in Nashville taking over the town. It's time to come out and join us. Saluki Nation, we're right here in Nashville, Tennessee. About a year ago, we set out to take over Nashville, and we're now here. We make good on our promise. This has been a great way to kind of spread Saluki Nation throughout the United States. But here, coming to Nashville, where we live, is important for us to stay connected with the university and uh, ensure that we're supporting the team and the Saluki family the way we need to. The support for women's athletics has been tremendous, and this group is leading the charge. So the foundation, please keep doing what you're doing. And Dog Pound out there, we need you to keep donating and keep investing in our young ladies. Your investment has meant everything, and it just brings a tremendous pride for us to support this maroon and white as we continue the takeover. Hi, I am Kim Babington from... SIU Credit Union, and we are here today to donate a $45,000 check to launch the seventh annual Day of Giving. We understand that SIU is the, the economic engine in Southern Illinois, and we feel that this is a win-win-win for everybody involved here. We are here today because of the generosity of SIU Credit Union, and all of the funds that we receive go back to the students to really enrich their experience while they're here on campus. You know, our students uh, need assistance. Uh, our students need to be able to close the financial gaps, and this is one way for them to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm a, a 91 accounting graduate, College of Business, uh, so I've been here my whole life. Uh, so being able to give back to the university that helped me get to where I am is uh, a great feeling. The money that SIU Credit Union today is giving us is really going to go to helping us grow, expand, and really just help us program for our Dog Days orientation program. So Dog Days is, in essence, kind of like a four-day, three-night summer camp for incoming freshmen. We're going to be using this donation from the SIU Credit Union to establish a digital scholars commons on the first floor of the library. We want this partnership with SIU. Um, it helps not only the credit union grow, but it helps SIU grow, and that helps us here in our economy in Carbondale. And so I encourage all friends, family, Saluki alumni, anybody that's part of Saluki Nation to take a moment and just, whether it's $5, $10, or more like give back to this incredible place because we really are doing some awesome things. The SIU School of Medicine has been a tremendous impact in my own life and as my training as a physician here. We've seen students come through here and have had life-changing experiences of their own. The legacy in which they are coming into is one that has made a tremendous impact in the community already. And those that continue to contribute to the next generation of physicians will have to see their growth in years and years to come. It will be something well worthwhile and something that I hope to see and be a part of myself one day.
We are back in the studio and just, God, what great segments. Just uh, Chancellor Lane mentioned it just, uh, just to see throughout this morning into the afternoon, just uh, such great things going on in our, at our SIU with our colleges, our schools, the programs, the offerings we have. Uh, you know, I'm reminded a shout out to our friends at the SIU Credit Union uh, who gave us the initial gift of 45000 to launch uh, our seventh annual uh, day of giving. Uh, folks, uh, we are now closing in on 1,500 gifts, and we are closing in on $835,000. Uh, things are continuing to grow, and, and uh, the outpouring of support is just so inspiring, and we're so grateful. I know I think uh, I speak for all my colleagues here at the university. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to make a gift if any had if you hadn't is siuday.siu.edu, siuday.siu.edu. Uh, you can give to any place, anything on campus you want to. It's the beauty of this day of giving. Uh, all gifts matter. Uh, and we're certainly, uh, we're moving the meter dramatically both on gifts and on dollars. Uh, we've got just a little more programming in front of us. Uh, we are going to hear in, in, a, in a minute from our friends, our colleagues over at the College of Arts and Media. Uh, we have Wendell Williams, our, our, the czar of enrollment management, will join us. Uh, um, and, and then we will... Uh, have a, a one final uh, a segment from the touch of nature and then we will break and we will come back the live stream will shut down for about 15 minutes and we'll come back and we will be live in the morris library for a big celebration uh, to include the band the cheerleaders a lot of spirit a lot of excitement and a lot of enthusiasm this truly is one of the great days during the year for our university uh, you make it that way uh, you've heard our leaders, our students, uh, your gifts have an incredible impact. The chancellor talked about the day, the day of excellence. You know, we add the day, the day of impact. Uh, both, both happen today on this day of giving. So let's now, we're going to go to our colleagues over at the College of Arts and Media. Hello, welcome to the College of Arts and Media Day of Giving. I'm Lisa Knight, and I'm the Director of Development for the College. With me today is our new Dean. Dr. Hong Cheng came to us on July 1 of last year. Dean, why don't you take this time to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to have this opportunity to greet you here today. I hope you have been both happy and healthy. I'm thrilled and honored to be a member of the Saluki family and to serve as the Dean of its College of Arts and Media, which we fondly call CAM. My background is mainly in communication and media. I have an international journalism degree and a PhD in mass communications. Before SIU, I was the Dean of the School of Communications at the Loyola University, Chicago. Before that, I was the director of the Richard T. Robson School of Media and Culture at the Virginia Commonwealth University. Thank you, Dean Chang. We're so happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. We're also looking forward to seeing your vision for the college put into place. Mm -hmm. As we move forward, speaking of your plan for the college, why don't you take some time to tell us about your vision and the current needs of the mm -hmm. college? Sure, Lisa. Cam boasts a stellar faculty, dedicated staff, talented students, and loyal alumni. We are aspire to make Cam a mission-driven, distinctive, and uh, recognized national and international hub in arts and media education, research, and creative work. We aim at fostering technically proficient, culturally competent, and socially responsible arts and media professionals scholars, and leaders. We want our graduates to thrive in the 21st century global market and in the age of artificial intelligence. At this time, I'd like you to hear from our six directors about their needs for their individual schools.
Hello everybody, I'm Rob Lopez, Interim Director of the School of Art and Design, and I'm here today asking you for your support. Uh, Day of Giving has been a great event for the School of Art and Design as we've used recent donations to help support renovations at the Pulliam Industrial Wing for our glass program, our ceramics program, and our metalsmithing and blacksmithing program. With this year's donations, we're gonna move the money around to the other parts of the school so we can renovate and improve other facilities and other programs that need your help. Any support that you give us has a direct impact. Any support helps our students, our faculty, and our staff continue to provide the great education that we provide everywhere. So I thank you for your continued support. I hope you donate this year for Day of Giving. Uh, go Salukis. Hi. My name is H.G. Motel. I am the director of the School of Theater and Dance, and I'm here in the McLeod Theater. Behind me, you can see the set for our current production of The Mousetrap. Now, The Mousetrap is a straight play, so we don't have any problem with students projecting into the audience. What we do have a problem with is when we have singers up there and they need to be miked. We have an antiquated microphone system, and that's what I'm asking you for this day of giving please contribute to our production fund so that we can get overhaul of our complete microphone system. I look forward to seeing you in the lobby of the McLeod Theater before all of our productions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rolando Gonzalez and I'm the interim director of the School of Architecture. Your donations are very important for us because they support the maintenance and upgrading of our fashion workshops, our design studios, our print lab and our digital fabrication lab, and recently our virtual reality lab as well. But more important of those are our scholarships for students because they mean their preparation for our life. Thanks for still being here with us. Hello, I'm Jan Thompson, and I'm the director of the School of Journalism and Advertising. And I bet if you're watching right now that you are a Saluki, and hopefully you graduated from our program. Hopefully you graduated with wonderful memories and an education that launched you on your professional career. Well, that's what we're still doing here. We're immersing our students in our professional labs, the Daily Egyptian, Ad Lab, River Region Evening News Edition, and Alt News. They spend a lot of time in these labs, so much time they don't have any time for outside employment. And that's where you come in. The most important thing that you can do is contribute to our scholarship fund. That money will help ease the stress off the students and take the financial burden off of them as well so that they can concentrate on their professional craft and become a successful Saluki. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dick Kelly. I'm the interim director of the School of Music here in the College of Arts and Media. We're standing in the School of Music Recital Hall where after last year's day of giving, we were able to do quite a few major upgrades. This year, we would like to focus on our students' uh, needs and support for them so we have two funds we would like you to consider. One is the Kesnar Music Scholarship, which provides direct support to our students. And the other is the School of Music Activities account, where we can use lots of things to support scholarship, creativity, and other needs of our students. As always, thanks for your support. Hello, my name is Robert Spar, and I'm the Interim Director of the School of Media Arts. Last year, through your generous donations, we were able to purchase furniture for our North Light Studio. This year, I stand in the cinema soundstage. In this room, we need your help in purchasing a new projector and furniture for our students. Students in the School of Media Arts create and study film in the cinema soundstage. And with your help, we'll be able to upgrade this space. Thank you. Dean Chang, that's wonderful information from our school directors. Can you now talk about a little bit about um, our current st student population? We have talented and hardworking students in Camp Lisa. The newly organized college has provided us with numerous opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration. Your generous contributions to scholarships and the various activities funds are so important and helpful for our students' success. Dean Cheng, I believe at this time we have some student testimonials. My name is Nayambi. I am a junior at SIUC, and I am majoring in art therapy, minor in psychology and art education. I'm always in the studio setting up, and I'm so excited to just like share my journey with others. So by me setting up, it's just giving students a day in the life of an art student. My scholarship, it's 
helping me get on track with my journey with testing and being comfortable with classrooms and also asking questions to further more of what I need to do during the summer and the fall semesters. Hello, I'm Ann Woods and I'm a senior in the music education program. I love the choir program, love uh, performing with other SIU students. Anytime I sing, it's it's usually a relief, but it also does give me a lot of energy and a lot of passion and joy to sing with others. The scholarships I received were highly beneficial. It really took a lot of weight off my shoulders as far as finishing off college with fewer loans. And also it gave me a good confidence boost. It kind of gave me more hope for the future with any type of donation, any money that I received within the scholarship. Um, because my family moved around a lot, um, we didn't really have like a set financial place we can, you know, make a name for ourselves. So I'm able to do that here. I don't know that I would be able to afford the place that I'm living in now without the scholarship. Just without it, I would be making a little bit above minimum wage. So I would probably maybe need a second job or just need to put a lot more hours in somewhere and I received enough um, scholarship to cover my whole tuition for the fall and partly the spring. Um, that's really helped out a lot and means a lot to be able to learn and then show that um, they believe in you and they value you and they want you in the school. <laughs> I am a Helmut Mary Leadloff Scholar and having, having that scholarship along with some other scholarships I've received from the School of Music, it it gives me less things to worry about financially and allows me to really focus on my education here, focus on participating in ensembles, practicing homework, et cetera, et cetera. I am a junior here at SIU. My major is theater, specializing in performance. And I am in, currently I am in a play called Murphy's Law Pretenders by Pearl Moore. Sometimes I think of the ways I can hurt our friends. What? We well, don't do a lot of modern or contemporary plays due to lack of funds, and it would be really nice to just do a more contemporary and modern piece instead of doing period pieces all the time. The resources at our school are kind of critical to what we do for model making and printing posters and using the wood shop and the digital fabrication lab. That helps students excel and it gives them confidence. Especially like all of our extra equipment that we need to get. Like we all need like different computers and stuff and all the laser cutting costs extra. So any donations that could like lower the cost for it would always help. Thank you for donating to our school, SIUC. <laughs> to achieve our goals, we do need your support and help on this day of giving. Today is the perfect opportunity for you to demonstrate your care, your loyalty, and the generosity to the college and its affiliated schools. Among various needs we have, I invite you to help us address one or more of our college-wide needs that I will highlight here. First, a camp recruitment fund this fund will enable our college to carry out various student recruitment activities. At the same time, I'm launching a Saluki CAM series fund today. CAM is a performances, events, and activities rich college. We believe a Saluki CAM series throughout the year will help enhance our new college's visibility, student retention recruitment, and interdisciplinary collaboration. I'm also launching a CAM faculty and staff development fund today to help with our faculty's research and creative work, especially their travels to conferences. And Dean Chang, besides the three new funds you just mentioned, uh, we always have the need for our contributions to our emergency CAM emergency fund. Um, we constantly see academically strong students encountering unexpected financial challenges. Absolutely, Lisa. On behalf of CAM students, faculty and the staff, we thank you all for your support. Please help CAM with your donations today. Any amount of contributions are appreciated. And please remember, 
no amount of giving are ever too small. Again, our heartfelt thanks for all your support and the generosity. Go Salukis! And go, go Cam! Cam. What, a, what another great segment from uh, our colleagues over at the College of Arts and Media. De Hung, Dean Hung doing a great job. Has come on board just uh, just sprinting, working with Lisa Knight there, and just our faculty and staff, just a really cool college. And we think truly one of the great ones in the Midwest. So we're back here at the desk. Uh, we've got uh, some programming left uh, in front of us, but uh, as an update, we are at 1,430 gifts. We are now at $1.2 million raised. And it's uh, thank you, everybody out there. We've got a special guest with us. Jim Raffensberger is a member of one of the creators of the beer group. <laughs> and, and truly, we had a live stream the other day. We had a lot of fun with the challenge against the dog pound. Jim, thanks for being here in person. My pleasure. And fun. talk to us, brother. Talk to us about <laughs> beer, day of giving, and what you guys are doing. Wow. So, yeah, the day of giving is uh, kind of a really cool event for us. So, you know, the, the history of this Facebook page, you know, Craig Wilson started it in 2018. It grew. It kind of really ignited that Saluki spirit that we had, you know, the, the place that we loved, the place that we grew up. Fantastic place. And then when Dan Giedemann said, hey, Let's start a scholarship. Just a thought. Let's, you know, let's give back to SIU. And it just grew from there. And, you know, my role in this, I made a joke on Facebook page. That's all I did. I made a joke. Let's call it balancing education experience and reality. And, you know, an acronym always goes a long way. <laughs> and what student doesn't like beer, right? And people loved it. And people really yeah. connected with yeah. that that uh, that name. It was a great, you know, great experience. And then when that first day of giving came about, you know, little dribs and drabs, people donated, let's buy a beer for a student, let's, you know, you know, four or five dollars, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. We ended the day with fifty thousand wow. dollar wow. scholarships. Two people got scholarships that year. That was just phenomenal. Wow. Wow. Such an exciting time for us. And, you know, ever since then, you know, the, the, still the stories come up, the experience, those, those memories of SIU in Southern Illinois, and that's what it's really all about. And now we've gotten the next generation and we're giving back yeah, to that next yeah. generation. So, you know, it's just a super exciting thing for us to be able to do. Jim, and it, it is truly awesome. Your connections run deep here at SIU. My connections run deep here at SIU. Um, I spent 11 years here at, in Carbondale, got two degrees here. Uh, my wife is a SIU alumni. Uh, my sister and brother-in-laws are both SIU alumni. My father-in-law was a professor here for uh, I don't know how many years. Uh, my mother-in-law, Liz Schill, was uh, a member of the BPW group mm -hmm. here. Um, active with the women's groups and you know so this you know this place is really a special place for me it's just a really great time just uh just incredible and you've had a challenge thrown out to you by the dog pound <laughs> now i'm gonna get here oops i'm on i got the mic here but jim this is this has been your trophy some call it the beer trophy you know, are you gonna, <laughs> this is for most individual gifts are you going to win it again this year? Oh, well, I think the leaderboard speaks for itself right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dylan, yeah, you know, we, we uh, talked some smack when, when we were on here last week. Um, a lot of our people are giving to the dog pound. A lot of our people are giving to some of the other uh, parts of the organization. And let me just say, it's the beer trophy for a reason. It's ours. We're keeping it. But, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're love SIU. Jim, thanks to you and for all your colleagues in the beer group, truly making a difference here. You're changing lives of many. We appreciate it. You're right, engaged with you. the university. Great to have you here in person and uh, just incredible. Again, day of giving, siuday.siu.edu. Uh, please, if you haven't give, please reach out and, and support uh, our, our great university. All gifts matters. Uh, we're going to go now to our great college of engineering, technology, computing, and mathematics. Thank you for joining us for the SAU Day of Giving segment. 
for the College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics. I'm Frank Liu, the Dean of the College. The college has six schools, School of Electrical, Computer, and Biomedical Engineering, School of Civil, Environmental, and Infrastructure Engineering, School of Mechanical, Aerospace, and Materials Engineering, School of Computing, School of Applied Engineering and Technology, and School of Mathematics and Statistical Sciences. This allows us to educate and train students in an integrated education environment in engineering, computing, technology, and mathematics. Students have opportunities for working on interdisciplinary projects. For example, a student robotics club has students from electrical engineering, computer engineering, and computer science. They work together on designing advanced robots. A student racing car design club has students from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science. And they work together on designing racing cars for racing competition. In addition to on-campus programs, we have excellent distance learning programs. Now let's talk about enrollment. Our focus was our enrollment turnaround. Enrollment turnaround has been our top priority since I joined SIU in July 2020. The number of undergraduate freshmen increased by 79% in fall 2021 and 56% in fall 2022, respectively, compared with that of 2020. This represents a remarkable undergraduate enrollment turnaround. The trend is very positive this year. The number of undergraduate admissions for fall 2023 grows 17% annually so far. Now I want to switch to quality of programs. All engineering programs, computer science, and the mathematical programs have been ranked among top 200 national universities by US News and World Report. National universities are top tier universities according to US News and World Report. All of our engineering computer science programs and one technology program have been accredited by ABET, the same accreditation organization and criteria used by top engineering computer science programs around the world. Let's talk about learning environment at our college. Our undergraduate student faculty ratio is 12 to 1, which is among the lowest in public research universities in the US. Students have great access to their professors, either in their classes and out of classes in this environment. They should be able to get a lot of personal attention from instructors in classes and laboratory sessions. Now, let me talk about student activities at a college. There are many students design clubs and teams at a college, such as robotics, racing car, steel bridge, and cybersecurity. Many of them are very successful, and some of them won regional and national competitions. I'm giving you a couple of examples. A student robotic team participated in NASA annual robotics mining competition and received first place in 2021. Students in this team designed a mining robot for the moon. A solo power design team at a college finished second in its division in the U.S. Department of Energy's Solo District Cup of Collegial Design Competition in 2022. Information technology students success in the collegial cyber defense competition just advanced to the next level. The security dogs plays third out of 18 teams from Illinois, Missouri, and Wisconsin at the competition in February this year. The SIU security dogs then won the first place title at the wide card uh, collegial cyber defense competition in this region. 
Out of 18 teams across the Middle West, the security dogs rose to the top, beating opponents such as Purdue University and Illinois Institute of Technology. Our goal of SIU Day of Giving 2023 is to focus on doubling our number of donations from last year. Please support College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics. Thank you for joining us for this segment of the SIU Day of Giving for the College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics. To donate, please go to siuday.siu.edu and select the College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics and then choose one of the six highlighted accounts, scholarships, funds that we've selected for this year's Day of Giving. Hi, I am Meredith Jones from Mount Carmel. I'm a senior dual majoring in mechanical engineering and industrial management and applied engineering. I chose SIU because of the beautiful campus and the wonderful hands-on opportunities I can gain from this experience. Saluki Formula Racing teaches students how to design and manufacture a car from the ground up. We are thankful for our sponsors and donations that allow us to improve and build this car. Our team is able to compete annually at the Formula SAE competition at Michigan International Speedway. We are also able to host events locally to show off the work we've done. Being a female in engineering helps keep me determined to pursue and obtain my degrees. It helps pave the way for someday reaching my goal of owning and creating my own engineering firm. It is an honor to be the Will Bichelle Scholarship recipient. It has allowed me to gain more knowledge and leadership and networking tools for my future. It has also allowed me to assume leadership positions not only around the school, but in my local region in Southern Illinois as well. Thanks to Bill and Paula Bouchelle this year for supporting the SIU Day of Giving. The Bouchelles are matching dollar for dollar any donations to the Will Bouchelle Scholarship Endowment Fund up to $100,000. Here is a great opportunity to double your impact on this year's SIU Day of Giving. Please donate now to the SIU College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics, select the Will Bouchelle Scholarship, and double your donation in supporting the legacy of Will Bouchelle. Hello, I'm Isaiah Overton, a senior at SIU. My major is Electrical and Computer Engineering, and I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. I like to say SIU chose me. Uh, they gave me a lot of financial support and they're one of the most eager colleges to take me in. What I stayed at SIU is very different. I stayed at SIU because of the people. People poured into me as soon as I hit the campus. They gave me resources that I'd never seen before. Since arriving at SIU, I've had many experiences from leadership to serving on the State Board of Education. Um, I participated in many committees, many advisory councils, and I've been able to meet student leaders from across the state and across the nation. SIU gave me opportunities and it really gave me professional development, professional growth, and also some of that personal development that will really set me up for my future career. What I like most about SIU is the opportunities that you get on campus. I don't come from the best high school uh, in the best academic background, but I came here, I did very well my first two semesters and they immediately partnered me with a professor in the biomedical engineering department. Uh, that opened up to more opportunities and to me getting internships across uh, LA and in New York. Um, it also led to me getting my career and my future job, which is in Maryland. I am a, a two-time USC president on campus and my favorite part of the role is really being able to connect with the students. Um, it's being able to get to know students on a more personal level, being, being able to get to know our organizations and their needs and their wants, some of their future aspirations too. Uh, the USG, we provide funding to a lot of different RSOs across campus from competition RSOs to some of the cultural RSOs. So being able to work with that very, very diverse group and being able to serve all their needs is what I truly enjoy most about this position. It's easy to participate this year in the SIU Day of Giving. Walk anywhere throughout the SIU College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics, and you will see on every faculty and staff's doors are the SIU Day of Giving door hangers. We even have them on labs. If you see one, don't hesitate. Grab it, turn it around, 
and consider a donation to the College of Engineering, Computing, Technology, and Mathematics. Thank you for all of the donations. Thank you. 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 Thank you for your donation. We are back in the studio. Great segment from our colleagues in the College of Engineering, Technology, Computer Science, and Mathematics. Uh, Day of giving, siuday.siu.edu. Edu. If you have made a gift, we ask you consider it. Support your alma mater. We've talked a lot today about scholarships and enrollment. With us right now, we've got the uh, the czar, the associate vice chancellor for enrollment manager Wendell Williams. Wendell, thanks for joining us. Matt, how you doing today? Um, talk to us, brother. The czar, huh? <laughs> the czar. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be able to follow that beer lead that you had a few minutes ago, but I am so excited to be here on this day of giving because it's this day of giving that makes a difference for so many of the students that we're recruiting. You know, many of the students, they have such great need. We've got a great, great fall semester looking. We're up about 9,000 students who have applied, submitted all their documents, and have been admitted, and we're looking for great new student enrollment for the fall semester. But what we're finding out is that many of those students come with some immense needs, uh, and this day of giving helps to take care of a lot of those students' needs. Uh, this theme that we have imagined is not by accident. You know, many of our students, they imagine themselves to be the first foot on Mars or the cure for cancer or solving some of the racial challenges yeah. that might be faced in this world. And uh, they can do it and we have confidence in them, but they need some assistance. And so we appreciate everything that's being done today on this day of giving. You know, I think it was Emerson who once said that there is no greater compensation in this life than for, uh, for no man can sincerely try to help someone else without helping themselves. And this is just a great opportunity to help some great minds to be able to pursue their dreams and imagine that they can become something more. And, and when also a great point. So when our students look at us and we, they imagine, and as we imagine our university in 2030, often pointing out to our success of alums, yes. those who came before and now are having, you know, can, we can show you know, great dreams can be fulfilled here at SIU. Yes, and our alums are such, such a great asset yeah. to us. Uh, the stories that they tell, not about all of the things that happened when they were here, but about the successes yeah. that they are now that they become alums because of the quality of education that they gain here at SIU. It is a selling point, and we enjoy when our alums tell their stories. A lot of students, they need that ray of hope. You know, we're a great institution in a great state at a great location. Uh, and students realize that the fact that we waive out-of-state tuition fees for everyone in the United States, the, the fact that we've given out uh, Saluki support awards to, to institutions that send us 13 students or more, is those kind of things. It's our commitment to Southern Illinois and the students that we serve here, the great students who know that it is to their unique advantage to stay at home and to get the most affordable, high quality education possible. It's those kind of things that's causing us to grow and will continue to grow. We've had a few bad years in the past, but we've got some great, great opportunities for the future. Well, as our czar of <laughs> enrollment management, I've been really impressed with your leadership and your vision. Talk about the strategy behind, you know, developing those pipelines to Carbondale. Well, I don't know if I would honor that title of czar or not, but uh, <clears throat> every great or every good enrollment management person knows that data is the beginning of a good, successful future. And so one of the things that we've really been able to dig into, our, our institution here has great data, but I don't want us to be data rich and information poor. That data has led us to a strategy to realize that even though there are some unique population changes here in Southern Illinois, and we have to look else, in, in addition to recruiting hard here in Southern Illinois, we got to look where those students are gaining. 
Uh, it's caused us to look to be very creative with our Saluki Step Ahead agreements where we can work and partner with two-year colleges so that those students can finish the two years there. They can remain at that two -year in that two-year location, but earn their last two years at a very affordable rate with the support of transfer scholarships mm -hmm. and with the support of Dean's Scholarship Awards. It's those kinds of awards that make uh, the last two years less than $20,000 for those students. And so they are taking advantage of that. So not only there are new student growth, but our external growth. And with us waiving our out-of-state tuition fees, other institutions around the nation are beginning to realize that we are a good opportunity, a good asset, and a good, a good deal for their students as well. So in the, in the step ahead where we provide 4,000 <clears> for each of two years, uh, for those joint, uh, community college students transferring, that's where philanthropy can come in. And Absolutely. Get, like, I was so excited that uh, one of our alumni was so excited about what the Saluki Step Ahead program could offer in the Chicago region that they begin, they donated a million dollars one year and a million dollars the second year to make this program initially start, grow, and continue to grow. And it's that kind of difference, that kind of donations that have made a difference. And they surely are not only helping themselves, but they're helping someone else as well. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, he is Wendell Williams. He is the czar of enrollment management, doing an incredible job, Salukis out there. Uh, help us out. Uh, your gift today on the seventh day of giving, siuday.siu.edu. If you want to give to scholarships, look for the drop down. Uh, Wendell's team will certainly appreciate that, and that will help us recruit uh, some fine young talent here to Southern Illinois University. Thank you, Wendell. Hey, thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. All right, great okay. stuff. Thank you. We're going to go now, Wendell, to our very uh, our touch of nature colleagues who are doing incredible things as they develop and create and establish the premier outdoor education center in America. I'm Brian Croft. I'm the director here at Touch of Nature Outdoor Education Center. We are Southern Illinois University's outdoor and experiential laboratory. And I'm so excited to be here on the day of giving, talking to you about all of the ways that you can help us further our mission to enhance the lives of all people through outdoor experiences. The mission of Touch of Nature Environmental Center is really pretty simple. We're here to enhance the quality of lives of all people through outdoor experiences. If you look at our mission, the words that, that are in there, every one of them really serves a purpose. So looking at that all people, for example, we really want to focus the idea that the outdoors is an inclusive environment, regardless of your physical ability, regardless of your age, regardless of your ethnicity, religion, whatever, it's for all people. And again, when we say we believe in the power of the outdoor experience, that outdoor experience is a unique thing for you. Kids are the one of the most easy examples that I can give on how we connect them to nature. And it's taking them out for what seems like a really simple hike or a walk, and then incorporating a few fun activities into that. What research today is showing about outdoor education is that kids that are taken outdoors and are given this opportunity to connect to nature are healthier, they're happier. Touch of Nature has a rich history in outdoor education, dating back to the foundation really of the Special Olympics, being recognized um, for our work as a National Center for Environmental Education. We were one of the first uh, high rope challenge courses in the country. The first orienteering course professionally was done here at Touch of Nature. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, we're really proud of our history and we've there's been a lot of really good things that are happening here. But I think even more exciting is as much as we want to honor our past, we're really excited about the direction that we're heading and being able to stay innovative, to stay on that cutting edge in inclusive recreation, in environmental education, and in adventure education. My experience at Touch of Nature started just a few days into my undergrad after moving into the dorms. I came out here on a team building trip with the College of Business's freshman interest group. And from there I was hooked. I really looked for any other opportunity that I could to get out to Touch of Nature and volunteer or do team building or any other programming out here. 
From there, I went on to become a full-time staff member out here. And I'm so glad that I get the opportunity to help others find the same skill building and volunteering opportunities and chances to push their own boundaries that I had as a student. Being a student and being involved here at Touch of Nature has given me lots of experience with a lot of different things. Uh, I've been able to lead team building programs, go canoeing, kayaking, take students on our trails, uh, and even get a little bit of professional development in terms of trail building and working with volunteers. Uh, just a good host of different things that I've been able to accomplish because of Touch of Nature. Being a student and being involved in Touch of Nature has helped me grow as not only a professional, but as an individual as well. I've gotten to work summer camp programs here with kids ranging from 6 to 16. I've gotten to take participants out uh, canoeing and paddling just like Ben, and I've gotten to take kids on the high ropes course, and I've gotten to take people out rock climbing, and I've gotten to help with a little bit of trail building as well. And it's kind of helped me figure out kind of what I want to do as a rec major. Touch of Nature is one of Southern Illinois' hidden gems. They combine the outdoors, nature, and education through their partnership with Southern Illinois University, and they roll it all into one. So what I'm asking you is to help me and my company, River Radio, get the word out on why this shouldn't be a hidden gem in Southern Illinois. Giving back to this community is going to impact everyone in Southern Illinois. It's going to be an economic impact. People are going to be coming here to these bike trails and giving money back to our community, staying in our hotels, eating in our restaurants. So giving back to Touch of Nature to make things like the bike trail and coming soon, the SIU Credit Union Event Center will give the community that aspect here out in the outside. Touch of Nature offers a ton of different programs to SIU and the community of Southern Illinois. We have our hospitality and our community events programs, which brings thousands of people into the outdoors through our Maple Fest program, our Haunted Owl program, and our Little Grassy Get Down Music Festival, not to mention our miles and miles of mountain bike trails. We also have our campus outdoor programs, which help us facilitate outdoor experiences for all college students at SIU. The one we're probably most proud about is Dog Days, where we bring incoming freshmen and transfer students to Touch of Nature for four days and three nights. Think of it like a college summer camp experience, where we teach incoming Salukis everything they need to know about Southern Illinois and Carbondale in general. We also have our outdoor education program, which offers outdoor education experiences to kids from pre-K all the way through high school including our summer camp programs and our tripping programs. Lastly, we have our amazing inclusive recreation program. Again, we, we believe in the power of the outdoors. And so what we want to do is we want to help identify the barriers that might keep somebody from participating in the outdoors and then address them. One of my favorite moments that sticks with me as a, an experience at Touch of Nature was out on our high ropes course. I got to watch our director, Brian, bring a a kid that had mobility issues in his left leg, we set up an adaptive system and was able to bring him from the ground all the way up to our zip line. And I got to watch a kid who was ready to shut down and just not go um, up 20 feet. And he got to zip line and it was a beautiful experience. He came down, he was smiling. And that to me was getting people excited. And that to me is getting everybody involved in something uh, that can just be so uplifting to others. Camp Little Giant has been around for over 70 years and is one of the first camps serving people with disabilities in the entire country. We're super proud of all of the work that we do here. We couldn't do it without your help. So thank you for giving. And we're looking to grow our outdoor education and inclusive recreation programs with a Tango Tower here at Touch of Nature. A Tango Tower is a high adventure program that can feature up to 20 elements and host over 12 climbers at a time. This would be great for our programs and give us the ability to serve more students at a time. Our current ropes course is located about a half mile from our main camp location and was built over 40 years ago. With the addition of a Tango Tower, we'll be able to serve more participants with disabilities with easier access, as well as incorporate the new adaptive systems that have been developed since then. 
Currently, we are standing on one of Touch of Nature's mountain bike trails. It's called Yellow Jacket. This is just one of 10 miles of uh, inclusive, accessible trails for all community members here in Carbondale. So we do a lot of uh, mountain biking. We've got trail running and hiking that is accessible and free for all community members. Um, and Ben would love to go into more detail about how we do trails. Touch of Nature is specifically built for mountain biking. We are a multi-use trail system, but our trails were purpose built for mountain bikes to ride on, meaning that there's some fun bridges like the one behind us. There's some little rollers and features. We've got different jumps, uh, different skill progression features features of all levels. Um, and that's really a unique feature for the area of Southern Illinois that people have been traveling very far to come to uh, because there's nothing else like this in this area. We have 20 miles conceptualized. So we've already created 10 miles of trails. We've got 12 open to the public currently. And then there's that additional 20 miles of trail that we're slowly working on building. Uh, and we need some of that infrastructure in place to be able to accomplish those tw extra 20 miles of trail. So the maintenance of our trails incorporates a lot. Um, since we have 12 miles, those 12 miles of trails have to constantly be monitored and observed. Uh, we watch every time it rains, we watch where that water goes, where the trees are falling um, and remove those just to keep our trails in pristine condition. In addition to the regular maintenance that we perform on the trails, our volunteer crews come in and help us harden drainages. Um, so some of these soft spots that get a lot of mud and repeated use uh, will eventually rut out and become unusable for mountain bikes. And so a big part of our maintenance is adding rocks and dirt to the trail in specific ways to prevent that erosion. That's well, a lot to cover for one uh, video segment. But again, we have a lot going on here at Touch of Nature and we are dependent on your help. We are so appreciative of the amazing volunteers and donors that we currently have. And with your help and your gifts, we can continue to provide outdoor experiences to the students of Southern Illinois and to the Southern Illinois community. Thanks for listening to us and please come out to Touch of Nature and, and have an adventure with us. Slinky spirit isn't born. It's nurtured by those who came before. It must be shown, a flag waved proudly by those who know. Our future rests with our students and support from their biggest fans. On the SIU Day of Giving, we let our imagination run wild, always moving forward together as past, present, and future collide. Join us. Alumni and friends, join Lauren and me as we ignite the Saluki spirit for a new tradition. You're invited to the inaugural Saluki Ball on Saturday, April 22nd at the Marriott Marquis Chicago. Through this event, we will bridge the gap, enhancing scholarship opportunities for our students as they imagine a bright future. Get ready for an evening of elegance and celebration as we showcase Saluki pride like never before. Your night will include world-class entertainment and dining, 
the opportunity to network with university leaders, as well as some of our most influential alumni and friends. Experience the beginning of an exciting new era for SIU Carbondale as we commemorate our accomplishments and look forward to the future. Tickets are on sale now. You can select individual tickets, purchase a table for you and your guests, or become a sponsor with opportunities to send your message to Saluki Nation. Together, we will bring success to generations of students. We hope you are as excited as we are to launch the Saluki Ball. Learn more and secure your tickets at salukiball.siu.edu. Thank you for your continued support of SIU and its students. Go, Go dogs! dogs. Hey, look, Bear Group, we have your trophy. SIU may have been great back in the day in the 80s and 90s, but the dog pound is in full force and wanted to tell the world that the dogs are coming after the old dogs on the SIU Day of Giving. We're encouraging everyone to support the dog pound on March 28th by making a gift of any size. The support of the Beer Scholarship is wonderful, but I think we should hang on to this for a little bit longer. Go dogs! Go dogs! Salukis, the Salukis are here in Nashville taking over the town. It's time to come out and join us. Saluki Nation, we're right here in Nashville, Tennessee. About a year ago, we set out to take over Nashville and we're now here. We made good on our promise. This has been a great way to kind of spread Saluki Nation throughout the United States. But here coming to Nashville where we live is important for us to stay connected with the university and uh, ensure that we're supporting the team and the Saluki family the way we need to. The support for women's athletics has been tremendous and this group is leading the charge. So the foundation, please keep doing what you're doing and dog pound out there, we need you to keep donating and keep investing in our young ladies. Your investment has meant everything and it just brings a tremendous pride for us to support this maroon and white as we continue to take over. Hi, I am Kim Babington from SIU Credit Union, and we are here today to donate a $45,000 check to launch the seventh annual Day of Giving. We understand that SIU is the, the economic engine in Southern Illinois, and we feel that this is a win-win-win for everybody involved here. We are here today because of the generosity of SIU Credit Union, and all of the funds that we receive go back to the students to really enrich their experience while they're here on campus. You know, our students uh, need assistance. Uh, our students need to be able to close the financial gaps. And this is one way 
for them to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm a, a 91 accounting graduate, College of Business. Uh, so I've been here my whole life. Uh, so being able to give back to the university that helped me get to where I am is uh, a great feeling. The money that SIU Credit Union today is giving us is really going to go to helping us grow, expand, and really just help us program for our Dog Days orientation program. So Dog Days is, in essence, kind of like a four-day, three-night summer camp for incoming freshmen. We're going to be using this donation from the SIU Credit Union to establish a digital scholars commons on the first floor of the library. We want this partnership with SIU. Um, it helps not only the credit union grow, but it helps SIU grow, and that helps us here in our economy in Carbondale. And so I encourage all friends, family, Saluki alumni, anybody that's part of Saluki Nation to take a moment and just, whether it's $5, $10, or more like give back to this incredible place because we really are doing some awesome things. The SIU School of Medicine has been a tremendous impact in my own life and as my training as a physician here. We've seen students come through here and have had life-changing experiences of their own. The legacy in which they are coming into is one that has made a tremendous impact in the community already. And those that continue to contribute to the next generation of physicians will have to see their growth in years and years to come. It will be something well worthwhile and something that I hope to see and be a part of myself one day. One, two, and one, two, ready, and. Thank you, Pep Band. Thank you, Shakers. They're giving. Let's hear it. Come on. Louis. Hey, Louis. Louis. Louis, come here. We want you to know today has been, we kicked off at 6 this morning. We went live in front of the entire Saluki Nation, helped by our great colleagues at WSIU. We were in that broadcast studio, which is the largest broadcast studio south of Chicago, right here on our campus. We all, our deans had segments, did a great job. We had a lot of live interviews, and I want to bring Louis up here right now. Louis is one of the fine young, a senior here, one of our great uh, students. He's a 3.5 graduate. Louis, tell him everything you do. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Louis. Uh, I'm a social work major, senior with a 3.5 GPA. I'm also part of Latino Cultural Association. I'm also in Sigma Lambda Beta International Fraternity. I also work at the Student Multicultural Resource Center. I'm also a mentor on campus. So you will see me everywhere on campus. Uh, I've been here since 2019. I will stay here for my master's. And my plan is to stay, um, to go back to school, to become an interpreter for the deaf and hard of hearing. Awesome, awesome. You will see more of Louie up in Chicago on April 22nd at the Saluki Ball. We'll leave it at that. But extraordinary. This is what our donors respond to. To all our students here, incredible representatives of this university doing wonderful, wonderful things. Chancellor, 
if we go to the, the, the uh, scoreboard, I guess we'd call it. So far, we have gifts of 1,000 from 1,539 donors, totaling $1.56 million. And we go, we go all the way to six o'clock in the morning. So we're hoping to get near that $4 million mark. And we're hoping to get near that $3,500 mark. So if you haven't given here, siuday.siu.edu. It's very simple. Your gifts go a long way. The chancellor talked about this as being a day of excellence. We also talk it about as a day of impact. One of the big impact things that happened today, we dunked the dean of the library outside in the water. John, did you go down? Five or six times. A little waterlogged right now. So let's, uh, Chancellor, truly one of our great days. Let's, everybody, let's welcome Chancellor Lane to the podium. Well, thank you guys so much. What a beautiful day. Uh, and what an important day. Uh, as I look at our, our students, and again, let's give them a bigger round of applause. Our March and Salukis and And, and you saw Louis come up here. Many of our students will tell you uh, that what we're doing today makes the difference between them staying or going home. That's a serious matter, right? It makes the difference. A lot of our students come to us with a financial need. They come to us uh, with dreams and aspirations. And many of us on the cabinet, many of us that are on the leadership team that's here, uh, we thank those donors because we have the fortunate uh, pleasure when those students are coming down to the wire and trying to register for classes, a lot of times without those financial contributions, it would not be possible for them to stay here. It's hard to call mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and ask for that money that you need, especially if it's a lot larger gap that's out there. So I want to speak directly to our donors. Uh, for everyone that made a gift today, thank you so much. It means a lot, right? You are, are you talk about your return on investment. You talk about how you're actually saving a student from being able to uh, uh, to complete their journey, right? To be able to to stay here and and become a a Saluki alum, Jeff. Right? We can put them in the history books of being an alum. Makes all the difference. Uh, there's so many people to thank. You know, I, I get a chance to come up here as the chancellor and, and uh, you know, you gave me an applause, but I'm, I'm not the one that deserves it. We've got a lot of folks who put a magnificent production together. And we still have 15 hours to go. Is that right, Matt? We, yeah, we, we still just, have time. Want you know the, wow, the we hit, hit the $2 million mark. That's a big there deal. Go. Oh, that two million go. raise. Wow. Two million raise. Uh, I started watching this morning, and I want to give kudos to all of our uh, deans, all of our faculty, all of our department heads. I was tuned in watching each and every one of you go through what I call a day of excellence. I know it's the day of giving, but today, if you were tuned in, you saw the excellence that's taking place in so many areas of the university. It's here and on display. And so as our donors tuned in, our alums that tuned in, our community members, our friends of the university, as they tuned in, I hope you're able to be uh, extremely proud of your alma mater. I always say this, I didn't get the opportunity to go here, but I hope with what you saw today that you're able to, to sit back and go, wow, look at my university thrive. That's exactly what we're doing, right? We are thriving. We're not just surviving here, we're thriving. There are a lot of incredible things that are taking place with a lot of people that make this happen. So kudos to Matt behind me here. Give Matt a big round of applause to his staff. They, they do an incredible job in, in making this day a reality. And this just didn't happen yesterday, right, Matt? You guys have been putting this together the entire year. Uh, in addition to all the other things that you're seeing in video with our takeovers and all these other events that we have that engage our alums and bring the Saluki nation together. Uh, that's, that's what's really important. So 
Uh, all of our folks that, that are here today, I want to thank you again personally for making this day possible. Uh, again, we still have a, a few hours to go, so it's not over yet. So for those that are out there, I've heard this all day. Uh, it doesn't matter the amount, right? What matters is is just the gift of, of giving. It doesn't matter the amount. And it's pretty easy to do, right, Matt? It's It's pretty easy to do. Even I can do it, you know, when you start looking at all this technology and how to hit the give button, it's pretty simple. Uh, and what I love about this is that you have an opportunity to give to a number of different areas. If you look on that website there, uh, what's the site again, Matt? I'm sorry. SIU Day. SIU Day. SIU. Right? So you're able to go on there and, and you can give to a number of different areas. So I was I was really pleased to see all of the uh, whether it was the deans or department heads, really push and, and talk, uh, you know, in, in real good fashion about what they do and what difference your gift makes to their area. So I, I love that they were able to do that, and hopefully that message got across. So that will continue to happen for the next 15 hours and really throughout the year. We, we really never stop uh, because we know how many students will benefit from what we're doing and how many departments will benefit. So on that note, again, I want to thank everyone here. Matt, am I missing anybody or anyone before I sit down? This is not my water. Is no, this your water? My water. That's okay, right. I was getting ready to yeah, take yeah, a yeah. drink out yeah. of that. I'm glad I, I, I get that to yeah. you. If we could, I'd just, uh, Jeff Lean, Brittany, oh, yeah. Bateman, Jeff Wilson, Matt McCoy, Anna, Caleb. You want to bring them up? Come on yeah, up. come up. Let's give them a round of applause if they, they come forward. That's good. They're back down. You Anybody see the full else? team? Yeah, come on in. Yeah, Larry, you know who they are. Larry, Larry, Rebecca. There you go. These are really the folks that put it all together. Uh, seven years ago, there were, we started Day of Giving. The great thinking of our folks who came before us. Very few universities have done it. A great leader is when you have followers. Now every university in America has a Day of Giving. So, but they're a couple of years late, uh, but we were one of the first. And to see this grow, nearly $14 million has been raised since we began this incredible day of excellence. So these are the folks that put it the, on the day-to-day, -day, put it together. Uh, I'd like to, can we have the deans and directors yeah, yeah. come up? Because we're live here. We want to get some yeah. mugs on camera. So who participated in the program, Right. Get all our deans and directors who did incredible jobs today with videos. Just, just very, incredible. very passionate videos too. I, I was impressed on all this talent that we have. Could we give them a round of applause too for right there. doing a great job? Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, I hate that we missed Duncan, the Duncan. dean, right here. Yeah. Though I was looking forward to that. I figured you might. Oh, I was, I was looking forward to that. You know, we raised about three hundred dollars. Uh, oh, we need to put you back <laughs> in that Duncan wanted, booth. Wanted to get me wet. I think. Yeah, they, you, said I was all wet. Let's so. put you back in. I yeah. see we've got some dog pound members over there. Dog pound members. I We're saw you gave me. them a good shout out good today. Shout. I'd like to ask if the development, the fi the foundation staff could come forward. Yeah. Well, that'd they? be okay. Foundation, uh, they here? Jason, come on. Yeah, they're all around. They're going. They're going to come on up here as well. Don't be shy. These folks have all, you know, worked in the schools and units with everybody here to make this such a successful day. How about a round of applause? Big applause for, for them. Matt, who is responsible for what? Well, what I'm so impressed with uh, all of the the uh, videos and the uh, who, who's doing that. That would be Brittany and, Brittany. and oh. Larry. Right? Give them a big, and that Anna, stuff Anna. looks great. Anna, give them a big round of applause. It looks great. It looks great. It's very vibrant. It's saluki. I mean, it, it looks really good. So great yep. job doing that. Yep. Anybody else we're missing? We got to get shout out to our shakers and our, our, our pet band or marching saluki. Yep. Big round of applause. Great job. Uh -oh. that, uh, right here. What's that? He's trying to hide. Our team at WSIU. Yeah, WSIU oh, yeah. trying to hide. Good. We are now at two million and one hundred thousand. Oh, I think folks are listening into our live stream here. Next year, 
rumor has it we're going to do this live on WSIU. So, right, Larry? Oh, wow. Can we make it more than a rumor? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's loud. But again, thanks, uh, Jess, to work with our professional colleagues at WSU. It's a phenomenal and uh, present our university so well. So, Cantor, great. Uh, anybody, let's see, just looking around. Linda Baker, we saw Linda Baker on one of the videos. Yes, she did a great that's job. right. Paul Simon Institute. Andrew, I will Let's see. We got Tim the Tim back Tim there. Tim There's from Tim Athletics. Tim, good job. We heard you earlier. Yep. Andrew, I will tell you, a lot of our colleagues here are very comfortable on camera. I noticed I that. I noticed that. Very I think good. I think I noticed they had a lot of talent in, in doing that. And again, we we just again we're thankful. Yeah. And I know that for the folks that are tuning in, again, those donors, uh, those friends of the university, you get to see what I love about what we do is you get to see your return on investment firsthand, right? You get to see the transparency in that. You get to see exactly where your dollars are going. You get to see how these areas begin to, to get what they need and actually be able to, to help their students right along the way. So. That's the beauty. This doesn't go in a black hole. It doesn't go to some mystery pot. I can't tell you how many times that we've spent hours, not, not only a cabinet, but I know the deans do it as well, but hours strategizing on how we can save students. We do that, and for those on the cabinet know what I'm talking about, we do that all the time, right? We do it all the time. How can we find more money to help more students stay at SIU and graduate? How can we find money to attract students to SIU so they can come here and graduate? We do that all day long. That's just part of what we do. So again, we can't thank you enough for those that have uh, been able to give gifts today. We still have probably 15 hours and a few, oh, yeah. <laughs> still have time to do that. So again, thanks to everyone that's out there and go dogs. We appreciate it. Let's we keep going. Lunch, lunch and cookies over here. Yep. And uh, Brittany, would you like to get some pictures here? Oh, yeah. Get some pictures you want to bring the groups back up? Yeah, we'll get them up. Yeah, let's, let's start with the uh, academic leaders, uh, deans, directors, Wendell, yeah. Cantor's cabinet. Yeah, Matt, would you get up here? Tim, come on up here. We want to take a picture. Where do you want the picture, Brittany? Right there, okay. Tim, Tim, Tim. Tim, you want to take pictures of the Uh. 